hello everyone um and yeah welcome to let's hope the sound is all working uh the second and last day of hastings um it's going to be another great day of chess might have gone a bit overboard there with the with the promotional stuff but hey ho had a bit of fun this morning <laughs> so we've got many many videos we've now got a good video so when we go on a break it's not me just uh sitting here pressing lots of random buttons um so uh it's gonna be a great day of chess and um we had six rounds yesterday we got another five rounds today um and at the moment as you can see from the scores uh, above my head which i've tried to show in the, the clearest way i can we have a leader and the leader is david howell and just behind him is Gwen Jones only half a point behind him but uh, you've got two incredibly strong people also in four out of six well they're all strong but you've got Mickey Adams and Luke Machane and the pairing to start us off today is David Howe White against Mickey Adams Mickey lost yesterday with White actually against Danny Gormali Gormali played a great game but very very exciting and the most the best thing about today though you know the most pleasurable thing about today is not the chess it's not it's not even the, the cup of tea i'm drinking which is pretty nice it's not even the lovely weather <laughs> january weather it's it's my co-host yvanka huska hello yvanka hi sir Homan. <laughs> hopefully i haven't unmuted myself and i'm you can all hear me and i'm ready to i'm ready to go and see the action i can't wait it's going to be a lot of fun, Simon. And uh, thank you so much for your lovely words. It's always a pleasure. You kind of been a really lovely distraction so far. It's been great. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's it is enjoyable. I mean, the Hastings, both both me and Yvanka have played at the tournament many many times. I've probably played there. I don't know, like twenty times or more. I, I, is that possible? Yes, it's very possible. At least twenty times. Uh, that means, and it's always over New Year's. So I, I've probably spent. At least 20 new year's eves in hastings which is which is quite funny um any idea how many times you played at hastings uh oh Murphy? i think it would have be been about um seven or eight times i think seven or eight times right seven or eight, yeah, yeah. I, I i was playing them quite often in the noughties and then i kind of stopped it just uh it happened when we moved over to norway then it wasn't such a it wasn't so easy to get to yeah but before that we were playing it every single year and having so much fun and i also remember i played it as a teenager when i was uh, waiting for my mock results my gcse mock results and it was so cold we were playing on the pier and uh we were staying right next door to the chess club which i thought was just brilliant it's i mean it's it's a great tournament it's loads of fun down there it's a bit of a party party atmosphere after the chess is finished because it is new year's it's the festive period and there's loads of fun stuff going on um one thing i'm just gonna have to do very quickly which i forgot to do i'm just gonna open up the tornello site um because i i need to just make sure i know when the games are starting we're trying a slightly different setup today so if it doesn't work you'll have to go with us um i've tried to do some pgm programming or whatever it is not my speciality um what's your funniest hastings story so i'm just going to try to set this 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 up um my and, yeah my funniest uh hastings story if do you have any do you have any funny stories from from hastings um well it's just just the one that always makes me giggle is your one <laughs> I've, I've, had, I've basically <laughs> had many. I, I just can't help myself you know i just think everyone was walking up the hill but simon's like no no i'm staying in the hotel next door i'm gonna drive <laughs> gonna, gonna, gonna drive there yeah you know so um i think mean, i've had fun, loads of fun times uh yeah that down at hastings and uh so well the, the games have started and it actually looks like I, i've got things set up quite well today uh Yvanka. can you add them and eve it yeah I mean, that's uh, brilliant i can see it clear, crystal clear and all is good we are brilliant. following david howe against mickey adams we are and we can actually see the other games this time as well all in one screen so i'm hoping this is going to uh this is going to work otherwise revert to the other setup um so this is this is probably the the big pairing of, of the round but of course the other pairings are very important so we just have a very quick flick 
at the other boards. We got Luke McShane, who's still in with a shout. Uh, well, Nick Pert is as well, Nick on 50%. Luke with the white pieces, avoiding theory here. We got Danny Gormali, who won his last two games. He's on a bit of a roll. And he beat, um, he, I just realized there is no clock time. So I'm just gonna try to grab, uh, <laughs> there's always something, <laughs> isn't there? Um, that is that is quite annoying uh, I, I with this setup. Thank you, Chris, for pointing that out. I, 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 knew, I knew I wouldn't be able to get everything right. Let's just see if we can add the clock times. I might not be able to um, here. So we might have to go back to the other setup. That's absolutely typical, right? Um, it's weird, I can see the clock last no we don't okay i'll have a little okay I'll, I'll see if i can change things about otherwise we might have to go back to the setup we had yesterday i thought i'd try this one because the advantage of this one is look at that i can make some lovely arrows lovely arrows look at that oh look at that yeah. I, I can even change the color you anchor oh oh look. oh yeah but i think They're very nice they are very and nice i can tell you the clock times so i mean but it, i can i can for this round do that and okay, so maybe posted. maybe we'll change it for the next round, shall we? We'll, we'll, get the, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll try this one this round and we'll get the clocks for the, the next round after this, so, uh, round eight. I think that makes sense. There's 11 rounds, like I say, five today. So uh, Yvanka can update you if anyone gets very short of time. Okay, yeah. but anyway, thanks for pointing that out. Um, we have Gormani Turner, um, David Howe. Well, there's a lot of swapsies going on there, but Matthew Wadsworth, Glenn Fleer. And then we have Gawain Jones who is in second place. So he's, he's got a great chance of playing against a meet. And then last but not least, the old sluggers. <laughs> are we allowed to say that? Of course we are. Uh, Mark, Mark Hedlund against his buddy and old time, your long time rival, uh, Keith Arkell. Uh It's always fun to see these two play, Ivanka, right? Yeah, I, I totally remember they were having... Do you, do you remember in 98 or was it 99? I can't remember. They were playing matches against each other then. <laughs> I don't remember. It was like... Sorry, a, 18, there was all play, two all-play all tournaments and then there was Mark Hebdon against Keith Arkell. I think they might have played in the first Hastings, actually. You know, yeah. 1898. No, I mean, it seems like it, doesn't it? I mean... Since we've been around Juvanka, they've literally they were playing when we were babies, right? They were playing, yeah. they were winning everything when we were babies. So it, it, it's, I mean, they are two legendary uh, English circuit players, and yeah, and I mean, uh, and it's quite kind of like a interesting position because right now I can see that Keith has got what he wants, Mark has got what he wants, and uh, everyone is happy. So I, I kind of like this position. Like the <laughs> Keith has got his solid pawn structure, very flexible because you can go e5 and c5. Mark has got two bishops, and uh... <laughs> that's right. And uh, it's true. I mean, Keith plays this position. Like, if he can get this position, he would play it in every single game of chess. I mean, he he. This is his kind of structure where he has four pawns on the king side, mm. three pawns on the queen side, and. He gets rid of his bishop. He doesn't mind getting rid of that. And ideally, I, I know this because I did present, you know, the course Keith Arkov's course is ending one with him. Ideally, he would love to get the queens off. Uh, you mm. know, and the kind of thing that Keith loves doing after this, and I know this, he's explained every strategy in this kind of game to me. The next thing he loves to do is get this exchange in the C5 pawn for the D4 pawn, and then the next stage he does is try to win one of these three pawns with one of his two pawns with yeah. a minority attack and it's quite weird that he plans it out so much Yvanka I mean I'm just going to put it on the board because it is quite funny this is obviously a bad move but his yeah. whole idea is to win one of these pawns and then he tries to get an ending where his four pawns will beat the three pawns so he, yeah. literally, he literally maps out his whole game Yvanka <laughs> it's screwed you know by, by this which is quite yeah, funny yeah right? he told me about it he told me about how he, mm. he I think he used to really enjoy playing very sharp tactical positions but he wasn't very good at them well no it wasn't that he wasn't very good at them it was just he wasn't getting so many points and so he um just studied really hard on the end game and decided that this was the type of position that he liked and uh since then he has been working on that, refining it, perfecting it to uh, be to a beautiful procedure, actually. Yeah, it's, it, he really, he really has done, you know. And um, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll tell you what we do, Ivanka. We'll, we'll now go to the big game, 
uh, yep. David Howe versus Adams. And if you don't mind, are you right just taking over commentary? I'm going to see if there's some command I can use to yes. add clock time. So I might just need to message someone because it'd be great if I could add it directly in here. Okay. So um, I'm going to give that a go. Um, it might just take me a minute or two. Well, if you can take over this one. And, yeah, I, I can take. Yeah. We'll have to. We'll have to cover the position as it stands because I can't move the board. Course, so yeah. uh, this has come from uh, a reverse to Grunfeld. And, you know, David, he's a specialist in uh, Grunfelds. And uh, one of the things that you I noticed with David is that he's talking of someone who's perfected their technique. Well, that is also David. David works incredibly hard on his openings. And he and we kind of spoke a little bit about this yesterday, about how he, he does what Keith Argo does to 2400s. He does that to 2700s. And he's also very ambitious. So I don't, he definitely has not played this in order just to get a draw. He uh, wants to win and he wants to be number one. And, I th and one of the things that David likes, he loves bishops. He's a bishop pair person. And uh, he has a past pawn, <coughs> a past deep pawn. So this is the kind of thing that he'll be playing for. And uh, what <laughs> the arrows look good. So no, they're so very good. They do look very good. So now uh, Mickey has just played knight before, so attacking the pawn on d3. And yeah, so an interesting choice. And one of the things with David is he's not afraid of going. <coughs> he's not afraid of maneuvering around. Um, he's also a perfectionist. Is uh, his Hader Hastings Fido rated, not ECF. Yeah, I think we have a new kind of online rating system. I think that uh, Hastings will be using that. Um, both lost their queen. Yes, they, they haven't quite lost their queen. They've exchanged it off. Let's uh, be technical. But I'm just trying to figure out what is the best way for um, David to proceed in this position. <coughs> the advantage of the, yes, the bishop pair. And uh, one of the things he can do is if I could move the arrows, I could show you, is uh, he could sure. signal the retreat a little bit so and then back push now, away Yvanka. this. Uh? I should be back now. So I've just sent an email and uh, we'll see if okay. we get the clock times, you know, at some point. So, uh, yeah, you can yes. tell me which I wanted, I wanted to kind of, I wanted to show Bishop F1, <coughs> but yep. I think it's already been played. Mm. Bishop F1. So, you know, David's not mm. afraid to signal the retreat in order to push black a little bit. And, you know, he's got such a... I remember Peter Lecco saying about David has such a very interesting contortionist style. He's not afraid of kind of playing on the back rank and then pushing people backwards and then coming forward. So do we think David's a little bit better here with, with White? I, I think mean, so. With a bishop pair, he has yeah. to be. Okay. So David does have the two bishops. And uh, as Yvanka pointed out, that that's an advantage. And also, it's quite an open board meaning mm. there's not many pawns, you know, blocking things up when the bishops become stronger, when there's less things blocking the diagonals for them. Um, I mean, if David wins this one, he's got to be a big favourite uh, for the competition. He hasn't, I don't think he's played Gawain yet, though. No, so he, hasn't gonna be play, he, don't, he hasn't played any of the top seeds. He hasn't played Luke, he hasn't played Gawain. He's getting them all today. Yeah, and hello to Niels Grandilius uh, in the chat as well. Uh, and Niels... Sweden number one, just done a course to Ginger GM, excellent course. Magnus Carlsen's one of his seconds as well. Yes. And Niels is uh, just pointing out that uh, David used this same opening to beat a very strong Indian player, India, India, number two maybe in, in India. He was at some point, uh, Harry Krishna, who's been high 2700. I think that game, wasn't that the game that was like 450 million Yeah, moves? it was something like 200 and something moves. 200 and something moves. Uh, yeah, that's crazy, and, right? uh, that's and crazy. David was a bit. No, it wasn't. No. <laughs> no, it was like 200 moves, but I didn't know he won. I thought it was a draw. I think he. Uh, oh, okay. There was one. Maybe there, there, there's 200 and something moves. No, they play the set. Oh, okay. That was. Oh, okay. right. Okay. So then they then they drew drew in like the long one of the longest ever draws in in history. Yeah. David. And David I, was a bit annoyed that he he yeah. could have actually broken the Guinness Book of Records. Yeah. Because it was one of those situations where he could have just pushed a pawn and played for another 50 moves. <laughs> <laughs> he missed his opportunity. <laughs> yes. I, I, I have he didn't to say, know it. he didn't know about it, so he was like, "Okay, let's." Uh, yeah, I think all his teammates had uh, gone 
just everyone had, I think he was playing to deserted uh, <laughs> Oh, the deserted playing hall. Yeah. Uh, it's always fun when that happens. Um, yeah. I mean, one thing one I know... Of the, one of the things about... Was this the European Club Cup where um, David was playing on the same team as Magnus Carlsen? It might have been. Yeah, it, yeah, it was. That's yeah. where he had the long draw, uh, definitely. I mean, one, one thing I know about David is that he, he's just one of the most determined players you'll ever come across. I mean, mm. you have to be determined to be a good player, um, but David will... He, he literally just play on and he doesn't mind playing until the the venue shuts down and, and you know it's breakfast time the next day he, he doesn't care <laughs> he will keep you at the board and he will make you suffer even in equal position he will play on and on and he will just try to grind you down he's a he's a fit he's a fit chap you wouldn't guess that from his skiing video but he he is a fit chap and he and he's young and he and he, he he's he's so determined and that mental attitude has helped him get to where he is now. So he doesn't mind playing a long game. I mean, the thing is here, he's playing Mickey Adams. And I'm not, you know, Mickey Adams, probably lower rated than Harry Krishna, but Mickey Adams is Mickey Adams. And Mickey Adams has just got a world of experience. And Mickey Adams just understands chess so well. And to, mm. to win against Mickey Adams in this kind of position, I don't know it's not easy right i mean uh, i'd be very impressed if he he managed to do that here um you know possibly so uh it, it's we're gonna wait and see also i'd like to say um hello to everyone in uh in in the chat um and uh, i don't know if moobot's working all right but we're gonna give some links you can look at the other games we've got the games here we can only look at one at a time obviously we're trying to look at them. This one, okay, is is going to be a long game, so maybe we can move to another game. Yeah, let's go to Luke McShane because, according again, I'm only just choosing these games according to the bar. He is winning. Luke is uh, wow. winning against Nick Pat already. Wow. I mean, let's just have a look uh, um, because beating Nick is very hard. I think what Luke's done in the opening. I'll just go back to even move two. Is very clever, um, Luke. You know he is world's strongest amateur they say uh he doesn't really ever dive into long theoretical lines in any opening and he just plays g3 and i think he's just saying to nick basically well look um i i don't want to have a theoretical battle let's just play some chess and um the game continues quite normally and then he plays this rather peculiar move knight h3 but this move was played by richard report a couple of times and the idea of this, Nick's actually gone for the Botvinnik English setup reversed. And the idea is to go F4 and bring the knight to F2. Now, I have to say, Ivanka, in this position, there's one move that I just would not be able to resist playing in this position. You put your knight on H3. I mean, I'm sure you know what move it is, Ivanka. I mean, H. Well, if you were David, you play H6. Right, to stop the knight coming in. <laughs> yes, but yes. I, I'm, I'm certainly no yeah, David. You want to dominate that knight. Yeah. yeah. But, and uh, if you're Simon, you might go h5. I definitely, I definitely play h5. And I, I had this once against um, with the white pieces. So it is it, this is basically an English opening reverse that Nick Pert's playing. It's the Botvinnik English opening. Just done a course for him chess ball. And I had this a long time ago. I think against someone like Chris Ward. And he put his knight here. I played h5. And it's just a very good way of playing um because you just want to go here and embarrass that knight and mm. the normal response to h5 is to go either go h4 stop that pawn in its in its way of going forwards or to go h3 and after h4 go g4 but you can't do either of those moves so maybe something like f4 and then you can push on with this and i don't know this would be a very interesting way to play we we'll go back to the game now and let's have a look so yeah let's have let's have a look because this also reminds me of how i used to handle the close sicilian when i used to play e4 yeah. uh, knight h3 was a kind of a very common move and to me this looks amazing yeah i don't think nick should have really allowed this knight into such a lovely square i mean this knight yeah. looks looks fantastic uh, at the moment it's got really it's really causing black problems and i i don't like bishop d7 this is the kind of move you play just to develop but it doesn't do anything and i, I think i mentioned this yesterday when you're playing luke it, when you start doing moves that don't really have a point 
then you're just going to lose against him because his moves always have a point. They improve his position. And you could say this is getting Black's piece off the back rank, but in general, it doesn't really do anything. You know, it's not it's not doing anything that diagonal. I mean, why why not just keep it on that square? It seems just as good. If not, I mean, the, the kind of thing you want to play here is d5, but you just mm -hmm. can't play that with the knight on this square. So already things gone wrong. Luke brings his rook, nice central square. Nick tries to open it up, but now... The only way to do anything is defend like this. The bishop drops back, and these knights are very strong. Um, Luke keeps the queens on the board, and now, well, g4, the knight comes back, h3. Yeah, and, and now this is the moment, g4, knight h6, and uh, yeah, I think he played knight f7, I think. Knight f7, yeah. And now and the knight comes into d5, with some knight f6 ideas look at those white knights they're tremendous bit queen comes back to try and defend a knight coming in there but now just bishop e3 and again there is a knight threatening to come yeah. into that square this, this I, I think I, I, just having a, a quick look either it seemed to me that it was also possible to play bishop h4 instead of knight to d5 just to stop the queen coming back to d8 Bishop that was what the here. computer was so excited about. Right. I mean, it's still it's still loving it now, but this yeah. was the move. Uh -huh. And uh, to stop this idea that Nick plays, right? So, yeah. yeah, but okay, here this is also the yeah. actual game continuation. Just looks also amazing to me. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I say, I'll, I'll get I'll try to get the clock times for round two. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> If I yeah. if I can get the clock times of these boards now, but whenever I change to a different board, I'll have to keep capturing it. It just won't work, unfortunately. So um, we'll, we'll make sure we get it for round two of today, which is round eight. Um, sorry about that. It's just, uh, unfortunately, one of those small things. And um, Yeah, well, I can tell you the clock situation time on Luke McShane against yeah. Nick Pert. Um, well, as you can probably guess from the position, Nick is a uh, lot down on the clock he has just under seven minutes and luke has just over 11. so yes it's, it's not good news better. nick is not happy no the opening's gone totally wrong for nick mm -hmm. definitely um okay uh let's have a quick glance at the other games then um and i want to see what's going on in mark versus keith now i know this one is maybe not important for the standing of the tournaments but it's so important for english chess in a way um <laughs> these guys i wonder how many times they played each other i don't know you probably won't be able to google that but i'm i'm guessing ivanka 200 is that no, be that much 100, way more 100? than that they're way more than 200 way more than they, they've played really? so many matches against each other they've also been competing against each other in the sense since the 70s uh yeah i i yeah I, 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 70s. and that was like nearly 50 years ago so <laughs> 50, <laughs> nearly 50 years ago they were playing against each other wow cool yeah so, that's, so i wonder we're how looking it, about a th i don't know about 700 maybe 700 700 you reckon they played each other 700 times that is like know. that's one game maybe, maybe every day for two years really bad. don't trust me on my maths yeah but... that's a lot that's like a game every day two years running pretty much yeah uh, but they've been playing they've been playing say like for 40 years i mean so they played about five games a year and then, not that, and then they probably yeah, played, you, played you a could, few uh, matches. I mean, you could be so, right. Okay, not 700, yeah. maybe about 200. I mean, seven. I mean, it could be like, it's interesting because if you think, Ivanka, they probably play every weekend, right? For yeah. years. And then they play these <laughs> matches where they play six games at once. So literally, in you know, these guys, the reason I think they, they should kind of be honoured in a way is that, okay, they've never been the world's elite. You know, they've been nearly 2,600, very, very strong players but they've never been contesting for the world championships, but they've mm -hmm. always been making their living, playing weekend to weekend, traveling, the, you know, like a traveling circus, you know, traveling yeah. from tournament to tournament. That's how these guys have survived. And it's not an easy life because there's not much money. You know, you go to a weekend tournament and it's got a lot worse nowadays, but it might be like free, 300 first prize. You've got to pay your travel accommodation. If you don't win a prize money, you, 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 you can't eat or pay the rent. And they've done that. For, they've done that for like 40 years. <laughs> you know, they've just survived doing this. So and I think that's quite honorable, just playing. 
Um, and you know, uh, so yeah, it's just quite you know they, they are they are legends of English chess, definitely. Mm -hmm. No, definitely, definitely. Now, also, they used to live really close to each other. You know, and Mark was Mark yeah. is based in Leicester. Keith is but was is was based in the Midlands, and I know together with his uh, ex-wife, they used to go around to Mark's quite a lot and play chess and play golf. Definitely. Definitely. So, uh, and we're now being told, I don't know if this is true, but Jackie the alien um, is telling us they played 512 times. So I don't know if that's true, but it, it, you know, it, it, I mean, that, that is a big number. I mean, that, that's... Maybe that was their guess. Yeah. That, that could be a guess. Because if you just think, that's like, you know, you're playing the same guy every day for like a year and a half. <laughs> you know? Oh, it's you again. Let's have another game. I mean, they know each other's styles better than anyone could know anyone's styles, right? I mean, it's right. just... It's but just the beautiful like, yeah. thing about both of the, both Mark and both Keith is that they absolutely love playing against each other and they don't ever go, oh, I'm playing Keith or Mark for the, like, oh. 600th time. Yeah. They're just like, yeah, let's bring it on and let's, uh, let's battle old friend. <laughs> now, another interesting question. So let's say they've played 512 times. Um, how many drinks do you think they've shared together over the years? I mean, how many pints of beer have they have they shared in a pub? Because if you think they play one game and they probably drink ten beers between them, so you've got to times that by ten. So they you know they probably shared five thousand beers together. I'd say at least, uh, which is quite funny. Now, of course, if you're wondering what their day job is, it's chess. They're chess professionals. They've always they've made their living, as I said, just from playing chess. They don't do anything else. They play weekend chess. They, they survive from prize money. So, and yeah, there's not much money on it, but um, that's the way it is. Okay, uh, which game would you like to go to, Ivanka? I'll, I'll let you I would on. like to go see Gawain's game because he is, um, he's doing well according to the bar and it was a Karakhan. Okay. So, so when I just choose the games, I look at the bar and the bar tells me, ooh, this white is winning. And then I'm like, okay, fine. Um, now looking at this position, it looks to me totally unclear. I don't see why. Uh, I don't see why White is winning. I, don't, I think it's just. Uh... Okay. Now, one thing I can do, you anchor actually, if we, mm -hmm. I can, maybe just do something a little bit like this. Uh, I'm just adding the clock times so if people can see. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Actually, we should mention okay. the clock times in this particular game. Yeah. Gawain has eight minutes, and Amit has just three. Yep. So I've added the clock times now. Hopefully, people can see that. So I can do that occasionally, guys. To this, it just means a bit more work for me. But hey, oh, life's tough enough, you know. Um, so there you go. I mean, let me know if the clock times are getting in the way, or if they're annoying. But you, you can see at least the clock times there. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is when we change the games, I'm going to have to keep doing it. But that's life. That's life. Um, that's all you can do. Yeah. That's right. And it, I mean, in these positions, you've had, it, it, I, I've had, I've played Gwen so many times when he's played E4 against me, and I've lost so many times just quickly. We had many fights in the Tarash French, and I'm just going to put this because this is me and Gwen our encounters, and in this kind of position, I've had so many games where I played some crazy stuff like this, and the one thing I've always struggled with against Gwen is king safety yes and this is a very aggressive move but it's king safety and one thing i've noticed with Gawain, he loves having the safer king compared to mm. his opponent even if it's even if he's like a pawn or two down if his king is nicely tucked away and protected and his opponent's king is not clear where it's going to go which is the case here can't really go queen side king side open g file Gwen, lo yeah. Gwen loves playing against a weakened king. Okay. So yeah, yeah, because yeah, it was a caro. Can we just quickly just uh, see from the opening just how it got to this position? Because looking at this, I'm thinking that Black has done something wrong. Because what I didn't quite rec um, adjust to is the fact that Black should be putting the knight on b6. By the way, um, thank you for pointing that out. Danny has won his third win on the on the trot. Well done, Gormali, and that's a very good result against uh, Matthew Turner. Who, who's... Shall we quickly have a look at that? Yeah, let, let's have a look at Danny Gormali. So Danny, now, yeah, Danny, third win in a row. Uh, very, very impressive. And I have to say, just glancing at this game, just he, he's the thing with Danny, when he hits form, 
he's bloody good. Mm. And this to me, I'm going to go through the moves very quickly. It looks like a really instructive game because, okay, when they get out the opening, you get an isolated pawn position. Now, there's many things being written about this, many courses on this. The time here, I'm going to have to get rid of that now. Oh no, what have I done? I've got rid of that. That's what happens when I, when I start. Um, the time, okay, uh, let me just get that back uh, if I can work out how to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, the isolate pawn position, I'm sure that um, people will know about this and, and play this. Shivanka, what are your thoughts on this while I try to find on my computer the one thing I've just. Yeah, I think this, this is one that can try, you can get from a, um, a Caro. Um, you have to I think you have to take the knight on uh, c3 and then uh, light square strategy that's how I've always summarized it so have you got any uh, general tips um, for... yeah black, well just for the black side I mean for the white side you've got to kind of do things like pin pin the knight against the queen you also have to maintain as many mi minor pieces as possible for the black side it's all about light square strategy and controlling the isolated pawn or even the two two isolated pawns connect what are they called i've forgotten the name for the two pawns in the center when they're isolated um i'm not sure to be honest <laughs> no um, so they have, i'm sure they have a name but i can't, I can't remember double. but when there's two pawns in the center again you know black is looking hang, at hang controlling it, the light next square. to each other people are saying hanging pawns is that hanging pawns, hanging pawns yes, right. yes 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 okay. yes um I, I, I just quickly okay i think i've got things back now to mm -hmm. looking like something's working which is good and um i mean the other thing i know from the isolate pawn position which danny has the pawn on d4 if you have the isolated pawn, you keep pieces on the board and you attack. It's yes. as simple as that. And people to look at, you know, if you want examples of people playing with this, well, there's quite a lot of people. I mean, Kasparov was very good. And people, and it really depends on your style. People who like playing against the isolated pawn, Karpov is, is one who loved playing. He'd always take this kind of position as black. What should black be doing? And these are the things you need to know in the middle game to improve your, your chess. Black should be swapping pieces off because the more you swap off the weaker this pawn becomes you want to get into an ending where this pawn is a real target so mm. that, that's just the general principles and let's just see what danny does so danny just puts his pieces on good squares nice simple play rooks on half or open files and now this is a very yeah knight c6 idea. doesn't quite make so much sense to me um knight bd7 is something that is more normal right yeah. Yeah. Knight c6. You kind of combine that with, uh, but it could be this. Hang on. Let's just check. This could we could be in the realm of theory, because it's. Uh, okay. But knight, knight bd7 is something that I would be looking at doing, and then kind of going for knight d5s. But you know, even even there's one thing I wanted to say about the the, the isolated pawn, is that. It's not such a big problem if you're in an end game and you have an isolated pawn, as long as you control the C line. If you control that line, you're okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the general consensus at top level is if the pieces are on the board, this kind of position here, which is it's been seen tens of thousands of times, the, the general consensus is that, that stronger players like having the isolated pawn. I, I you know there are exceptions to that rule, like I say, Karpov really like playing against it but in general the stronger players like having this pawn and and again one thing is so important for you guys if you want to get better you know you've got thousands of tens of thousands of opening books out there but if you pick an opening you're getting into like okay the opening a bad book won't tell you what to do in this kind of position it will just get you into this position and say okay maybe give you some game where someone's won it won't tell you the ideas but this is really where the game starts uh, and you need to know your plans what you're doing how you're trying to get in what endings to play and also your opponent's plans and danny just shows he knows exactly what to do and this move a3 is a key idea first yeah. of all you want to stop the knight coming to d5 which is black's idea but also this is a main idea bishop a2 the main square you attack in these positions is h7 and after knight d5 what did we say you want to keep pieces on the board so taking on e7 it's these little principles mistake bishop d2 keeping them on the board now matt manages to exchange one but now another yeah. very typical idea yvanka here it's not yeah, all about yeah. checkmating the king here 
the next move, and this again, this reminds me, I think, Ivankov, one of the most famous games between Kasparov and Karpov. Kasparov won maybe round eight, someone could help me out here, in the World Championship match to become World Champion, where he got a position very similar to this, and he played like D5. I don't know if you can remember this game, Ivanka. It's, it's a very famous isolated pawn game. Yes, I, 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 I think I remember something vaguely, but what I what I know about D, uh, this this pawn push D5, I think here it had to be done because otherwise black is threatening Knight E7. And, uh, and then of course, the light square strategy is at its best. But um, so that's why Danny had to play D5. But uh, what I know about this is that if why, if black isn't ready for the for D5, then D5 is very strong. You should always do it. But black, if black is ready, then it should be just equal. So my feeling in this position, it actually has been played before. It's actually equal. Okay. I mean, my my impression is, okay. Let's have a look. So things get let's exchanged. Have, yeah. Things get exchanged here. This is yeah. all exchanged. It, 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 you, yeah. I mean, it might be equal, but it's certainly a bit more equal for white, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, because white's pieces are. I mean, obviously the pawn structure dead equal, and maybe a correct play it's equal but the emphasis is on black right to defend this one because yeah black definitely has to neutralize it and what he does is everything everything works out well until a certain point when it goes a bit wrong yeah. so if we play through the moves so knight a5 looks absolutely yeah. looks great sure by the way tim it's... wall hello to tim in the chat and everyone else is saying it's one of the five uh um, i'd be great if someone could find that kasparov karpov game and, and just let me know because anyway sorry Ivanka. yep so here and now yeah. we have an exchange off. So it, many things are exchanged, but it's just white who has this little bit of extra pressure, right? With yeah, yeah, yeah. Black, pieces. white has the pressure. Black has to neutralize. And uh, now, after bishop takes bishop, it's all queen takes bishop. Here is where it goes all yeah. quite wrong, mm -hmm. because he plays the really unusual queen a8. What should he play here? I mean, this is probably queen to d8. Okay, so if he goes queen d8, he should be able to hold this position. But again, this position might just look equal, but to my eyes, it looks a little bit tricky for black because look at the knight. The knight is very hard to get back in. We can always stop it coming to c5. Yeah. My knight is centralized. I mean, it should No, def definitely equal. White, white has the initiative, White has the momentum, but, you know, especially the, the kind of like better pieces. This is so important. Yeah. But uh, it should be holdable. Yeah. This is. And. Uh, what happens next is queen a is a little bit odd yeah. because you're putting the queen on the edge of the board yeah. and now this allows queen to d7 keeping pressure on f7 so yeah. the rook can't move and um <clears> and know, now he makes yeah, a big big, big blunder. blunder in a difficult position yeah. but it's funny this position actually already one bad move from matthew and to my eyes because one thing again i always think of is what what, what can my opponent move he can't move the rook because of f7 he can't really move the knight because I'm always blocking it out of the game, and yeah. he can't really get his queen in because I'm going to take on a7. So, so in actual fact, yeah, and black you have can't a few threats anything. on the position as well. You, yeah. You're threatening knight takes f7. That's the first thing we've got. Oh, nice. looking rook at. Rook takes rook e8 check. Yeah, yeah, very nice. And also, you know, just pushing the h pawn is is very normal in these positions. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It, it, you know, I mean, I take on f7 first of all, um, and but the big mistake is yeah, just queen b7 and now just simply b4 and already black resigns on move 24 yeah. because he's losing the exchange and danny made that look very simple very nice game probably a perfectly yeah. played game yeah. okay you take the queens off you've got two pieces attacked and if you go rook here it doesn't matter because i got the back as we called it yesterday spanker right so yeah okay. <laughs> now we have to okay um uh should we go? Should we go to the the, the sort of uh, yeah? David we actually Howe have making? another result. Um, okay. Gawain has beaten Amit Garcia. Right. Okay. So and again, King Safety. We're talking about here. Let's just have a look because it was very quickly done, and King Safety was the problem. Bishop comes here. Bishop f4. Gawain loves these positions. Queen mm. comes into b3. So what? And this is typical Gawain, right? He sees the king. He kills the king. <laughs> he loves. He loves. He's a bit of a king killer. And in he goes, in he goes, straight in. Point being, if you take that one, bishop d6, kaplonk, king, safety, rook c8, and now just knight g7, and a meat just resigns. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so he made that look easy, right? So Yeah, he, he um, definitely made that, that easy. I, um, I think this was a clever choice by Gawain. Um, I, 
I think Amit is a, a newbie when it comes to the Caracana. I have never, I haven't seen him play it so much. I've seen him play kind of like Fianchetto's systems with the perk and the modern. Um, and I, I think that he chose, uh, Gawain chose a kind of an older line that's still very tricky. And uh, Amit didn't ha handle that in the best way. No, definitely. I, this is a quite clever idea opening wise. Gawain's so clever, it's preparation. If you realize your opponent's playing an opening, they just they just started out, so they might they might not know it so well. Play a sideline. Don't play mind main line because when you learn an opening, you always learn generally the main lines first. Try to trick him in some little sideline. Um, now, very quickly, just have a look at the other games going on. Um, now, Matthew Wadsworth against Glenn Flair seems quite an interesting battle, but maybe not one of the main ones. Mark Hedman is struggling against Keith here. Keith Keith is grinding a pawn up and an ending. Not mm -hmm. a fun position to be in. But the David Howe game, maybe we should look at for a little bit. Yeah, let's uh, have a look. And this is a lovely move just played by David, leaving his rook on pre. And I'm going to get the times up for this game. Um, and let's just have a look at that last move. Bishop takes bishop, king takes, pawn takes b6. What a move, Ivanka. What a move. You know, you can't, you can't go rook takes rook because of b7. Beautiful. Okay, so um, here is the times. I'm just going to add that to the board. You can see me adding that in now. Um, and the times there is David is a little bit short, but nothing too much. And yeah, this and he, what he has gone. I mean, you have to, if you don't take the rook, you're just losing. Yes. Because the rook's going to c7. So now rook takes c1 has had to be played. And now b7, Mickey grabs as much material as possible, plays bishop d5. Yeah, but uh, this does look, uh, yeah. looks like it's uh, no hope. Uh, that that Benny quote, all pawns are no hope. I know, I know there's no pawn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but uh, I, I yeah, agree. this pawn on a this pawn on a three is just going to queen. Point, just, uh, yes, yeah, I totally agree. This is just winning for David. I mean, he's a queen yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, basically, the the queen is so powerful because she can just go between the two sides. Yeah. She can lose time. The rook and the bishop just, yeah. Okay, yeah. this is game over for Mickey. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And um, I mean, uh, this is a very clever move, f5, because one thing you always, a little tactic you do when you've got a queen, you're playing against two minor pieces. Situation here is if the minor pieces can stabilize themselves, your opponent can get some defense. But if they can't stabilize themselves, they often will fall prey to some queen check. Mm. So, the, so the move f5 is just trying to destabilize this strong bishop. So it's a nice positional idea. Let's just have a look how it's gone. It's gone rook h3 and now queen b8. And this is just going to be, I think it's just very simple, this one, to win, right? I mean, it's not yes. even that tricky. Um, no, I don't think it's tricky at all. I mean, no. that, that a pawn will just... Uh motor cause so much problem and white can also walk the king round yeah this way yeah and and the problem is if you if you ever get your rook behind this this pawn then your king side pawns become you can't defend mm -hmm. both sides of the board as black um and you know even if you can the king like you said can come in to start creating checkmate threats and it's 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 just lost isn't it this one yes. unless david does something very strange uh on the clock uh, at the moment so um david's going to be in a great position if he beats mickey here i mean david is uh gonna keep his lead but he's also knocking out one of the main rivals right so, right massive. six points out of seven not bad very impressive very impressive um okay uh, do you want to pick another game or do you want to stick with this one uh um, let's let's go to um luke luke against uh, nick Okay. Uh, because Luke is in third place. Yeah. Now, one thing I can do, um, whenever we move games, I just have to get the clocks up, which takes a little bit of time. So, um, Yvanka, what well, if you just try to explain the position when we move? Yes. Give me a chance so, to get the um, clock times up. Yeah, just looking at, uh, at the board, I was just trying to figure out whether this, uh, you know, Luke is a pawn up, and uh, just wondering whether. You know, he's got his rook behind this pass pawn, but is it enough? Is this enough to win? And I was trust, trying to figure it out because somehow Nick has got a, a little bit of a fortress going on. Um, my vibe is that I should be winning, but I, I'm not quite, not entirely sure. 
yeah this is yeah i somehow the rook can get active and can hassle the the, the white king i i kind of agree and whilst that rook is behind the pawn it is a little bit passive because the pawn has been stopped on the fifth rank and uh, the rook has to guard the pawn. So I'm thinking that maybe this is a, this is a draw, I think. Um, Luke, Pryro Luke, uh, hello Pryro, is saying you know, Nick's Endgame DVD for Ginger GM, you can check it out, is, uh, is pretty good and he has faith in him to draw this one. I mean, Nick, Nick is very, very good at endings i mean without a shadow of doubt and i think one thing's clear his position has certainly improved from where it was around here when he was looking at all sorts of horrible yes. things happening to his king okay he can't win but going back to move 18 he was in a world of pain and now i do feel with the king so nicely positioned here uh in the center of the board nick will probably even easily hold this one um uh, yeah, I don't know how easy it is. I mean, it's it's, it's uh, yeah. Somehow it, it's a very complicated one. I can I can see that white, I can see white winning this, but I can also equally see black holding quite comfortably. I mean, it just kind of sounds like a contradiction. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the right. The thing is, that I'm trying to think of the right plan, and uh, that's not so easy to think of the right plan. Like I like. King H4, King to G5, and try to win the H7. And um, okay, so we see a kind of interest, a bit more interesting, subtle approach from Luke. Luke, he retreats his rook, and I think he wants to maximize the rook along the third rank. Yeah, win the A7 pawn. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is probably, I, I would say, a reasonably easy draw because uh, Black's pieces are in the ideal situation. Yeah. The most important thing in a rook ending really is to have your rook active and the king is just controlling this pawn so white might try to rush away at some point but then then you just lose your pawn and i i, I don't know i mean obviously luke will try to make this difficult but i i, I yeah think, i think it should be a relatively simple yes yeah, so my, my worry is that if the king i can see a scenario where the king has uh, gone for the h7 pawn yeah and um you give up the d5 pawn and then you kind of right you you try to race with your g pawn right yeah okay you know you you, you kind of you uh, yeah. give up the the, the queen side pawns and just keep and go with g g4 yeah. but um and the time yeah situation. but okay, okay it could again it could be also be quite could be hallucinating that yeah i mean the time situation at the moment it, it, they're both about a minute so it's obviously in Luke's interest to try and win. And what he did there was quite interesting. He actually did a bit of triangulation. So he's given Black the move here because he wants to get his king, as Yvanka says, to h5. But if he goes king h4, that check will just force the king back. So this is actually a very clever play. So he's given uh, the move, I feel, to Nick because this now gives Nick the chance to go wrong. For example, if you move your rook back, terrible mistake the king suddenly comes in. You don't have a check from behind. So Nick keeps his rook as active as he can. The king comes here and now king e4. And uh, you're right, Yvank, it's not so easy because now the king has this way to go. And if it's white's move, white can now move his rook. So right. if the rook can ever get to the sixth rank, it's, I mean, via some way, it, it is quite tough. This is going to be interesting. And we've just been told that Keith managed a couple of other results keith has beaten mark in that ending and matthew wadsworth won a nice ending as well the two bishops against glenn Fleer. um so a couple of games going on david howe still winning against mickey relatively simple to my eyes and yes. that's and this game they're the only two games now now going on at the moment so yeah um Okay, so he's made this progress, Shivanka. He's got his king to g6. He's gonna. How? What does he do next, though? Because he's got to... The, the problem with white, though, he's got to really give this pawn up at some point. He's got yes. to use the rook. If he doesn't, I mean, is now the right time? Can he go like rook check, rook h5, like this? But then black's king's very quick. So if we tried this one, you yeah. have to you have to use your rook at some point. The problem is black's king is so quick here, 
and I'm just thinking, can you do this? I don't think. Well, so. there's a thing you say there, and you can go root to G1. Yeah, and this. So, so Nick did a very nice thing with the pawn on H6. If the pawn were on H7, you could go G5. But isn't this now still winning? Can... Isn't this winning though? If I go here, rook H4. Yeah, and then a king, a king to B3. And now I just H2 take, in. and my rook's in the perfect position because if you take rook... on a, I go, ah, yeah, I, yeah. I, go, I go G5 here, and I'm just going to go bang, 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 and uh, you you can't get to my B. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Maybe this okay. is winning. Well, he's gone. He's gone rook to f3. So he okay. Has, so he has after rook h1. He's gone for this plan, and now Nick has taken on d5. So this is this is this would be my first thought that you could try certainly getting the rook to h5, um, to to try and win this one. And Luke now thinking his time is 53 seconds left. Um, yeah. So he has he's gone. He's for gone. It. He's gone. gone. For... Has he gone for rook f5, or he is has. that? Yeah, he's gone rook f5. Okay, so now now we're expecting king king c4. Yeah, I mean, is there an argument for coming this way? Okay. There's an argument for king. This is a difficult decision because you know king c4 looks okay. He has got. I think. I think this is just losing to rook h5. Yeah. I. I. I after rook comes to h4 i think it's just losing so nick i think has picked the clever idea and gone king e4 rook h5 now played and now and rook, yeah now king, rook to g1 and then after rook h4 then you have to go you to... can just move your king to f3 or maybe you can even go... yeah then you have g5 check don't you then i'm gonna go here oh you, you take rook the rook on it. you take the rook so you have to go to f3 this has happened, by the way, this position. And after this one, is this, is this, uh... but that, now I can even play king f5, right? And this is actually yes. quite king tough. King f5. Still. This is still really uncomfortable. Really? Um... This has happened. Because the problem that Nick has is he's threatened with his pawns, but he's also threatened with rook h3 checks. So actually, yeah, Luke's, Luke's done, done this ending so well, right? He's played this so mm -hmm. well. Yes. So, so well. It would be um, interesting to kind of find out what is the, this is a kind of perfect end game to study to kind of find out what is the best way to defend this as yeah, black. Definitely, yeah. I mean, it, it strikes me like it should have been a draw, but maybe I, I was being a little bit dismissive there. Certainly, and uh, I think now it's probably losing, right, Ivanka? Yeah, yeah, it looks lost. Yeah. But you see what I mean about yeah. Rick and Porn and about you know Nick is look yeah. at that Nick yeah. still fighting hard. I mean. So this is this is a very clever check first push the king to the worst square you can and now he's taken this pawn and i think now it's just it's just losing uh yeah relatively simply king e4 is probably the move to play now yeah which is played yeah. by the way uh big win for david howe david howe has beaten mickey there has beaten mickey so massive win there and this is the last game going on we'll update the results soon but I think Nick is just... Uh, the problem is Nick's going to be two pawns down now and the G pawn's a winner. And yes. his king's in a bad situation. It doesn't... You know, what else What else do you want? I mean, you can win this in a number of ways. Rook takes a6. You can even just win the b5 pawn, but just pushing this pawn now also wins. You don't yeah. even need to take the pawn. It's That's okay. right. Yeah, just g5. g5 looks nice. I hope you're not implying that his endgame DVD is dodgy, Aldo. You know, <laughs> it's one of the best. <laughs> Um, no, it's, it's it's really difficult to yeah. you know I I I wasn't sure I I kind of hedged my bets there like it could be easily winning, yeah. could be could be an easy draw. <laughs> well, it certainly I it, couldn't see it. I, I was certainly wrong, Ivanka, when I said it was an easy draw. Uh, it, it certainly wasn't an easy draw by any means. It no, might, I might mean, but it was it was that problem of that pawn. Uh, yeah. it, it was the big problem of the G pawn um, being mm. so good. Yeah, and the G pawn's just winning now. It's easy. Nick, mm. Nick can Nick Nick doesn't like resigning. Understandably, no one does. So, it, it, so it means we've had a decisive first round of the wow. day. Every game decisive, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty. Yeah. And pretty cool. only Keith saved uh, the honour for the black pieces. Right. <laughs> okay. So Keith won, and everyone else with white won. Right. One. So Luke yeah, won. So Danny won. Watch. David won. Yeah, you're right. Matthew won. Gwen won. Wow. Bang, right, bang, yeah. bang. Oh dear. Okay, and Luke, Luke's, Luke's now also also won uh, as well uh, because we, we can see why 
Gary. Gary's going to queen. Can we still call it Gary? It's the A and D. Yeah, yeah. Kingside. Kingside is Gary. Kingside is Gary because it's the Kingside. I see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I think the best observation I learned yesterday, uh, Yvanka, was uh, about the greedy king uh, <laughs> wanting wanting more than one wife. Because in a game of chess, you start with your queen, but one of the one of the aims of chess is to queen your pawns and gain another wife, gain another queen. So the king is a bit of a is a bit of a bit of a cheat isn't he really yeah. cheating on his queen yeah, yeah. in some totally. in some cases he even sacrifices his queen to get another queen i mean that is that's just dirty <laughs> you know it's like henry the ape style right <laughs> off with your head and berlin i'm gonna get another i'm moving another queen in <laughs> you know so you, you can go and do one <laughs> so, yeah exactly uh, oh, i love it you know but it was kaya who uh kaya yeah. snara one of the, the the host of the champions chess tour she was the one that kind of said oh yeah the king wants a second wife and i and i kind of was taken aback by that comment and i thought i've never ever thought of it like that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah. now you kind of say sacrificing queen to make a new queen off with her head henry the eighth i love it I, 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 I'm getting, yeah, I, I'm sort of seeing it now. You know that that king's a bit of a nasty, bit of a nasty git, actually. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> a bit of a lad. As well, a I, I kind of don't like really that like, lad is culture. A bit of a lad. He sleeps around with everyone. No, come on. You know. <laughs> um, I, I, I saw this woman comedian the other day. Uh, I'm not very good at jokes, but you know, one, one, one saying that a lot of people go, you know, there's this thing if a man's talking to a man. They go, oh, you know, do you have any kids? And they go, not that I know of, you know. And, you know, have you heard that expression? Men saying that, you, you know, like, you know, this is yeah. the expression. Have you got any kids? Not that I know of, like bragging. And then, but imagine a woman saying that, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you're, you're speaking to a woman. Have you got any kids? Not that I know of. <laughs> just, it just doesn't work, does it? <laughs> so, you know, actually, there was a joke on that. Yeah. There was a joke no, of that in the Green Wing. <laughs> When Red they were voice. talking about yeah. that, like there was a secret, yeah. secret child that just appeared, and the man who's a bit dim, yeah. he goes to the woman doctor. He goes, "Just imagine out there, there could be a child that, that doesn't know that you're its mum." And she's like, <laughs> "I think I'd know." <laughs> no, 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 no. He's like, <laughs> yeah. "Yeah, it, does, it doesn't, doesn't really work, does it?" The other way around, so. And then, like, yeah. like five minutes later, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, you would of course have to know about. Uh, but uh, having said that, Ali McBeal managed to make it into a thing. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I, I'm not up with the Ali McBeal uh, stuff, but Chess Pats UK, hello Chess Pats, has actually said he could have donated. He's getting clever now, donated the eggs. That, that well, that's true. what happened in Ali McBeal. That, okay, right, I get it. So it could 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 work, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I don't know where this conversation's gone now. <laughs> it's gone a bit wayward. Um, <laughs> now um the next round starts in about five minutes and i just need to adjust the scores and uh, the everything basically so what we're doing now i'm just going to put you on a holding page which i which charlie the chess cat has lovely created this morning while i adjust above and um are you guys happy with the way it's arranged I, if i grab the clock times that's kind of working isn't it you i feel is it working this this way yeah, i think it? it's working i, think, uh, it's I working. think it's working very well yeah it's working as bad as good as we get so yeah so we'll take a little break we'll be back in like three to four minutes so you can do take a break as well and you can you know meet yourself and get a drink and uh, uh we'll be back in like three to four minutes so um see you then for the next round and it's only 11 rounds it's getting to the end of the tournament at the moment david howe is rolling um so see you shortly see you see you in a few minutes
Right, um, hello again. So uh, we're, we're off now with the next round, which is round eight. So I just need to uh, do this in this screen. So I'm gonna make some adjustments and we've got another exciting round in store. So do bear with me while I, I just change the scores around, which I have to prepare each each game. But what, what game should we leave it on just while I make the adjustments? Um, um, that, let's one? have a look at the leaders. Um, David Howell, well, Matthew Turner against David Howell. Okay. Um, right, let's go there. And I'll just add in the results, everyone, so you can see what's going on. And um, I'll leave you, Vanka, just to... Chat yeah, I'm just bit gonna. One, I saw okay. my head was chopped off. So. Oh, I can, oh, I can change that if you want. Um, it's, no, it's. I can sit lower. <laughs> okay. So you don't have to do anything. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I'll, ch I'll change it, Vank. It's very easy at my end. So don't worry. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I get your head in. It's probably that I've done something with Skype. So, um, oh, there you go. We'll get you. I'll leave it like that for okay, now. Okay, okay. I'll Thanks. get my cushion back up then. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you get comfortable, and I'll change the Skype. Don't worry. I'll change it. Yeah. Later. Okay then. I'll just add the results and stuff in first. Yeah. So, so okay. So, so yeah. No, I noticed there was a question in in the chat about um, the mating game. So I thought I'll address that. Yes, there is gonna actually. There's actually. Um, we've commissioned a, a movie script, and it's going to be completely different to the book. So it's kind of super fast paced, uh, almost like a thriller comedy. Oh, it's gonna be brilliant. So um, we're super excited about that. That's um, with the Hollywood movie agent right now. So we'll wow. see. Yeah. Wow. Well, I know. Well, thank you for inviting me to play the, the main lead man. <laughs> still, I, I, I expect that invitation to come quite soon, right, in the post? Yeah, just just tell me post. when I should. Yeah, yeah, the post. Yeah, the post. Yeah, people don't use the post do they? What is the post? <laughs> the post. You'll find you'll find oh. it in the post, uh, Simon. Don't worry. I'll find, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll keep an eye, I'll keep an eye on the mail. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep my eye on the mail for the next. Yeah, yeah. I'll wait. Um, does yeah. anyone use the post anymore? I suppose people do a bit, you know. But Christmas yeah. cards and all that. So you get bills in the post. Yeah. Okay. I think we're getting it. I might have not include everyone's rating but you can see that in the in the games hopefully that is as bad as, bad as clear as it's going to get um and i'll just adjust your head now Yvanka, and uh what's okay. going oh yes sorry about that I, I was messing with you i made you chopped off my head and i like made myself small made myself big it's all good um i think mm -hmm. it's me justin so there we go yvanka has gone for a second but she'll be back any minute now okay oh there we go look at that perfect i disappeared you did so um so what's going on in the, in the game but with you've... turner and david howe is it is it um yeah it's a it's a trompovsky and i i um it's kind of ended up being into a trompovsky where i uh, where um i think david has been playing this since uh time immemorial, immemorial you know because he's been playing this since i looked at him well, since he was a kid, basically, I didn't want to say that, but it's kind of difficult to think of David as a kid. But then he was—he's been playing chess since he was tiny. Um, yeah, and I just remember him playing this type of system that he would always allow bishop takes knight, always capture with the pawn, and uh, yeah. And then, then you can kind of see that he's kind of going for that. He loves the bishop pair. And uh, Matthew's given him the bishop pet. And he actually really likes this pawn structure. And um, we saw this from one of his games yesterday, although he was on the white side of it. He really loves it when his pawns are doubled. And uh, he gave you a masterclass in the pawn structure that that extra pawn on the king side just means that his king is safer. And then he can go about using the bishop pair just to open up the position in the center. And of course, of course he kind of said to Simon, don't get into an end game. That's the very most important thing with this uh, pawn structure. Yeah, it's, it's actually interesting because I remember going into this position with the white pieces against a very strong Armenian player, uh, Sigisian. Now, h4 is mm -hmm. a very normal move. Uh, you want to try to do something. And um, I got this position against Sigisian. I lost the game. I tried some aggressive ideas and I tried to target this pawn structure. And if I looked at this now, uh, you know, I, I think you, everyone does Im improve their ideas as they get older. Is um, I, I would just be like, I shouldn't be trying to attack Black's pawn structure because of what you just pointed out. Black has an extra pawn to defend the king. 
that's not the right strategy in the position. The right strategy here is actually to try to exchange off pieces, get to an ending where I can try to get a pass pawn in the middle of the board somehow on the D file or, or some pressure on the C file. That would be the strategy that I'd adopt now anyway. Um, and, and this pawn structure is funny because, you know, you, you might think a double pawn is not good. But David, as you mentioned, you yeah, it's a good observation. He really likes his double F pawns because mm -hmm. his king's very safe and he likes david likes having a safe king he doesn't like getting attacked so he, he he's gone into this and this kind of position i think is basically even and david yeah. likes an even position with black um, and he likes the bishops he likes the bishops. So he will, right. and, and he yeah. likes to play long games we've seen that he's not yeah. afraid of that he will torture you seven for seven hours he don't he don't care so uh yeah it's okay. a kind of a perfect opening choice for him definitely and I'm sorry I cut you a bit short with your your script thing in Hollywood because that sounds really exciting. I was just trying to make those final adjustments, but yeah, um, that's it, no. It, what, it's, so what's uh, happened? It's is fun. it actually Hollywood? Hollywood's. I mean, yeah, it's it's with a Hollywood um, wow. agent. Okay. Uh, the yeah. the writer is uh, again also from Hollywood, wow. and uh, it's, we've seen two versions of it. We asked for some changes to be made, and they're yeah. making it. And uh, yeah, it's going to go out to the. Well, I tell you what, your timing now with the Queen's Gambit is it'd be phenomenal to get a, a i mean people will lap up a film with a female lead character in i mean now it's just the queen's gambit is yeah. basically going to make your book going to make you a millionaire right is that right well yeah it will be it will be what's what i like about this script is that it's yeah. really different you know it will okay. be it, it will be chest done in a way it's never been done before so i'm interested so, you know so you how, kind how of, is it different well i can't really give too much away but okay. it's, it's going to be well, if I can just tell you the genre, it's like a thriller comedy. Thriller comedy, okay. Yeah. Okay, and so, um, so you see, yeah. there haven't been too many films about chess that have kind of maybe right. thriller comedies. Okay, so it's going to be laugh out loud. Maybe. Yeah, some of yeah, some of okay. the jokes were quite funny. Okay, good, oh, good, and yeah. it, and is is James, who's the co-writer with Ivanka, is he helping with the script and yourself and at parts as you go along? Is that how it works? I, no, no, I no, anything. no. So, so yeah. it's kind of we, they, yeah. they, 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 someone else um, has yeah. written the movie script, okay. and uh, we give our, our feedback and we ask for certain things, and they kind of say, okay, yes okay. or no. Awesome. Oh, that's going to be so when can we expect this to come out i mean it's just perfect timing you're you're yeah, no, i know i know we're kind game. of like we're Brilliant on the phone timing. to him and i think hurry up yeah. hurry up yeah, you, we want to see the third script so you, you want to you know get on top of the the, the big push with the, with the queen's gambit don't you right. i mean so so i is this your retirement sort of uh you know script or are you going to get write some more books and uh, you know what's what's the future hold it sounds exciting it does it definitely sounds exciting on on the it definitely is exciting in the movie front you know we're, it's it would be so brilliant to kind of see chess done in a different way and also to be in the mainstream because that's been lacking for a while but um yeah, yeah i mean it's it's just yeah, yeah. You, you know the thing is though with mo with hollywood and whatever until a contract has been signed and you know you have the deal and a production yeah. date you know you really can't tell what's going to happen no, no, so it's a bit strange. up in the air, but well, we're, okay. we're confident. Okay, well, fingers crossed. It just seems like perfect timing. I mean, mm. like, God, why don't I think of that? Write some script, get a female lead character, bang it out to Hollywood, job done, retire. Yeah, yeah it sounds good. Good luck with that. I hope it goes well. So, uh, very, very exciting times. Yes, and um, good. So, back, back to the games. Well, I mean, I, I, we're going to move away from Turner versus How because this is just developing pretty standard fashion just to let you know when i when i've seen this position black's main idea here is kind of use these open files and the way that i remember sagissian played against me sagissian moved his knight into the center so i expect black might play f5 knight f6 and come in here maybe the bishop will try to get on these light squares as well but let, let, let's move on um, yeah, I've, I've seen david do something exactly the same as that uh, so we go to Gawain's game, who's in second place. And yep. Gawain is, um, let me just see, where is Gawain? Here we are. Uh, is Glenn Fleer, the back marker at the moment. Glenn having a bit of a tough time on, on half out of seven. It's a really tough field. And the, the problem with this, Yvanka, is that if you're having a bad tournament, that could be like any of us, really, I think. You know, you just lose a couple of games. You get a bit, you know, it's a bit of a quick time limit. Everyone wants to beat you, let's remember. Because mm -hmm. you are like 
the thing is, no, in chess, no one feels sorry for you. They just, if they see you at the bottom of the table, they're like, right, that's the guy I've got to beat. We've got to punish that guy. And it's quite unforgiving. It's not like, oh, poor guy at the bottom, let's give him a draw. No, 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 none of that. It's like kill, kill, kill. Um, the whipping boy, lock me down. I said, it is, it, yeah, I, it is the whipping boy, as I think I've said before. Whoosh, not like that, but I think it's a term. And uh, we're, we're going back to Ivanka's books now. Let's let's move away from, you know, the, the genre of the books. And um, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, this position, Gwen will really be wanting to win. Um, he's got to keep the pressure on David. Um, like you say, this is round seven now, is it? Uh, this is round eight. Round eight. Yeah, of course it is. And there's 11 rounds in total. So still a fight for first place looks like he's got a decent decentest position with black here Ivanka I'd say yeah it does definitely looks like he's got a, a good position I mean I write, really like his activity on the on the queen side and I'm not sure white is doing anything I mean just look at white's pieces they look very they look okay don't they but then they don't actually have a plan yeah, like I mean... the, the queen is supporting the bishop on g5 very good but the knight on e e2, don't know where that's going. It's been dominated. I mean, is there some kind of? Hang on a second. Is there anything concrete in the position? Is there some queen takes pawn? Okay, well, let's have a look. So I, that's just, the first thing. Well, rookie one's just been played, so it, it's so. Oh, okay, it, okay. So, so, it's so queen's is the move. threat queen takes pawn? Okay, let me just grab the times. I keep forgetting to grab the times, which is something a little bit annoying. Um, so. We'll just add in the clocks. At the moment, probably the time's not so important, but we will put it there anyway. Um, yeah, so maybe maybe if it's white's move, white will grab that pawn, right? Uh, as you mm -hmm. pointed out. Um, it just strikes me that black's got a lot of space on the queen side, but maybe this is a weakened pawn rather than a strong pawn. These two pieces look active. Maybe they're not so active. Um, I mean, you could play queen a5, to defend that one but that seems an odd square for the queen Gwen loves playing actively so what about b3 let's 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 just push b3 that, okay that's a more logical move right so the only move to play is um just wondering whether there are any tactics no no tactics so uh bishop b1 so bishop seems b... to be forced looks forced yeah and... sound the retreat and then um what else is there the thing with this is, you, you know, whenever you make a pawn move, you give away you give away a square, and and in this position, you do give away the c3 square by playing the pawn on, and, and White might be able to utilize that by you know by moving a knight into c c3. As Tim Wars also pointed out, the pawn on b4 was was definitely restricting mm. those knights. So this 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 seems actually with those knights coming out. It seems okay for white. I don't think it's yeah, it, okay. it does. I agree. I, I, I do like the pawn on b4. So why not just keep it there? Maybe you can go rook b8 instead. Just um, okay. So so he has rook gone. Rook c8. He has played has rook played. c8. Yeah. And uh, this is. Let's have a look. Gwen. Gwen loves the odd tactic. And let's have a look. If queen takes b4, he's obviously got something lined up here. Can we work out what it is? Is it? what is it obviously the rook is lined up here yes so that's the first place to look at some knight move in the position uh i mean again if you can take a pawn and you can't see the reason not to take it you just have to be brave uh, and take it but there is something happening on d3 uh as uh ringed has pointed out nice nicely pointed out ringed um the bishop, you bishop to... d3 yeah looks like a very nice move actually it's only a pawn, and this pawn's not very relevant at the moment. Gawain loves so powerful with his pieces, Gawain. And the issue is, if you now play something like queen d2, then black can now take on c2 and go knight takes e4. And mm -hmm. you see why he's placed the rook uh, on this square. And he's also got some annoying checks on this diagonal. Yes. This would be very good for Gawain. <clears throat> so yeah, is, definitely. Is there anything else he can play here uh, after bishop d3 can he can't see what else he does here this is crafty tactic no yeah i think that pawn is untouchable i think he um Gawain has to i'm um, sorry glenn has to just uh play mm. something else yeah you can't grab that pawn <clears throat> and if you can't grab it that's another piece of Gawain's that's 
becoming very good. So, I mean, what, look at this. what about going Knight C1? <laughs> he, he, he has played Knight C1. He's knight played C1. it. He's, and got, then, he's gone Knight and then, C1. Uh, knight B3 or, or something like that. <clears throat> very peculiar maneuvering, right? It's like, it's like this, I don't know, the wheels of a tractor is sort of saying, I don't know. It's like the wheels of a tank I'm thinking of. It's like they're all moving like in it together <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's it's not the finest moment i admit that but uh, i'm a little bit lost as to what to do with white so yes no, when I you're agree. when, when you're lost a little bit lost why not tr try and trade a few pieces yeah <laughs> and now the queen has come to a5 uh, why is the green arrow hollow please fill in all the arrows well oh right um, is that a thing no, I, I think it's just someone being annoying, to be honest. Um, I mean, I, the, 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 it's hollow. Hang on a second. We, we learned something. Someone. That if there, if there's an emoji, then uh, then you, you, then that doesn't mean that they're being serious. Well, that was something that I learned yesterday. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure about that because if you get a message from, I mean, let, that's like saying to someone, "I don't mean to insult you," and then they insult you. It's like they're, they're easing the pain, like passive aggressive, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, it's like, you know, you send someone a message saying, I don't know, I mean, this is horrible to say, and I don't like the way you look, smiley face. Does that make it okay? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's like... No, but you can kind of deliver, you can be a bit jokey with some criticism. Like you can kind of like not be entirely serious with like the arrows, like please fill in the arrows. It just kind of might mean like, yeah, yeah. ha, 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 you know, kind of like a, like a joke. Not, I'm not being serious. Yeah, I mean, the, the reason they're hollow is literally it just shows the last move played. So it's maybe mm -hmm. for, so we can keep an eye on the last move played. When when the arrows are filled like that, that is just me making the arrows. So if it's a hollow, hollow arrow, it's just demonstrating the last move played. So uh, that that's as simple as that, really. Um, explanation exact. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We could talk about, we could talk about arrows for ages if you want, but there is some chess being played. And yes. um, Gwen's now, I mean, Gwen's now facing knight f2, and uh, these pieces are still sort of maneuvering they're, they're, around. They're unfurling themselves. You know, they we have a slight improvement. One of the yeah. one of the knights has moved from d1 to f2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the, the, the and knight. you know, and and they're kind of get, gearing themselves up to be exchanged, which is always good when you're stuck for a plan. You know, why yeah. not try to yeah. initiate a set of exchanges, especially when you're cramped. Yeah, I mean, and I suppose the thing in this position, if you just think positionally as well, Black's pieces over here, they are pretty, pretty good. Um, but the pieces on the king's side, especially the bishop, the king's union bishop, can be very bad. So hence why Gwen's played this very clever move. Gwen just is so good at maximising the potential of his pieces, Gwen. He, he really is so tricky. He, he understands piece power. And this idea is to try to come into f4, even if it loses a pawn, because if you win a pawn there, the bishop opens up. Uh, but I was going to say that these two pieces are quite bad. So if if if, uh, if Glenn Fleer can like make some exchanges, so let's say exchanges that knight off, and then maybe he tries to exchange the bishop off, and he hmm. leaves Gwen with these two pieces, then that that might actually benefit might actually benefit Glenn uh, in some ways, yeah. because the d6 pawn is is. Also, the pawn structure should be better for it. Should be better for yeah. Glenn. The d6 pawn is very weak in an ending. You can hit this in a number of ways. So it's not all bad news for Glenn. This this structure, which you often get in the Kings in your defence, but but um, I, I'm not sure about his last move actually. Um, right. Okay. Uh, it doesn't quite doesn't quite deal with um Gawain's threat of a uh, knight to f4. I mean, I think you've anchored if it's me. I'd just go G3 here because I just wouldn't want that knight coming in uh, just to just to stop my opponent's idea. I know it possibly weakens F3, but I think that would have been my response. Look at, you know, always look at your opponent's last move, see what they're trying to do, stop their idea. Um, yeah, right. me too, me too. Yeah. But, okay, but okay, is there any anything... Let's have a look. Is there anything wrong with knight to B3? Because it is the move that white wants to play. Okay, so if we take that one and go, let's say knight to f4, let's continue yeah. our plan. Uh, looks like a logical way to go. This is the kind of position, if you play the kings in defense, you will understand that taking here, winning a pawn, is not really anything you. I mean, maybe it is something you look at, but it's not really. This dark square bishop is so 
powerful and the dark squares just come to life you can go queen b6 the bishop can come in on this diagonal which is quite a wonky one <laughs> uh, and it's attack i mean this is just horrible right for for what yeah. you don't want to do this do you i don't think so no 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 you definitely don't don't take that knight you've got to play around the knight um but i just wonder whether you could kick it back how do, how do we do that g3 I mean, G three is one way, but it oh, could be. No, oh, no, no, it's nice. But then there is the yeah. counterattack at H. Maybe that's nothing to be afraid of. It's Bishop E seven or F six. Yeah. F6. So now, now we. Now, now it is more tempted to take the knight because I might. Be yeah, able maybe to keep not F six. Maybe H six then. Okay, and if H six, if I move my bishop here, which is I was thinking about this move, and then Queen. Queen, queen C seven. This is the kind of tricky stuff that Gawain just loves doing right <laughs> he's so tricky i mean we we say that luke's tricky but all these players that are, are blooming tricky aren't they yeah yeah totally tricky. you know they're, they're not 2700 for nothing i know they're good at every area of the game tactics i mean there's you know it's so hard to find a way i mean this is getting really complex i'm just wondering what happens if i you know if i take on b4 here just to make it even more complex um i'm attacking the bishop attacking d6 very tactical position right yeah very tactical position knight takes b3 has been played by Gwen. we'll just go back bishop takes b3 okay. played and will he now move his knight in so if the knight goes in he has moved the knight in so the key idea is what's what's his plan after g3 he will have something ridiculously crafty planned here it's just Gwen. Gwen's just he's just naughty like that what's his idea then is it is it just knight e2 even and no, that doesn't look good. That looks rubbish. What is Gwen's idea after G3? Because um, you don't want to move the knight back. That's that's just that, that's just bad. So what yeah, is yeah, that, that that looks just that doesn't quite look good enough. Um, as soon as you start going back in these positions, you you, you okay? G well, we're going to find out. Well, we're going to find out because uh, yeah. G3's been played. Yeah, interesting, right? I mean, yeah. So I think it might be this h6, but that last line for white looked okay to me. Bishop e7, attack yeah. the knight, attack a pawn, and uh, if you move your knight, I'll take this pawn. If you this, I mean, this would be a major upset, really, in the scheme of how the tournament's going. Gawain loses this one, it's 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 going to be a big problem for him. I, I mean, he's not in that position yet, but what is his idea after g3? Anyone see it in the chat? And again, hello to everyone in the Twitch chat, twitch.tv ginger gem, we'll see where you're looking. By the way, Nick Perk, Keith Arkar, draw. Um, any other results ended? Can Gormali keep his role going? He's playing McShane, it's still going on. That's the only draw so far. Yeah. Uh, what's Glenn's rating? Well, uh, his rapid rating is a little bit low, as we can see. You can see the rating kind of, well, some of the ratings above, or actually uh, it's 24, well, 34. He's made a move. He's played f6. Okay, so f6 has been played. Now, this is where I thought you might now be able to take here. Uh, so you have to take back. And now I probably take with a pawn. The reason I'm taking the pawn, I might not actually, but I'm just, is that I might not actually take the pawn. I might no, no, take, take with queen. the queen. Take yeah, with the queen. The, the queen, queen, queen becomes a, the, yeah. a, a, a wonderful thing after queen takes f4. It does, trying to come in here. Yeah. And we don't have to worry about f5 so much now because queen takes we can d6. Even get, get greedy, right? Yeah, definitely. This is this is totally different to before because in the previous position, black wouldn't be able to play something like bishop e5. But if you try to play bishop e5 here, there's obviously quite a big problem with the Tornello playing site. If he suddenly put the bishop there, <laughs> he'd be like, whoa. <laughs> How did he do that? The jumping bishop. <laughs> Magic moves. Yeah. Okay, so Tim's recommending if this move just queen b6, keep some pressure up, and it's just if you if you if Gwen can get the dark square bishop into the game, total compensation. But now it looks quite hard to play this one into the game. If you ever play f5, I'll probably just whip it off. But maybe f5 is coming. This is his try. Yeah, um, yeah, but you can kind of just initiate some trades. I mean, the, the king, the black king, isn't that safe, you know? Because I'm just thinking rook yeah. c1. Rook c1, good move, and now. We can try to come around the back this is looking a little bit this variation is looking a little bit tricky for gar so you, yeah let's say you take it queen takes and now i've got infiltration i have to try f5 i think something like yeah that. But, but isn't there some kind of um 
probably just Queen, a Queen, Queen C H R and then Queen E six and a come in. Queen E six. Yeah, this is not nice. So something seems to have gone wrong for Gwen. I have to say, uh, this knight idea might not be working. And Tim's also pointing out. I mean, I, I, Rook C one looks like a very decent move, but I was also thinking King G two would be kind of nice yeah. to go Knight G four. I was just wondering what's going on after F five. When one critical line I was thinking of is pawn takes f5. When white's pieces, black's king's looking weak. And if you go bishop yeah. e5, which I don't really believe, I can probably even just take that one. And if it would you go, be very tempting, right? Yeah, I mean, your king is ready for the picking, right? All of, Now, it's black's king is just all over the shop. So I, I'm, yeah. fe I, I'm, fe I'm feeling it could be tough for Gwen. But shall we, shall we go on to another game? I mean, like... Um, one more okay sorry one more move being played there queen c7 um and maybe it's just about okay for Gwen, but i'd prefer to be white here i think i i, I prefer to be white as well um a pawn is a pawn yes and okay. uh shall we have a look at uh michael adams against uh, matthew wadsworth definitely this is very interesting position here i'm just going to get the times up for this everyone so we can see what's going on and uh we've been, both been impressed with wadsworth play he's he's one of the only I, just, I don't know if it's fair to say but one of the only younger players from england who's sort of making moves in the chess world uh I, in some ways it's a bit of a sad state of affairs I, I i feel i mean like uh if we go through our generations and going back england uh, has always had quite a lot of up-and-coming grandmasters but now um, there's not that many. Is that fair to say, or am I being unfair? Is there um, many juniors who are going to be grandmasters? No, yeah, they're, they're, no. I think there are going to be a lot of a few juniors who are going to be grandmasters. I mean, like Ravi Harrier, and I think you have um, Daniel Fernandez. Well, Daniel Fernandez is actually grand. I, I think it was a conscious decision to invite the older players who had been to Hastings, who had been part of Hastings yeah. here. So that's why Matthew is a yeah. sole name. And he actually qualified via the British, um, yeah. the online championships. But I mean, so, these guys like Ravi is not a junior anymore. I mean, do, does England have any young players who are coming through? I mean, compared to other nations, I'd say not really, to be honest. I mean, not any grandmasters under the age of 18. Yeah, I mean, 20. and I would put, I would put the finger of... Um, well, I wouldn't put the. It's to do with the fact that we don't have a structure. I mean, yeah. I, I was absolutely shocked to find out that the budget for the junior director is zero, like the domestic budget. Right. That's like should not be the case. Yeah. There should be money for a structure to be made so that if you have some talented juniors, that you can, you know, just a, even something basic like a travel fund. You know that that should be in place so that there is a structure so if someone wants to improve great this is the path you follow and if someone wants to play chess there should be uh, just for fun a hobby because we need hobby players to kind of keep the game alive again there needs to be tournaments and things in place for that and and uh, we don't have anything and the school system is like so tough on our juniors and a, and i do know that a lot of head teachers don't like chess they do anything they can to avoid the um, the kids playing chess. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a strange one. I, I'm certainly agreeing with you on most of those points. I mean, it, it kind of does seem like a bit of an elitist game, um, unfortunately. And but it, it's kind of money problems, isn't it? And mm. uh, the the issue is where does the money come from to pay for these things? And uh, I think obviously it's fantastic to have Kaplan sponsoring this tournament. Yes. You know, we need to attract sponsors into chess which is a great game to help out children in many different ways and adults yeah. and uh thank you kaplan for sponsoring and putting some money into chess but we need to have i think in the english chess federation we need to have people who go out and seek sponsorship in in a good way um yeah i know they're trying to do that but it, it, it seems to me that that is just key without money you can't have yes. up and coming juniors but it, it, it is very sad that looking back in the in the 70s 80s england was Okay, it was one of the best chess nations in the world. Many grandmasters, our generation, many grandmasters, young grandmasters. But now it's just, it's literally going downhill when other nations are yeah. just really getting grandmasters here, there, everywhere, and there's all that support. I don't think there's an easy answer. 
But, but you know, I was yeah. talking to Danny King about this, and he was yeah. telling me when he was a junior, there was very much this uh, community spirit kind of thing. He would be working with other grandmasters, training together, and we kind of lost that. Some Somehow or other, we, we kind of got a little bit too competitive within our kind of like circuit, our domestic circuit. And so it meant that juniors were no longer willing to share. And it's not so fun if you're not in a community. And uh, yeah, and I think that this really impacts on the fact that it's very difficult to study alone. And if you don't have like this network to share your ideas with, then it's going to be very, very difficult. And then on top of that, you've got the financial problems and the fact that it's expensive and it's not easy to travel. You know, I, I was shocked when it came to the the, Brit the British Women's, uh, not the British, the English Women's Championship. It was in Hull and there was no travel fund in place to get to Hull. Hull's not an easy place to get to. Um, so something like that could be helpful. Like I remember Zoe Varney wanted to play and she could only find tickets from Oxford to Hull for like 140 pounds. <coughs> <coughs> Indeed. Because already it's like a non starter. I mean, she managed to find some for £60, but something should be in place to help this kind of stuff. Now, I'm going to try, um, this could ruin everything, by the way. I'm going to I'm gonna try pasting in uh, a new PGN thing um, just so we can get the clock times and I don't have to grab them. So I'll, I'll let you, obviously, I think it's a very interesting okay. topic. What, what, can, what should be done then? What can we do um, to to try and improve things for the future. I mean, it's not an easy answer, but okay, now this might mess everything up, but we'll give it a go. Okay, let's do it. Oh, <laughs> oh my words. Okay, let's see if this works. Let's do it. Uh, so okay. what can we do? We can have more tournaments like this. This this is a uh, step one and a big, uh, and just have a lot more tournaments, have broadcasts, um, and just make sure that there's a lot of there's a structure in place for juniors and for absolutely everyone for the for the <coughs> adult player, adult hobby player, adult improver, um, maybe even a professional. Even at the professional levels, there does need to be some kind of assistance. Um, and I'm just looking at the game between Mickey Adams against uh, Matthew Wadsworth, and I'm just looking at it, and I'm just uh, it's a uh, messy. The two pawns on the queen side look incredibly scary, and I'm just wondering whether M Mickey is going to work some magic in the center, whether he's just simply going to line up his rooks on the D line and just uh, say that Black's king is uh, a lot unsafe, well, a lot more unsafe than White's king. Yeah. Right. I just think I've added the clock times. Look Have at you that. done it? Look at that magic. I think, I, I think well I've done, done. it. Well done. Yeah, unbelievable, right? We are so, not worthy, Simon. Oh, I know. <laughs> Somehow, um, just 24 just got back to me and told me how to do it. And it works. That never, I never work. Because anything technical, it, generally uh, the computer will explode or something. And I actually missed what you were saying there. And I was actually very interested in the answer to the question, what do we do? Sorry, Ivanka. I, just because I was trying to concentrate on that bit there. But uh, interesting game as well. What, what were you saying should be done? Just... Uh, just Sorry, paraphrase yes, it quickly. Uh, I think that there should be a basically. I think that there should be a structure in place, um, just for all levels of chess. I mean, we should have a system in the UK to have it. Uh, you know, if you're an adult improver or you're just an adult hobby player, then there should be tournaments for you to play. There should be a community for you to get involved in, and uh, also the same for a professional. If you want to make money from chess then there should be some kind of assistance given, not necessarily financial, that's not what I'm saying, but they, you know, these tournaments to go to, these good coaches. Um, and, and when it's the same comes when it comes to juniors, because we have to remember, you have to remember that chess is, it's not just a sport, it's also a hobby and um, it's also a profession. And so you have to cater for all those levels. And if you do that, a lot of other chess federations do that. And uh, I think that that's the way forward. Um, and uh, I do think, yeah, I think, co and I, when, especially when it comes to juniors, um, coaches should be wisely chosen. Um, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm, I've suddenly got very distracted by the Mickey Adams against uh, Matthew Watson. There's, there's a lot of B-file <laughs> action going on here, isn't there? I mean, look at that. It's like, forget, forget yeah. the situation in in in, yeah. in British chess. Let's have a look at this. Yeah. 
definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, there's, I mean, we could talk about you know British English chess. Everyone's got their opinions on it. Certainly, I mean, uh, it, it, it's. I just love to see more juniors coming through. And, and the one, the one slight issue I have with it, but I don't know the answer, is that when I did any coaching a while back, I got a bit sick of it for England because it just seemed to be the, the kids who had money that that were yeah. there. They they weren't very good at chess. I'll be honest. You know, the under 16 section in the World Championships, they're asking me what to do in move three of the Raul Lopez. And I was like, you don't know this? And I was, and I was had a chat with their parents and it's like, they basically, it was just because they could afford to be there. It, it was, that was the only reason they picked to play. It was nothing to do with the quality of their, their, their standard of their play, which was a little bit strange and uh, uh, it's, it's disappointing, but maybe that's the only way it could have been run at the moment because where did the money come through to send any talent and kids through? But it should of course be based on talent and It'd be lovely if a big sponsor, I think a big sponsor comes along, funds a 10 year program to, you know, help the talented kids improve with top coaches over a long period of time. In chess, you can't do anything immediate. It's hard work um, and, it, you know, uh, but nothing's gonna happen immediately. But the way we're going is, uh, unfortunately, it, it just seems, we're, we're, you know, of course, it, it seems all the talented players are funded by their parents, basically. Mm. You have to have parents who can afford to send you to places and you have to play a lot of tournaments and you have to have parents who can spend the time and, and that you know rules out like, working working class children unfortunately uh which is which is unfortunate um at the moment well yeah it also rules yeah. out you know where if you don't have like if you're living in a place which is a little bit rural hang on we, we just have to Oof. go we Oof. have to go and have to Oof. look at this what? <laughs> wow i mean yes Okay, what's happening here? Oh, C five. Yeah, okay, so oh. King takes Queen C five. Yeah. Oh, very nice. That's that's that was Mickey. That was a uh, that was uh, <laughs> Mickey magic. Um, <laughs> Mickey. I mean, like this this looked this this was a crazy game. I mean, I, I obviously it looked like Mickey's king was in some trouble, and, and Matthew Wadsworth was having a great attack of that king. Um yeah. But Mickey's Mickey, and you know, even though he he showed a bit of sign of blunderage against Danny yesterday he can spot things and yes now well, he's well two I think it's, it's going to be all the uh, uh, all about the f pawn mm. um mm. he's yeah he's gone for it rook f8 yeah. he's going to hit that pawn and uh the h7 pawn will unfortunately drop but uh yeah, yeah okay the, now yeah but e5 I don't think is quite correct because now okay he Mickey is really playing faster well, it, it must, uh, he took it, some took some quick decisions yeah. there. I, I would have. I was thinking about going g five, but uh, I mean, he's three pawns up. I mean, it's, it's not perfect placement of his pieces. That's true. But it's at the end of the day, three pawns, three pawns, right? And um, yeah, I hadn't quite realised it was so many pawns. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of pawns. A lot of pawns. Yeah. I mean, let's just have a look at that tactic again. And uh, this was. I mean, I, I think Matthew Wadsworth was playing very nice and he's playing in the right way he was going for it against mickey but the little tactic which occurred was this lovely rook takes d6 because mm. without this move you're in a bit of trouble on the b file you know if you have right. to take here rook takes b6 and all of a sudden the queen's coming into this square yeah i mean uh, it could be over for mickey so he found this rook takes d6 well he probably saw it in advance though mickey beautiful tactic the idea if king takes you go c5 and, and it's winning and the way it played it must be winning for him anyway uh we got this position on the board he's two pawns up it's it's going to be winning he, he's yeah. fantastic at the endings um so well done mickey um now a quick update on the other games um shall we are we okay to go over to something else i think mickey's yes, doing yes. well now let's let's let's, get, let's go over to um well we haven't looked at david house have we so yeah let's have a look at david see yeah. how he's uh working his magic and um we can have a look at the position here um and david with the black pieces it's equal material matthew turner is he's kind of he, we did say matthew wants to get into an ending earlier from the structure he had um and look at this wait Bishop wait wait, wait one second we have a we have a, <laughs> a tactic we have a trick does it work no. Does it work? I mean, can you not just take the bishop? Um, well, if he takes the bishop, 
I guess it's to get control of the f5 square. Yeah, king f8. He didn't take the bishop, by the way. Um, and do I now come over here? Yeah, rook h6, and then... And I think David's position falls apart here, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Because of the threats of... Okay, so is there any other move? Okay, so let's go back. So there are, I mean, it, he doesn't have to worry about, this is not a very important pawn, and David realizes Okay, that. so he can just take the take the d4 pawn. Well, he's gone bishop f6, and he wants to take it with his bishop, improving his bishop, and look at the time. The time is so important. Bishop takes d4, h5. But at the moment, I think Matthew's holding, holding, he's at least okay, Matthew, here, I feel. Probably just okay, I don't know. I mean, it's equal on material, opposite colored bishops. There is a bit of an issue with b2 in some lines, but he's got play against the black king, a little bit of play. This is un this is not an easy win for David by any means, right? Mm -hmm. At all. So, yeah. No, it's not It's not easy, but this bishop on d4 is quite nice. Yeah. This is very nice. Um, I, I do like it. I do like his bit. Oh, but hang on. Let's, let's wait until David plays his moves. He's got... <laughs> he's taken off on e3 yeah he's uh, got six seconds on the clock wow yeah wow. typical david right um, right <laughs> uh, keeping I mean, us all on edge i mean i i, I think actually I, I prefer to be white here i'll be honest because um the rooks are more active and again looking at the pieces i like white's pieces mm -hmm. um the bishop i still think is a pretty decent piece but this is a very good square for the knight um it's it's really messy this one very exciting finish yeah well um uh matthew town has been really sneaky um he, uh -huh. he just gave it a check before he captured the pawn because he wanted to threaten rook h8 check um winning the rook so now king to e7 and uh now he's a pawn up no uh, the, the, both of the, the material is the same yeah it looks like lots of things are getting exchanged off as well with this last move a4 which i think is a clever move he's you know if he gets rid of these two pawns somehow then there's no danger at all to white with his more active pieces the only danger was that the b pawn is going to queen and this move's trying to unstabilize the knight on c4 so so far a very impressive play um from uh shall we go back to um gawain okay. is, is, is... Is he? I think he's just lost. Okay, so this. Oh, is... actually, uh, I believe he's lost. Not I think. Well, he's he's two pawns down, and we were saying we liked Glenn Fleer's position. Mm -hmm. um, Gwen played this knight into f4, which at the time I thought was was great, but maybe maybe didn't work so well. And as as you know, as long as Glenn does not does not freak out and do a <laughs> blunder, he's just going to win because he's got two pawns and this is kind of a position you should be able to play quite simply because you've got centralization it's quite hard to blunder in this position i mean no offense to glenn but you you get nervous when you know you're winning but this position is much simpler than a lot of other ones right and he just comes in and uh, there's a couple of things he can do he can even just try to win these pawns he can try to reroute his rook somehow or just slowly move up the board at the right time i, I like your plan so, of going bishop f7 um to be honest yeah. I think bishop f7 and is is a nice idea so Gwen's trying king, to stop that one king, king to g7 and then yeah. bishop f7 and... hmm. well, this would be a great result for glenn because obviously you, you're at the back of the pack let's remember that every player in his tournament is class just because they're having a bad tournament it doesn't mean they cannot beat anyone and mm. glenn is only on half out of seven and if he wins this he's going to beat Gwen jones the european blitz champion which would be a, it's a big result that so um there is a long way to go but of course if this this is winning it's just winning position you're two pawns up and black's pawns are on very bad squares i mean gwen might better gwen is notorious for saving lost positions though you isn't he i remember in the isle of man he's just absolutely notorious he, he, he's like houdini um <laughs> in saving him but i think i think it you can't save this one bishop f7 here, I, right? I don't think so no i was yeah. just trying to work out what's going to happen in terms of yeah. in terms of the standings if David were to draw yeah. and Wayne were to lose. Well, David Howe has drawn. Let's just have a look at yes. the results very quickly because there's not many games going on, only Gawain's. Nick Pert draw Keith Arcar. Uh, and yeah. Meet lost to Mark Hedman. Great bounce back by Mark. Um, good to see. Mark. Mark's just so resilient and he's, he's won that important game there. Glenn Flair is still going on. 
Mickey Adams did win, so Mickey bumps up a little bit. Um, as we said, Turner draw Hal, and Luke Machine managed to hold a draw against Danny. Danny on fire at the moment. So, yes, this is the only game remaining, Ivanka, at the moment. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, so basically it would mean that David is a point clear of everyone. And right. uh, that's quite significant. Okay, so Gawain is work, trying to work his uh, magic, but I, it, I don't think that this is going to be too too much of a help. I mean, this is quite simply winning, isn't it? Even if I just yeah, take these take, two and then queen my h Yeah. Because you can't ever move the king because the pawn right. queens. And then and you just escort the, the pawn, the yeah, h-pawn, just push to its destination. Yeah. I always think of the king as like some kind of bodyguard can <laughs> step aside. He's like a, sh a <laughs> chaperone, clear... isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Chaperoning the pawns through to the other end of the board. Yes. And this position, okay, we have a couple more moves, the king and the pawn, as we see coming up. And I think what you do at the end, you get your king to h8, your pawn to h7, and then you move your rook to g7 is one mm -hmm. way to win. So you could do it like this. Um, so let's see. King here. You can also stop. Here. You can also stop there and just go rook to d6. Rook d6 and, and g6 yeah. would be nice. Yeah. yeah. And, and then so just get the king to g7 and then. Yeah. So you still okay. That I like your way, Ivanka. If we just go back, Ivanka's pointed out in, rather than putting the king here, let's go rook here first. And then rook g6 while we can. Uh, black has to wait, rook g6, and then your king can move in the pawn queen. So that's yeah. very simple. He's gone h7, rook f4. So now the idea is to get the rook to g7. Yeah, and so it's... it's or g8 as well. G8. Yeah, g8. And this is winning. This is a, a well-known technique to win. Just in the neck of time. King, king e7, rook g8. And then the king can sneak out like this yeah i think it, yeah it, it can sneak out many yeah. many ways yeah so it's it's gonna be a bit of a surprise result for gawain because yeah. Yeah, it was very nice for glenn because he was he was in last place with half points out half point out of seven that's a little bit grim you know it's, you know everyone is strong here but it's very it feels really emotionally tough to be on half point out of seven so oh, definitely definitely mm, uh, four is it uh, how many games three games to go uh, after this one that's a very bold prediction by tim wall who's going to say that danny gormali is going to win well danny gormali he's a long way off he's he's two points off the lead tim so david has to score less than one out of three uh so i i think it's unlikely for danny to win it danny having a great great tournament now um and you can see oh he's got his king to e6 this is and now he goes this way with the king yeah he's got rook g6 check at the right time to avoid any mates so rook a8 you don't queen because of rook you actually end up losing but you just play after rook a1 a sorry if this happens don't queen because the checkmate but just play this check first right yeah and then king comes to oh. f4 you have to go oh. rook <laughs> Not <laughs> rook a6 then you have to play here no, but i mean no no okay. no you don't go that you go rook g8 you go rook g8 no but then the king goes back back yeah you have to go rook Rook H6. Yes. What's wrong with Rook H6? No, yeah, then he goes uh, Rook A Rook A8. Oh right. Okay. Well, we're going to see. Let's have a look. It's not okay. Queen, King F5. White to move. So Rook. Okay. You, you guess got, you have you got, to go. You got. No, you haven't. But you've also got Rook F6 check. Rook F6 check. You could nice. be sneaky. Rook F6. Oh, that's nice. That's a really nice way to do it. No, but it might, it might not do anything because after King to G5. The King just moves or something, yeah? Okay, let's have a, <laughs> let's have a look. This is this is actually a really bizarre ending. So actually, he did go Rook G6, Rook F6 yeah. check, King E5, Rook F8, King E6, threatening checkmate again. Yeah. Rook F6, King E5. And, yeah. and, and oh, he's not going to survive this. He can't. He, no, surely no, no, no. You can't he has to go this. rook. H, I think he has to go rook. Now he can go rook h six. Now he goes rook h six, and it's game over. Well, it should be. He's he's got. A, how much time does he have? He's got four minutes. He's got four minutes. I mean, I don't know why Glenn's maybe should have moved quite so quickly to get into this because he he should use his time just to make sure he's got the win. You don't want to you don't want to throw away the win here. So rook h yeah. six is game over, is it? Let's have a look. Rook yeah, rook h six, rook a eight. Check. King goes to f7. Yeah. And now I think it's game over because if I. Yeah, it's game over. He hasn't gone for this. He's played something else. He's no. Gone, he what has, did he play? Well, rook h6 looked winning. He went. He's gone rook f8. Rook f8. 
With and, F1. And now even if you take the rook, it's it's kind of like it's a win, but it's not so simple. He's taken the rook. We got <laughs> queen versus rook. Oh dear. This is this is actually I had this against Gwen, but I had the rook and Gwen very convincingly uh very convincingly uh beat me. And I had this with the queen against Jonathan Rowson, and I managed to beat him. I find having the queen is so much easier to play, Ivanka. This is actually if if it's if you're playing a computer in this position, to win this is really hard in actual yes. fact. But when you're playing another human, it's because the way you try to draw, you're actually supposed to keep your rook quite a long way away from your king. But then you can always get hit by a check, which forks your two pieces. So you've got to play it like a computer. Uh, really hard to play in practice. And I know you've got to hold on to your... Um, you try to hold on to the third rank. If you get pushed down to the second rank, then uh, then it's a very easy win. But I uh, try to kind of not get pushed all the way. And so now now we're going to have like, the old 50 move rule. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so hang on. Well, when did this happen? So this happened on move 76. Okay, 76, so uh, 100 and, 130, 136, is that right? Yeah. 100, okay, so if we get to move 136, <laughs> oh, okay, let's let's just chill out, get a seat here. Um, yeah, okay, do you think he's going to win this one? I'm, I'm gonna, I've got faith in Glenn to win this. I mean, he's, he's kind of botched it up a little bit uh, so far, but what, what do you reckon? I'm going to go for a, a, a white win here. Yeah, I, I think so. Of I, I think I think it's uh, I think it will be yeah. quite quite nicely done. Yeah, of course. But, uh, it's what, what, I, what I find it very funny because I actually had the same situation. I just had like a complete meltdown at one point, and I ended up getting in this queen against the rook, and it was so easily won for me that I was like, I spent the whole time just going, "Oh my god, I can't believe I'm have to try and win with a queen and a rook." So. But I did it. I did it. But I found it very easy, a lot easier to do it when, when the pieces were set up in the way that they should be. You know, when they when when it's on the side, it's a very it's kind of visually it's quite difficult to adjust to. It, if you it see is, what I mean, like yeah. and, that, and, that, and this is not maybe not going to be so easy for Glenn because you know the <laughs> the king, the king and the queen are kind of like the 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 whites and black pieces are kind of on the wrong side. I, I do agree. I mean, it's like uh, I, I always find that this ending is quite notorious, and so is rook and bishop versus rook. Mm. And, and but when I find in practice is that the defense is harder than the attacking, if you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. in order to defend this, you have to be more accurate than the guy who's attacking. Because with white, it's kind of quite easy. You can just move your king and queen as near far yeah. down the board as you can. But black has to now, for example, in this situation where do you move the rook if you go too far away like let's say you go here then well, you lose your yeah. rook so you, you've got this problem always where do i put the rook and white doesn't have to worry about that and you get that bishop and rook white can keep playing quite easily natural moves pushing you back and the, the defense is harder than attacking so here he's played rook here and this is the kind of move which you probably have to play but you're also very worried when you disconnect your 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 king and rook because there could be a check that, that wins the rook, right? So it's, yeah. it's quite scary. For example, now if the king went to the h file, queen h7 check would win. So it, it, it's a little bit, it's, a, it's very hard to defend this. So I, I mean, I think Glenn should win, and it is a win. With, with correct play, white is winning this anyway. And you can see now, I think he can win the rook. He can just come yeah, check. Yeah, I think, can, uh, oh, I, I got I rook, think rook the, king, seven, uh, the king and the rook this are winning. a bit far apart. This is winning, queen h7 yeah, check. Pretty... Yeah. 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 Just win. Yeah. So that that's the problem. Yeah, he, 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 it's very hard to find the right square for the rook. So he probably yeah. needed to put his rook on rook g seven then, with hindsight. So so let's have a look. So in okay, uh, are the moves? It's quite hard with this setup to find the moves. Let me just do this. Uh, okay. So in this position, this rook g eight, very nicely won by uh, Glenn. In the end, he finds the right way of doing it. Let's just show that again. He uses checks. The king can never go to the h file because of queen h7. The king has to come back. And again, where does the king go? It's a very bad situation. Yeah, he can't go to g. Yeah, so so rook to g8 was the fight. It was a, a big yeah. mistake. If he maybe put his king. Yeah. Yeah. I just show you. The king can't go to either of these two squares because. Because of queen a2 or queen h7, yeah. This one. So, yeah, so you're right. So maybe instead of rook g8, what would you do here to try? It's not easy though, is it? Very hard to defend this one. Where do you put the rook? This is the issue you have. 
maybe you have to move your king maybe you just go king here something like this but that looks a bit funny right uh, to do yeah. this one okay well there we go um <laughs> very ex very exciting and uh that that was round eight and there's only three rounds to go now great win um for glenn Fleer to bounce off bottom place um as always we'll just take a very short break now just so i can get the um set up and the pairings for the next round ready so we'll be back in like three minutes i think the next game starts in five minutes time and it's going to be a really interesting end to hastings now three rounds to go who's your who's your money on Yovanka, to take down this historical tournament well it has to be david you know um david is one point ahead of everyone and he's been very much in control i, I was so impressed with his game against mickey so david yes yeah it has to be david yeah definitely i i i'm gonna go david as well david's hasn't seemed to be in any danger of losing any games as well which is quite important so even if you just keep drawing you you keep that yeah. first place so and david is very hard to beat right we'll take a break we'll be back in a couple of minutes and uh we'll see you then so see you see you shortly see you
You can't hear me because I'm muted. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> it had to happen. It was going so well today, Ivanka, wasn't it? And ah, uh, um, <laughs> uh, nice work, Simon. Okay, well, I, I was, I yeah. Um, I thought you were very impressive. <laughs> I, I I was giving I was giving a great little speech there. Um, and I thought it was a really good speech about, oh, you know, exciting Hastings. There's only three rounds left. What a historical tournament. The longest running tournament in the world. And name someone, name someone who is, who, who is so famous and they probably won Hastings. Alekin won it. Capablanca won it. I know, and, and and no one heard anything I was saying. So uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the the point I was really trying to make is that, of course, it's online uh, this year, uh, as most things are. But we still have the creme de la creme of British chess in this event, uh, the strongest players in in Britain playing, and um, it's it's got so much history. And to get your name on the trophy. Um, is is pretty cool because, as Yvanka was saying, people who have won this in the past, Mikhail Tao, Ali Ekin. I mean, just to get on the trophy with those names would be pretty cool, Yvanka, right? It's like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm Tao's brother. We're both on the trophy. You know, it's pretty pretty cool. So, so there's a lot to play for, a lot to play for. Um, and um, right, I think I, I think you can hear me. I think the results are up there, which is good, and. I hope we got the right starting time. Um, I should probably have checked that one. What, what time? It probably starts in it, half it an starts, hour. It starts in one minute. It starts in one minute. Five past three, yeah. does it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, let me just... Okay, and if you're interested in knowing uh, this is the scores before, that's a little bit irrelevant now. And we just check some other details here. Okay, I've only got the Saturday times there. But the time control, 15 plus 10. Prize money, decent little bit of prize money there that people are fighting for, but also the prestige of winning the tournament. So, okay, good. So it starts in a minute. And Yvanka, are we gonna to try to get on at the end? We'll, we'll, try, to, we'll try to get on maybe one of the, the winner, possibly, if we can, for a little interview, um, if we can try to work that that one out. Um, that would be awesome. We'd, we'd have to invite them onto our little Skype call, I think. Yeah, definitely. All right, I'll try to use Zoom. Another technical issue for me <laughs> will be interesting. <laughs> Uh, oh, have I just moved your camera there? Maybe. No, it looks okay. Good. All right. Um, good. So it's going to be uh, exciting. So what, what pairings? Well, there's some big pairings in this one. And, well, the leader, let's just have a look who David Howell has got. David Howell and David Howell yeah. is clear by a point now, Yvanka. A whole yeah. point. Yeah. I know, and he's facing Luke McShane, and uh, definitely a big one there. And also, if we look down, Gawain Jones is playing Mickey Adams. I know, big pairings. This is this is the round, isn't it? Really, this this round nine now. I think we're in um, of yeah. eleven, uh, and this is this is really this could be the one that makes the tournament. As Aldo has pointed out, um, David Howe bogeyman historically has been Luke McShane and the, they've played in some playoffs at the British Championships and and also in the knockout championships where Luke has played the Kings Indian defense and beaten David on a couple occasions with black so if anyone you know if if David struggles against anyone I guess it, it might be Luke McShane Yovanka so would that yeah, be fair it, to could, say? it could be I also know that they um, Luke beat him in the British knockout so yeah, I would say that. Uh, I would definitely say that David 
struggles a little bit against Luke. I think it's because they both have very similar, very subtle styles. So it's a difficult, um, you know, because often it's, their, their styles are so sophisticated that they often take the opponents by surprise. And uh, here they're kind of like both playing in a very similar way, contorting, maneuvering the pieces. And so it's not necessarily that easy to get the upper hand. I, I agree. And uh, I, I mean, David's got a tough, tough sort of run the last couple of rounds um, just just on rating. David's got to play Luke now and he's also got to play Gwen. So it's certainly not a done deal. He's a point clear, but with three rounds to go, he's got two of the hardest guys to play. And uh, Luke taking David out of theory quite quickly with, in the Raw Lopez, G6. Um, David deciding to try and take advantage of that by striking in the center and playing very aggressively with Bishop G5. This is the kind of opening, Ivanka, which you better know as black, mm -hmm. because if you don't know this position with the black pieces, you haven't studied your theory, you could get absolutely crushed here, right? I, I feel because white's pieces he's got three pieces developed it looks a bit scary for black just you know you've got to know your stuff which happens in a lot of openings yeah you, you definitely have to know your stuff i remember i was experimenting with this online and uh someone just crushed me in about 15 moves so it doesn't happen but yeah you absolutely do know your stuff and this is the critical critical line f6 yeah which looks a little bit ugly but it does gain a tempo and uh, I'm sure Luke knows what he's doing. Luke doesn't mind taking on original positions. Um, I guess Luke's thinking if we just look at the standings, he's a point behind David. So if he wins this, he goes to first. He's only interested in first. I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, him and Gawain there. Also, Mickey Adams still has a chance at this. Though those, the top four English players are really fighting out for the title. But I think Luke's, Luke's idea, I'm going to play a little bit risky with black. I need to keep the pieces on the board. If I lose, I lose. But if I win, I can win the whole event. Uh, so it's kind of brave, brave opening play um, uh, from him at the moment. Uh, the other the other big game, I'd say, is obviously Gwen versus Mickey. We will blast through the opening moves. And this is an opening the Italian starts off with. And now this aggressive D4 move. And this, this variation is actually something that Gawain has been playing recently online and even up to Queen C2. Yeah, I mean, he's, this is his pet line, isn't it? I've seen it him is. play it so many times. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and his idea is at some point he allows Black to take here, which doubles his pawns, but he, he gets this G file to often attack along. Now, they're still banging out their moves. Let's just have a look with this one playing. And is this just going to be, a, is this just a drawing line? Queen to F5. Has Mickey, has Mickey done more homework <laughs> than Gawain? Look at, um, Maybe Mickey's done Mickey's his homework, clock right? time, 17 yes. minutes. I think Mickey's done his homework here. Yeah. Um, you know you're playing Gawain. You're preparing for a tournament. You stick on this line on the strongest computer you have. You go and have a cup of tea, you come back, it shows you a way to get a draw, job done. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's so easy nowadays. I mean, when we were growing up, Yvanka, I mean, we're, we're, we're about the same age. It's like, you you, did, you couldn't do this. You, you If you wanted to look at this line, you'd have to spend like a week at least trying to work it out because computers just weren't that good. But now you can just literally have your cup of tea, put it on the computer, draw against the top player. Thank you. And I, I, maybe this is just a perpetual check, draw. Is 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 that right? Yeah, I, I, um, I mean, can he can he run? Can he run? Like Rook, Rook C, Rook C one. So you're going for the cockroach king or the forest rump, forest rump, or, or the Teletubby, the, the Teletubby, teletubby runner. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, he, some danger here as well, isn't there? I mean, which pawn do I take first of all? Because uh, I have a choice. I mean, this is something that Mickey will certainly have looked at. So you have to go here to guard your queen. Mm -hmm. Now I can go check and knight g5 when you have to go bishop e2. Yes. Um, well, it's, it's basically, I, I'll just let everyone know, it has been a draw. This this is probably, let's have a look. So if, if this had occurred, the game will end in a draw, everyone. I can try this move, threatening that one, checkmate. The only way to stop this knight coming in here is bishop to this square. And... 
Now, maybe White's okay here. Maybe White is is just about defending this one. I and mean, again, this is one of those ones. I'm. I don't think there's any point in me even analysing it because these guys have put it on their computers, right? And um, they, you know, it will take a long time to work out uh, the correct move but for Black Hawk. Yeah, this one. it is <laughs> quite funny because the computer just says it's yep. to draw as well and it says it's better. Okay. Uh, can you do it the other way around? Maybe you can do it this way around. And, and it, I go Yeah, basically it. you can go Queen H4, I think. No, but if you do your way, your, if you do your go back. Okay, so I go here, here, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so so queen takes h3, king to g1, bishop e2. What, knight g5, bishop e2, yeah. Yeah, it's a knight, yeah. And then basically you can go um, queen h4. Oh, with the knight now coming into to h2. Yeah, and so okay, then, then then king to g2. King to and g2. Queen h3. And queen h3. Draw breed. Back. Right, I see. Take your pick. Okay, nicely done, Yvanka. This well, queen, no, this, that was that was uh, that was the computer that kind of yeah figured I mean, that one out. The thing is, queen h four is not like a move you see straight away because it looks a little bit weird. But you need to have this idea of the knight coming into h three, which should be pretty deadly, and then it's a draw. Someone did also suggest a move. I, I was, you know, this one trying to get the rook around, but that's just far too slow. It takes you like three moves, and you can't even get the rook in. Well, you might be able to, but it's too slow. But yeah, okay. Well, they've had a draw, a, a little bit disappointing, but um, I think that just shows good preparation. And the way the game ended in a draw, it ended just simply with this bang, 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 mm. bang, bang. I believe Blair's saying apparently 16 bishop e3 is winning for white. So let's go back. So in this position here, Mickey must have prepared this. He went bishop takes c3, but Gwain, uh, Gwain, well, Blair, who's Barbary Macaque, is saying bishop e3, stopping the queen coming in, is winning. This we, this is going to turn into some opening uh, study if we look at this. This is what this is the kind of homework you need to do at home. I think it probably is winning, um, uh, but I, I I don't think uh -huh. we should look at it too much now. Really, should we? Uh, hello to everyone in the chat who's just come along as well. Uh, thank you for the kind comments. Pass Pawn also saying this is good for White. Well, I'm sure Mickey had an idea up his sleeve here. He wouldn't have gone into this without an Maybe idea. Maybe he got the move order confused. Maybe. Because he, he was blitzing out like there was no tomorrow. So yeah, maybe. He, he ended up with two minutes more on his clock than yeah. he started off with. So maybe he just kind of... And Gwen believed him, right? Gwen did. Gwen also moved right. Yeah, quickly. because I think he just got the move order incorrect. Because okay, so it should be queen to g five check. Oh, here first, right? Yeah. So you, you um, sorry, after bishop d four, you yeah, don't now take on queen c three. You yeah. play this one first, and then and now you, yeah. And after the king moves, now you take here. Yeah. Right. And, and so then, he probably just yeah knew the idea and just like okay yeah. That's one of those things, Yvanka, isn't it, where uh, it, it, it's like both players are sort of believing each other because after Bishop takes c3, Gwen probably knew this draw and he just played that move immediately. But in actual fact, if he'd have spent a little bit more time and he didn't believe, you know, obviously you have faith in Mickey, but you suddenly, if you... if the, he, I reckon if Gwen was playing like me, he'd probably play Bishop e3. <laughs> but if he's playing Mickey, he'd probably take on c3 because yeah. he probably wouldn't believe me as much as Mickey. And it kind well, the of, thing is, though, the thing is, though, it's like taking on c3 is such a, you know, it's like you, I call it the trigger happy hand. You yeah. know, you're there with your mouse and you're ready to make the move, and you go, Bishop takes Bishop, done. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks natural. Just take take the Bishop off, and they yeah. must have looked at this already, but actually a blunder. Okay, interesting. Okay, so quite a quick draw there. Um, let's now have a look at this one. And, uh, we had a look at the position between David Howe, a point clear, and Luke McShane. This is Luke's chance to jump into first place. And after Bishop h4, he's gone h5. I mean, this is so untraditional play, isn't it? Playing these three moves, this stage of the game. He's threatening to try and win that bishop, but he's not developing his pieces. h3, so the bishop has h2. Queen e7, so of course he doesn't develop any of his pieces, he develops his queen instead. Mm -hmm. And he's going for a little check over here, worth worth watching. Uh, cheapo, cheapo, <laughs> now, cheapo The only Luke. reason why I'm laughing is because this has actually been played before. Right. Um, and 
it was just a bit funny because they're following the game of uh, 2264 and 1876. So Luke's so. playing like an 1876, <laughs> which is... <laughs> which okay, doesn't necessarily mean too much because, of no. course, you know, as we know, everyone has a computer at home. It's very computer-like anyway. Definitely, it is. I mean, it, just looking at the way... I mean, this is the way Luke does things. Luke doesn't follow standard rules. I mean, you're not supposed to move your pawns and move your queen. I mean, uh, and after castles, it, it, I, I really, I'm really thinking, what's your idea, Luke? Actually, because I know you're a pawn up, but I've got e5 coming, ramming the ramming through on the e file. Um, I've got three pieces developed. My king is castled. Your king is going to take ages to castle. I, I mean, I'd love to have this position as white uh, against anyone in the world, right? I mean, is this playable? Can can can? Is this? I don't believe this is playable. No? <laughs> it can't be. It, can't be uh, no. it looks horrible. It looks horrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just really looks a bit unorthodox. But uh... yeah. I mean, what do you even do? I mean, it, something like e five just scares the hell out of me. You know, at some point, maybe I take the knight first if I need to. But then I don't even e5. need to. I just just go. I just want to get my rook here and just uh, win. Um very risky play from luke i mean you can risk things but there's risking there's a fine line between risking things and playing like a genius and playing like a complete and utter plonker um i don't want to call luke a plonker though that wouldn't be fair but what's he going to do i don't even see a move for black i mean if you go d6 to stop this minimum case i can go knight takes d4 is equal on material but i've got everything i want and my right knight... but say, say i go bishop d7 so i just go fine whatever it's uh now i can just pl okay let's just go knight c3 why, why not i mean this is the g5 g4 aldo you can't attack without any pieces developed i mean you, <laughs> you can you can go g5 g4 sure but i mean i'm just i'm just gonna go <laughs> you're not gonna mate me with just your pawns it's just yeah you have to be sometimes you have to be quite objective and go yeah well it's just some pawns um I, mean, I just don't i think it's just a load of rubbish i, I mean i mean I, i'm not saying that i think you know luke's tried something and uh he's suddenly uh i just don't but let's okay, go but back if, to just having said that i mean can you just go g5 and just okay well you probably have to i mean like <laughs> well i mean here i've even got this one coming in i mean yeah, just... oh, yeah okay okay, oh, okay. so so okay no i can't let knight d5 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe it's playable maybe it's playable no but it's I, not I, I, I it's not, not going to be playable it looks yeah. awful um okay yeah. so let, let, let's let's yeah. let's not play d6 um let's have a look what, okay. what is luke's well, idea let, let, let's have a look at aldo's suggestions so i mean aldo is is pointing out it's not his position i mean let's say you go g5 while the knight's <laughs> here i have i mean i can now i don't have i mean i can even no, I, it's one of those positions where your king's there. I can even think about going e5, but I don't think that's I don't think that's what I, I'll play. I mean, this is not completely ridiculous with the rook coming here, but it's a, but I don't need to do that. Let's just move my bishop. You've got to prove okay. your compensation. And now Aldo's saying, yeah, here we go. Onwards, Christian sacrifice. Yeah, I'm not sure about that move because it gives up the h4 square. Yeah, I mean, this knight is now coming. Yeah, in, yeah. And, so, so. Okay, yeah. so seems consistent. Uh, yeah, and, I think you have way, to keep. So someone's but saying the, this is equal. Stockfish says this is equal. Yes, because um, I, I just saw a suggestion, which okay, is not something I would ever even think about. Which is basically instead of going G, what is 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 it saying that G four is equal? Well, that's what someone's saying in the chat. Uh, Shawnee is saying that Stockfish twelve has G five G four as equal which I'm assuming wow. is this position, which I just don't believe. I, I mean, I'm sorry, wow. what, what what is Stockfish on today? I think Stockfish has some fish poison. It's a something. higher level chess, Simon, because from what I'm seeing is that, um, yeah, because I've seen that as well, oh. that you just move the queen and go, I don't care. Oh, well, by the way, Yvanka, mm -hmm. something like this has occurred. I mean, maybe I just okay. don't. Maybe I just don't understand chess, and you can move your queen and pawns and not develop. Well, it's happened, right? So, queen to c five. He's gone queen c five, so his queen has got out of that position. The bishops drop back g five g four. I mean, what an absolute Luke's. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> lunatic chess this is. I mean, you, 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 I, I'm I'm lost to words. I mean, I like playing funky stuff, but it, I mean, you're not developing your pieces. 
I mean, what? No, no, no. I don't no. understand it. I don't it's understand it. New, um, new, new style of chess. So, uh, what's the what's the move? I mean, what? Sh well, how should White handle this? I mean, it's not completely ridiculous, as people are pointing out. Yeah, it's it's an interesting way to play. Black needs to win this game to win the tournament, and he's going for it. He's obviously prepared it. David's just playing normal moves. And um, now... well, having said that, no, he hasn't prepared it because Luke is down to six six and a half minutes. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, people are saying, okay, let, let's not care what Chess Twenty Four computer says because it's rubbish. That it's really weak. The Chess Twenty Four computer. Um, look, I don't really care what the computer says in general about this position. If you look at it from a human's point of view, I'm just thinking. White's pieces are going to fly out into the game. Maybe you could say, is the White King going to be weak after here? Well, you, you can't checkmate me with all your pieces in the back rank. Um, I just don't believe this plan for Black. Uh, I, I really don't. Or, or am I being, am I being a bit too pessimistic? Do you believe Black can play like this, Shivanka? No. 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 I mean, I'm like I'm trying. I'm trying. Like I'm thinking. I love this move by by David C3. Yeah. Um, very nice. It's very kill. Cool. Didn't expect that move. All pawns forward. Go, go, go. Ah, B5, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Luke's, Luke's forgotten how to move his pieces in this game. <laughs> it's queen and pawns. Uh, and I think a very good point by uh, in the chat by Chess Pats UK, just don't show this game to any beginners because, you know, someone's trying to learn chess and you show him two of the biggest, strongest players in England and you, you showed him how, oh, this is Grandmaster Luke Machine. Let's see what we can learn from his game today. Okay, so you don't castle. Don't don't worry too much about the centre. Just play on the wings. Don't develop your knights and bishops. You don't you don't need them. Bring your queen out early. Very important. <laughs> Get your queen out early. Um and move your pawns as far as you can quickly. Um and you know, try to leave your pieces on the back rank. Because you know it's not a good idea to, to develop your pieces. That's that you don't do that in chess. You know it, it would be it would be horrible. But okay, it's a unique way to play, and you've got to. I love the Maverick style. It's just something that from the, the human eye, it's like it doesn't look nice, right? It doesn't. No, look nice. it, it doesn't. So, it doesn't yeah. look great. Um, yeah. mm. Definitely not. I mean, you you got all sorts of things happening and just uh it just looks like black's position is going to fall apart but then having said that b5 is a very interesting move i mean uh it definitely holds the position together yes yeah i mean uh, <laughs> i mean it's not a move that i would ever have thought of bishop b3 okay so now there's a threat knight to g6 i mean you want to go bishop b7 and castle i mean you, you've got a castle in chess surely but this this knight I mean, can you can you do yeah. that here? I mean, I doubt it. Can you? Can no, 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 because knight g six is coming. Okay, and if I play rook h six, and then <coughs> got to try something, you know. Yeah, I, I was banking on. Um... Oh, don't give me black's position. Why am I even defending black's position? I want to be white. <laughs> I don't no, want to be. Bishop poked. takes knight. No, bishop take. Oh no, it's not possible. Um. I don't know. I mean, it might. This might just be the new way. This. I mean, Luke. What a what a. Well. I mean, okay. Well, Luke's played a very, a very logical first move after Bishop B3. You might as well open up the White King as much as you can, right? So he's taken mm -hmm. on G2, and now Rook E1 being played. This is a typical idea: use your opponent's pawn as a defense to your king. You don't want to expose your king. This is like you've got two pawns in front of your king, and now you are certainly ready. Just get that pawn out of the way, checkmate. Luke, oh, he moves the knight. Well done, Lukey. Very good. And <clears throat> I, I'm not even counting pawns here. I mean, this maybe this is just what Luke wanted, a complete mess where, you know, he has a lot of pawns up. So if he does defend, he's going to win. Uh, he's an amazing defender, Luke. He's so tricky. I mean, I, I, I've found it so hard to put him away in good positions before, but um, I still take white here. I mean, I think still take white. Yeah, I'll take white any time. It just looks brilliant for white. But having said that, how are you going to continue? Are you going to take the pawn? And uh, let's, have, let's uh, go concrete. I mean, the first thing, I, I'm trying to think of some... Con I mean, yeah, taking the pawn or trying to open up the e-file will be the first thing that springs to my mind here. Um, because white, I was just thinking hmm. about white's pawn, uh, black, sorry, black's pawn structure is not horrible, isn't it? It is, but he's so got a lot of extra pawn pawns, pawn, right? Pawn, like, huh? Okay, so he's got a lot of extra pawns, hasn't he? So yeah. pawn, pawn takes pawn. Now, do I 
try taking with the queen because I, obviously I want to get the queens off. Yeah, because yeah, so now shot. now can go queen to f three. It's a blooming complex position, isn't it? I mean, really complex. Queen f three, and you'd want to play knight here and like rook d one. You've got every yeah. piece in the game. And uh, my pieces will be start singing. We're all in this together. <laughs> Certainly doom, are. Doom, doom. <laughs> you, got, you got knight f5 coming. You got knight b5 coming. Don't get. Why? Yeah. I keep having black in his. Can, can I? Can you defend for a change here? I don't want to. I don't want to have okay. black. Uh, I, okay. I wanna, so what I would I play pieces. as black here? Yeah. Oh, not. Good. I don't know what I would do. Um, okay. So let's go back. Let's go back to pawn takes pawn. I mean, that looks like a good, sensible suggestion. Opening up position. You, you know, when you're trying to attack, what do you want to do? You want to keep the initiative, develop, create threats, open up as many lines as you can. Because the more open lines you get, your better developed pieces will work better on those open lines. I mean, okay, we'll have a look. So queen here, and now someone is suggesting knight e5, which looks like a, a pretty decent suggestion from Suckling. Yeah. Then I was going to, then then my, the plan was to take the take yeah. on f6. Let's not lose any. No, 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 right? not that one. Oh. Oh, take the f of course, of course. Take yeah. f6. Of course. That's... You give me a pawn, I want that pawn. And I'm threatening the knight, I'm threatening the rook. Um, yeah, simple move, right? Simple mm -hmm. move. You can't move. By the way, this check, winning the queen, doesn't quite work. The queen comes back. Just uh, yeah. some visual thing that's quite easy to fall for, actually. Uh, well, I think black's just losing here, right? I mean, this is quite a nice way to finish the game. Knight here, and now... Well, I can win the queen we take. like this. Yes. I could take we, it. Yeah, okay. I, I, I just thought I'd just thought I'd do that little little okay. weirdo, weirdo I, I, tactic. I wanted to take the knight, but <laughs> taking the knight's probably even stronger, right? I mean, uh, yeah. This, this... And and, th and uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Fun, so, fun times. But David so has gone into knight the tank. Knight e5 is not going to work. It's not going to. It's not going to work. So this this looks quite well. Some okay. Well, there is yeah. There is bishop g7 in that last line. That's a good point. So if we take here. Queen takes looks uh, yes. possible. Knight takes is also an idea, but queen takes at least makes white lose the tempo. You can go knight d2. It's not a stupid move, but queen f3, most aggressive. Knight e5, attacking the queen. Bishop g7, very crafty. Now okay. Bishop, um... bishop g7, but does this work? I mean, uh, it's... I've got no, this well, one well, for a start, yeah. right? Winning a piece. I mean, that's yes. the, mi that's yeah, the yeah, minimum. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's very nice. Takes check king here and i think i mean this is not how many pawns have you got here I, i've got c5 <laughs> here for example i mean and then some play maybe i don't know this is actually probably winning for white white's a piece up but black has yeah two but pawns. then you have knight f5 knight f5 and stuff so but should be winning. yeah should be winning that maybe point. it's just too risky to take with the queen yeah. on d4 okay so if we take here and then maybe knight takes. Let's have a look at this one. Yeah. And do we still start singing again with I some? Th I think I'd be singing here, definitely. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why the frog song by Paul McCartney came to my head. <laughs> uh, when, it, when I was when I was a, when I was a kid, Jovanka, I, I I used to love Rupert the Bear, and uh, I remember like you know one of my treats was going down the local video shop. Youngsters won't know what Blockbuster is, but you know go down the Blockbusters and you know once every month or something get a video and i remember mm -hmm. picking the rupert the bear frog song one and i put it in and it was just this song and i was the most disappointed i've ever been i thought i'd actually brought a rupert the bear like story you know and it was actually all they just started singing all these frogs and I'm like what is this and i was like why why did i pick this video bad choice of videos so that song is always gonna haunt my haunt my memories of the frog song by paul yeah McCartney. i don't like it Down after that after i've got that video as my treat and it was just that song i didn't it was <laughs> it's, it's, yeah the conda young young boy um well I, yeah i mean okay let's say i develop and uh, this this looks quite sensible doesn't it actually because yeah. you want to get rid of some pieces. and oh e5 is also uh, okay yeah e5 let's let's go for it let's, e5 let's try to blast blast some things open but there is now some well, there, you have to do something in the center because. Um... Yeah, I mean, this is the problem when you don't castle, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So, one, what happens if you try to keep it closed with f five? Oof, oof. Yes. He, he has well, taken on d four. He has he's... taken on d four. Oh, okay. Okay, f five. Of course, f five looks looks very sensible. Mm hmm. And um, 
Yeah, okay. Keep it closed. Keep it closed. I, yeah, Keep I'm still, the tension. Uh, okay, you have kept it closed. Well, well, well done. Well done. <laughs> Congratulations on closing that one up. Okay, yeah, maybe, maybe not there. I mean, Luke is deciding what to take on D4 with uh, at the moment. Um, I mean, the other way I can play Ivanka is developing. There's not. Yeah, you know, just develop. Get there's, a rook to C1. One. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, to, yeah, this let's this sounds a little bit concerning, right? Knight to c3 yeah. and then rook c1 and then yeah. the frogs are going to start singing again. Not those frogs. Knight goes <laughs> b5. This is a really exciting game. I mean, we're not looking at the other games because, well, why would we <laughs> with this one going on? <laughs> this is this is potentially going to decide the winner of, of the Hastings tournament. And uh, there's only two more games after this one. Mm -hmm. David is in the lead by a point. If he wins a white here, he's going to be a, a point and a half clear of the field. This could be his win. Uh, if Luke wins, open tournament. So this is extremely interesting, this one. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, just checking out the clock times, both players are roughly around the four minute mark. So yeah. Mm. Well, he's gone queen takes. So he's decided that, that I think it, that simple <clears throat> idea, often the simple moves are just best. And developing your last piece, getting the rook here and the knight to d5, the pawns, the extra pawns Luke has don't seem that relevant here. I think Luke realized this and he's gone queen d4. Now, this next move is a move I would never, ever consider in a billion years. He's David has very quickly gone knight c3. And it's probably a very good move because you don't even, he's thinking, I don't even need the queens in this position because my initiative is so great but this is breaking a lot of rules and i think a lot of people's gut reaction including mine is i'm attacking i keep the queens on the board your queen is exposed so this is a really interesting idea but yeah we can also see ivanka that knight coming in to d5 or b5 without the queens could be horrendous for luke right so yeah yeah i, w I wouldn't have uh, i wouldn't have played knight c3 but um yeah, I would definitely would have gone for the kill with queen f3. Yeah. But uh, maybe that line that we just looked at, you know, with the the queen sacrificing itself on e7. So queen here. Maybe maybe Knight, there's yeah. too many pawns because bishop g7 seemed to be interesting idea. I interesting mean, uh, idea, and then queen takes knight. Yeah, I mean bishop f7. You just go king d8, and I couldn't see a reply to that one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I play this check, you might even better go king f8. Fun enough. Mm. That's not stupid because the queen yeah. is on pre. So I don't. I think that check just doesn't help. So it seemed here that the critical line. Let's just see why you can't take that one. Well, now Ooh, your queen's yeah. not defending f3. So knight to knight here check. I mean, even this position, I'm sort of okay. Black's got black is winning the queen, so you can't do that one. So after bishop g7, this seemed critical. King takes, and now white checks, and white. I don't know if that's the right square. Maybe this one's better. White is a piece up, but this could be a little bit unclear. Maybe even like h5 here or something is, is playable. I mean, it's a little bit unclear, Yvanka, this position, h5, for example, here. Yeah, that's um, what I was wondering, yeah. And then uh, there's, black has a lot of pawns. Yeah, I mean, these pawns are very dangerous, actually, coming down the board. Um, <coughs> I mean, knight d3 suggested in the chat's another move, but... I was thinking here, rook d1, and then bishop takes d4. <coughs> You've also got knight takes, yeah, bishop takes d4, yeah. Bishop takes d4, <clears throat> rook takes here, bishop takes b2. So you can see how complicated these positions yeah. are. I mean, I don't even know white might have a resource in this one. Um, but okay, just to avoid all that, uh, Luke didn't like something there. He's gone queen takes and now just simply knight c3. Luke, very short of time. What happens if he takes the queen's off? So he takes on d1 we mm -hmm. take with this one and even though the queens are off the board every white piece is perfectly placed now to come into the position and how many pawns is black up black is three pawns up though right yeah <coughs> i mean luke luke um has played a move i'd never think of again so after knight c3 he's gone bishop a6 and uh he's defending that pawn and is he desperately trying to get castled? I mean, it doesn't look like his king's much safer there, Yvanka. No, it doesn't position. look like his king is too safe there. Yeah. Um, 
I, I, I think bishop a6 is probably a good move. I mean, I, I like it because it prevents the most obvious move on the board, which is knight takes pawn. Yep. It's not the kind of move you want. <laughs> and and again, David has to answer the question, is he going to go bishop takes pawn or is he going to simply just carry on now with... I mean, how is the situation now if you try to go queen f3? Because you kind of want the rook mm -hmm. on d1. Yeah, queen f3 makes a lot of sense. <laughs> is it still is it still the same problems with um, knight to e5? <laughs> okay, so let's have a look. So I would have thought this extra developing move for white will, will certainly is more. This is a more useful move than for white mm. than black's bishop a6. And maybe after queen f3, if we do the same line again, well, he hasn't gone for this by the way. I think he's played the other very natural move. I don't think this line will now work for black. I just think okay. we, can, we can do the same sort of thing. And in this situation, if you do, I mean, I, I mean, this extra move must be useful. Okay, but let's let's keep up with the game. It's so fascinating. Again, short of time. Yeah. Lucas just played knight into the middle, natural, good move. And sorry, David's played that. Yeah. And, and uh, Lucas played castles queenside, which I think is the only move to forced. kind of. And David's now just taken on c seven. Two pawns now, two pawns. Um. I think Luke's just. I think Luke's just in a lot of trouble, right? I mean, yeah. okay, he's taken on d1. At least the queens are off. At least the queens are off. Can it? Can Luke hold on and defend this position? Uh, which rook do you take with? There's an argument for taking with this rook. So you have got the c file for the other one. Yeah, I think I would take with the e rook. It's not doing anything. It's... Yeah. <clears throat> and then something like well you can't really go bishop here i feel because knight takes b5 and this knight... and everything is hanging yeah there's like yeah. you don't even have to you don't even have to, to kind of rush with knight d6 checks well you've got rook c1 and, and the idea of knight to a7 checkmate is quite nasty so king to b7 is the only thing that i can think of he has gone king b7 <clears throat> and now very simply david's grabbed that pawn so now the pawn deficit is only one pawn so mm -hmm. Luke is only one pawn up, but with a ragged position. Not as ragged as it was, but it's still ugly, I think, this position for Black. Um, yeah, I mean, he doesn't even have any good... I mean, before he, he at least had an, no, no development with a good pawn structure. Now yeah. there's nothing. Yeah. Well, this is about the only developing move Luke's got. I mean, can he, can he still hold this one somehow? Uh, okay, but he's not under an immediate threat now. It looked like his king might actually just die in the middle of the board. David now grabbing that bishop, probably with something to d6 coming up next. He has put his rook yeah, on d6. Yeah, he's played rook d6. And if he wins a pawn back, he's not. Well, he's going to win a pawn at some point here. This is a big yeah. advantage to White. Surely. And he's got and he's got his beloved bishop pair. Yes, striking across the board there. Yeah. So rook d6, yeah, this is. And the time situation is also bad. Luke is two and a half minutes lower than David. Can he hold on? Bishop g5 played, trying to, well, hold on to that f6 pawn for the time. But can being. you just can you just kick it? Okay, so David improves, rook D1. improves his rook, getting ready to break for on d7. Still a big advantage. Other results, by the way, just to let you know, we've seen Gawain Drew, Mickey Adams, and uh, Danny Gormali, who's had a very good last couple of rounds, drawn with Nick Pert, and uh, everyone else is fighting on. And back to the game here, Lucas lost that free pawn advantage, Ivanka. They've all <laughs> been mopped up there, one by one. Uh, Knight b6, but Luke's kind of got a little bit of little bit of play now. I mean, he's got a little bit more stabilization in the position, but it's a lot worse for him still. Yeah, it's just uh David's position is just beautiful. F4. And there he finally does f4 and now now the f6 pawn is just dropping. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, the I guess the thing here, Yvonne Chris, as you say, f6 drops and the e and and f pawn yeah, just come, come flying through and uh, yeah. That could be a game winner. So Luke's now trying this one, and this allows rook takes b6 and pawn takes bishop. But then you give black, let's say we do this one and take here, but then you give black these two passed pawns. And in the ending, 
the rook's actually quite good against the two minor pieces. So. Yeah, but you have the passed pawn on e4, which is probably going to do a lot of damage. Might still be good for white, but that, that gets. Yeah. I, I, is it is it worth risking that one? I I, I I wouldn't. If there's an easier move, I wouldn't play. He's gone rook. No, c6. he's gone. Yeah, he's gone rook c6. Don't complicate <clears throat> things. I guess is his, his way of thinking. If he needs to, knight d8, and now if he just goes rook c7, I, that knight can't get in the game because the light square bishop controls it, right? Yeah. So, sorry, knight d8, rook c7 looks natural. He's gone rook c5. Rook c5 played. Okay. Keeping an idea on that one. Mm. Yeah, David's going to win this one. He's just going to win yeah. this one. As simple as that, I think now. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. Yeah. I, his pawns are just going to start dropping off. Those two bishops is just a, it's a, it's a dream. The h5 pawn is weak. The b5 pawn is horrible. Um, what can he do? Rook, a, rook, which, rook h6. But then you yeah. just go rook c. One of these you just two. go rook c five. He's gone rook. Eight. He's gone rook to h six. The rook and bishops work really well together. You think a combination of pieces, rooks mm. and bishops do coordinate because they both are long distance pieces. And Dave is very now just bringing his king into the game. Look at look at Luke's knights. They're not really. They can't get in, and, and that move allows this one. Uh, with rook c6 coming next um, it's it, this is all over mm. this is just all over yeah. uh, I don't think Luke's gamble has worked out at all right no it hasn't worked no I mean it is all because of the opening I think yes the computer might be able to play it but I think you, it's just way too complicated for a human to play yeah yeah it's it's, it's a problem with he's playing these these lines sometimes even if the computer people were saying Luke's opening it it was given as the computer but as equal but you've got to think how easy is it to play I mean like from a human perspective David all David had to do was develop his pieces mm. not night out night in the middle Luke well he had to find some I'd imagine really difficult computer moves and in a practical sense it, you, you can't play chess like that um, you're getting some nice comments about your commentary in Norway, Ivanka. So, oh, yeah. um, ah. so. Thank you. Thank you for uh, that. Was very nice. Uh, it was a lovely experience. Uh, it's it's certainly different actually to comment for beginners because obviously you can't you can't use chess terms all the time because someone who's new to the game won't be knowing anything, won't be knowing what en passant is, won't be knowing Swish and Serg, and certainly won't know like the coordinates. So it's a kind of a quite an unusual experience but at the same time it's a lot of fun yeah i mean uh, you did a fantastic job of opening it up to beginners and uh that that's i imagine the main idea of, of the whole mm. uh, the whole show yeah. was to try to get a big audience and it seemed like you got loads of viewers online and yeah you all did it yeah it was just it was really good to watch i mean whenever i got a chance i was watching it as well and the three of you worked so well in the studio um I, I, so you're not allowed. You weren't allowed to use coordinates or squares. No, it's I not guess, that we're not well. allowed to use coordinates. It's, uh, it's just when you have to bear in mind if we start spouting out lots of uh, long variations, yeah, like you and I can follow that no problem. But someone new to the game isn't going to be following that so easily and can get easily lost in those variations. So much better just to kind of simplify that. Yeah, <clears throat> keep it as simple terminology mm -hmm. as possible. And uh, those pawns looking very good. Um, this means there's two rounds to go in this Hastings tournament, the longest running chess tournament of all time. Um, and this is very nice play <laughs> from David. He's get he likes his queens. He beat Mickey by queening, getting the extra queen. And now Luke has resigned. He's going to be with two rounds to go. David Howe, your co-presenter in Norway, could be becoming Hastings champion. Because he's got a point, I think a point and a half lead point, after this. A point one. and a half lead on Gawain, who's on. So, he's you got, know, basically, he next, maybe he will be playing. Let's have a look. He will be playing um, in round ten. He's he's played all the big guys. He's now playing Danny Gormali. Danny Gormali's like big pieces. guy, is he? <laughs> and then, yeah. and then Nick Pert. Then Nick Pert, right? 
So David, massive favourite now to win, win the competition. Big, big favourite. But I, I think yeah. barring some kind of miracle, he will be winner of the Hastings Championship. Has he won Hastings before? I'm not sure he has. Well, David, I, I would have yeah. thought David's won Hastings before, but I, I don't know for sure. Not sure, no. Um, he must have won Hastings before. Maybe we can get some get some update on that. Uh, now we're just waiting for the other games in this round to uh well to come to their conclusion round nine do you know what time the next round is Yvanka? I, I don't have them handy at the moment i can probably no, find I, them. I... let's see uh if we can find out when the next round is on um and just while we wait for this to finish interesting ending here with the uh legendary english endgame player keith arkal playing a pawn down against the meat Garzi, trying to trying to hold this i think very tricky ending the white yeah. king cut off past pawn but it is keith arkal so maybe he's going to show us how to draw these these lines yeah, um, i i just thought this this end game was lost probably lost yeah okay let me see if i can find out the time in the next round as well two rounds to go after this one um, well some of the games started late so this one started at um Three of five past three, so I imagine it will be a few minutes after the last game's finished. Okay, the next round's actually in forty minutes from now, so we probably will uh, take a break at some point. But we'll just see out the conclusion of these ones. So it's at half past the the, the round, penultimate round. Um, quick update on the games. Danny Gomali, we saw Drew. Um, Danny having a good time. Beat Mickey with Black. David Howe, nice win there against Luke's kind of crazy opening, but Luke took some risks in order to win. Very brave play. Unfortunately, fortune doesn't always favour the brave, as we saw, and David won nicely. I think the star move really was after Queen takes d4, you're three pawns down, and I think a lot of people in this position would be like, okay, I've got to keep the queens on because I'm attacking. It's just like that thing that's in your mind but David's like no I, I I don't need to keep the queens on just develop uh, my knight is coming into the position and it became clear after some relatively straightforward moves I would say that David just gets all of his pawns back with his positional uh, compensation as well um and moving on well Wadsworth drew with Turner Looks pretty even there. Gwen Jones had this draw with Mickey Adams. An interesting point in this game is they kind of got their move order mixed up. They went for a drawing line. In this position, this is just theory, one of those things you even know or don't know. I didn't know it, but learning <laughs> it. Bishop takes c3 was played by Mickey. And this is actually a blunder, really bizarre position. But White, according to the computer, is winning after Bishop e3, stopping the queen coming in to g5. This is Black's important idea. And the problem that Black has here is that he's got two pieces on pre. So what Mickey should have done is go Queen G5 first and then play Bishop takes C3, which I think has some subtle dimpses, uh, and that's probably a drawing line. So another game. Well, oh, this is, is this a draw? I feel this is a yeah, draw Yeah, this is a draw. Yeah. Now you can just go King to G6 and the pawn will just go h7 and there's just no way to stop that pawn without giving up the rook so yeah and he has so that one's ended in a draw leaving one game going on and we know we can always rely on keith had to be the last finisher at some point Yvanka, right had to be yes. the last finisher <laughs> just wouldn't be the same without him without him not doing it hello to jess fox uh in the chat he makes some really cool music go and check it out um so, Yvanka, you also, we were talking about your, your book. Let's just talk about it a bit more. The mating game. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was the original mating game. Is quite a, it's quite raunchy, isn't it? Is that fair to say? Quite a raunchy No, I, I don't think it is. I mean, it, it's... No. no it's been described as raunchy. Yeah, it's been described as raunchy, but, you know, that's for conservative people. <laughs> <laughs> I think for most people, it's not really that raunchy. raunchy. Or maybe I just have a, a lot relaxed more i don't know approach to these things but uh yeah i mean 
I don't think it was. It's just a novel. It's just like a romance novel, the original. And so we do have some plans for for the original version, but the movie, the the movie script that we have, that's for a thriller. Um, it's like a comedy thriller, and yeah. Is and, it still, uh, still going to have the raunchy ish scenes in it, or, or or is it like we're working on it? Working on it. We we won't, we we. Uh... <laughs> I mean, is it is it going to be like what rating will it have? Would it be like a PG? No, it, it, or, it, it, or... it won't have like a, a high. I don't think so. Anyway, okay, like PG or fifteen. So, yeah, probably okay. fifteen or something. 15, um, right. Is it going to be but, like bridesmaids? Is that the kind of thing we we can expect? You know, bridesmaids. No, before? like Kingsman. Kingsman. Okay. Okay. Like I... the Kingsman. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's. Like I said, chess has never been done in this way before, so this is like totally our new, uh, totally new, and we're really excited. It's a really, it's a great script, um, and we hope it's with some, it's with a Hollywood agent, and uh, we're just getting some modifications done to it, and then it will be out there, and we'll see who wants to buy it. Okay, great. And and is the script writer who's is like writing the script to your book? Is he like uh, well known? kind of like has he done lots of stuff before can you say or yeah i mean I, I, I don't i don't know i mean i don't know so much about him i just know he's a cool guy i read the script it's, it's a good it's a great script we're both james james and myself really like it and so does the agent so yeah we'll see and are you are you going to get like uh are you going to be in the film can we expect you to do like an appearance at some point yeah why, why not why can't we not have yeah, you, like you chess players as cameos yeah there's you know can, can i get a cameo <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's in the post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Ivanka. The blooming post again. Oh, uh, what next year? Can I get it next year? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> this year. Next year. <laughs> and, okay. Good stuff. And uh, you know, if you just join in, we'll see a couple of rounds left of this Hastings tournament. Um, just wondering if Keith can hold this tricky ending here, sponsored by um, Kaplan. Um, go and check out Kaplan. They sponsor a lot of things, the, the British Chess Championships, Hastings. Um, and it's great to have these events still going on. Um, I'm just looking at the chat now. Hello to everyone in the chat. Uh, Atal saying, hi, Simon. I sent you two emails. Um, well, I hope you sent them to the right address. I try to read emails. I don't always read them because sometimes they get quite a lot and uh, I'll try to get through them but if I don't reply you can always try getting back to me but I'm not going to promise to reply to everything what's your okay this is what's your weirdest email uh, <laughs> have you only ha have had any weird emails Yvanka I, yeah had... I have a, quite a few I have a few mm. messages where people just uh, send me their phone number I like and the, with okay. the words I like you <laughs> okay okay <Please> cool. <laughs> <laughs> without any details who they are whatsoever no so, just a, no just like uh please call please, i'm like call. no okay <laughs> <laughs> it is a dangerous subject captain bunrack said yeah it's certainly bringing up a dangerous subject there what's what's the strangest email you've got uh i wonder about people in the chat what's the strangest email you've got uh i've had some weird ones i've had so many you get used to them after a while um I'm trying to think. So that that's your one. You just get a phone number, please. Call. I, I've had that quite a few yeah. times now, quite actually. Few, yeah. I, I've had yeah. uh, where yeah. people just leave me their phone numbers and they're like, they they like me and. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. But it'd be nice if they gave you a little bit more information, like who the hell they are, maybe. I mean, uh, it's like. Yeah, but you know. I kind I kind of find it a little bit odd that. Uh, yeah. It is yeah. a bit odd. It is a bit odd at times. The, the, people, people can be quite strange, can't they? um chess pats uk said he's he's got a lot of a lot of money stored up in one of his accounts um i once chess plays chess at work says i once sent my phone number to a chess commentator um i wonder if that's your banker or me i don't know <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, i'll check my emails later <laughs> um of course i will in the post it's in the post um <laughs> Simon has Blair saying, I, I've employed someone to ring the numbers he gets. That's that's Blair's job. Every number I just pass on. Blair, I was Blair tempted. I, I was tempted to, to ring a few of them and just to kind of <laughs> I, I find out a little bit more. But uh, Hello, yeah. Ivanka. Hello. 
you that, wanna... That's exactly. Put it, you know, get, get... <laughs> Hello, you want to be my Hello. friend? <laughs> Hello, what are you wearing? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> let's, let's not even go there. Um, <laughs> uh, plays chess at work, bringing up a bit of a Doors song there. People are strange. Love a bit yeah. of the Doors. Um, and uh yes I, I, yeah I, I, yes i'm saying i better stop sending you my phone my phone number <laughs> no is a no uh yes <laughs> um ha, uh, johnny cricket simon have you stopped posting on youtube no i've just been very busy obviously youtube kind of free and, and i just haven't had time at the moment to post many videos i'll try to I'll, I'll post this up on there i'll try to get back into it when i get a bit of extra time uh, i will continue uh with it um so atal you emailed me that you, you see atal you, you messaged me this the other day that you've been sending a lot of uh a lot of um emails to simon at ginder.gm now if that is an email address i would be amazed do you mean grinder <laughs> maybe you use grinder a bit more maybe that's the one which I'm not very well versed with, but maybe that's the one you use a bit more personally. I, I don't know. Um, I probably won't find it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Ginger GM. You've got the wrong the email there. Ginger, ginger GM. Ginger GM. Ginger GM. Everyone knows me, Ginger GM. That, that's the one. Yeah, you try that one. You might get me there. Um, <laughs> Grinder uh, GM, yeah. That's, <laughs> you, won't, you won't get me there. Um, <laughs> Oh dear! This is going. This is going. This is going the wrong way, isn't it? There's only two <laughs> rounds to go, and it's really wicked. It's really going the wrong way. Um, try yeah. Ginger GM is the one to get me on. Uh, you know, that, you can go to gingergm.com. Everyone knows it's Ginger GM. What is the name yeah. of this Twitch? This is Twitch.tv/slash Ginger GM. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. Um, so good. <laughs> Um, where do we go from here, uh, Ivanka? Where do we go? Do, well, do. We're, we're waiting for... Um, everyone is finished. So, uh, yeah, we should just uh, check out the, the scoreboard. Yeah, let me... Okay, what I'll do before we take a break, because there are two rounds to go, we're just going to... I'll just get the new scores up. So this will just take me a second or two. Uh, let's get back to the sensibility. Hastings Chess Tournament, longest running tournament beautiful tournament beautiful town beautiful people and great history the, the the tournament with the best history in the world you know anyone everyone from the chess history books has played in his in hastings i can remember i mean we were talking about funny hastings um funny haste actually i'm gonna do this another way we're talking about funny hastings stories because obviously we, we've spent many a many a sort of new year down in hastings and uh, one of the ones I thought was quite funny, Vanka. I don't know if you were there for this Hastings, but there's a group of uh, players from France over. There used to be loads of chess players from Germany and from France. And uh, these quite strong uh, French players came over. They're all quite young. And uh, they were like uh, yes. international masters. You know, you know the story? Yeah, I think I was the opponent. Oh, you were the opponent? Oh, really? Okay, because... Yeah. <laughs> I mean again lots of weird things happen on new year's eve and like one of the french guys turned up on new year's day and he literally had like his arm he was fine the day before he turned up with this big bandage both arms on both arms both, both hands both hands were covered in bandages were you his opponent on new year's I day i was his opponent oh, wow. and i would just spend the whole time just thinking how on earth he came up late so apparently he came straight from the hospital <laughs> <laughs> and with these big bandages and he was like he was he wanted to beat me as well you know it was uh um but we got a draw i got a draw in the end no i think yeah i think it was a, a kind of a very hard fought hard fought draw but i i couldn't believe it he just turns up with these two huge bandages on his arms he can hardly move the pieces and yeah it was uh and do you know yeah. what happened the funny thing was okay so, the, so I, this guy you know i spoke to him like later on it's like what on earth what on earth happened to your hands like you didn't have these on your hands the day before and uh he was like well, you know i can't redo a french accent but you know well simon uh we had some party at our house the day before and uh i was a bit drunk and uh we were doing flaming sambucas and uh 
for this is where it's very dangerous you you can get the sambuca you can actually put it in your mouth and you can flame it in your mouth and he decided to do it on his hands so for some reason he, he spilt this on his hands and he set his hands on fire and his hands were literally on fire and he was just going around look at my hands i think <laughs> something like this right and then he yeah. realized he's actually getting very bad burns on his hands um yeah uh, that that was bad and he had to, <laughs> you should have got him in time trouble Ivanka. if you'd have got him short he time, was in time trouble you should have seen was. him move he, he managed to somehow yeah. move it in a very elegant way it was like really? you know uh, you know anya taylor joy the way she moved in the queen's gown but I he was doing that he was sat there with his big bandaged hands and then he would just like Maybe move not... with one piece hit the clock with another one so it was uh... <laughs> it's the dangers of absence basically this is what i i heard from my french captain it was oh absence was it right absence uh, yeah uh, okay that that was a year where at the pub where everyone met at which was the pig in paradise in hastings they they sold they sold absence but it was like 85 percent proof and uh everyone all the chess players were like oh yeah let's go and get some absence and uh i i remember there was a lot of people on doing weird things that year Yvanka. a lot of people on weird absence at the pig in paradise the meeting point uh, of many chess players uh so yeah okay well <laughs> there we go uh, i'd like to hear your hastings stories guys if you've been to hastings before if you've played there um at some point um and yeah not board on fire tim wall saying hands on fire alexei shirov's new new chess book um been very interesting now there is two more rounds to go you can see the next round round 10 will be happening and it'll be happening in about 25 minutes so we would take like five ten minute break probably uh, i think now first proper break we had today um and should we come should we come back and like quarter past Javanka? does that sound good yep. to you so um yeah i hope to see you all we'll be back in five to ten minutes for the last two rounds of this great international the pairings the score david howard point and a half clear it's going to be a great finish and yeah you anchor anything else you'd like to add before we take the no break? that was perfect i mean it's just still everything to play for and uh if not let's watch how impressively david has been playing you know he's been playing such amazing chess and he's beaten sorry i sorry i've just like carried away with that game we've seen some amazing games simon and i'm just like my mind is like racing back to it and i'm just been super super taken aback by what we have seen so far it's been super exciting and i've been i'm certainly looking forward to hearing everyone's hasting stories as well so tell us in the chat yeah that'd be great if people can write in the chat we'll try to come up with some of your best or even new year's stories just tell us some of the craziest new year's stories because hastings is over new year's and mm. uh, that's why there's that added sort of craziness um, and I've probably got some more I can tell you when we come back. But we'll be back in 10 minutes' time. So we'll see you all then. Uh, don't, well, you can go somewhere, but make sure you're back in 10 minutes. Catch yep. you then. Bye. Bye bye.
wait one second. Let me just mute. Well, hello everyone. Um, we're back. So we're back for the last segment of uh, this Hastings competition and there's only two rounds left now which is turning to a great competition really really exciting um, and uh, at the moment David Howe is, is well in the lead he's a point and a half clear so uh, unless something very strange happens he's he's major favorite right I mean in, in the next round for example if he wins He's, he's, he's won the whole thing on his own. That's guaranteed because it would be still clear by a big margin. And as we can see from the pairings, he's got a tough pairing, I'd say. He's got Danny Gormali with the black pieces. And Dan, Danny's playing really well. Danny beat Mickey Adams earlier. Uh, Danny with white is incredibly dangerous when he gets the right kind of positions, when he can attack. And that's the kind of position maybe David's not as comfortable in when David is attacked. So I think the opening is going to actually be quite key there if Danny can get the position he wants to have. Yeah. Um, and yeah, hello, Yvanka. So what what are your feelings at this this moment in the tournament? I I, th I think uh, David has run away with the tournament, and I think nothing can stop him now. Um, I, I I kind of think that Danny is is an opponent that David probably will look forward to play because you kind of welcome people who are aggressive you know because they are going to go immediately for the win and as long as you choose a good setup then basically you should have faith and I think David will be feeling very confident um he's base you know he's taken he's taken out Mickey Adams he's taking out Luke McShane and all that's left is in the path is Danny Gormali, which I think that David will be able to neutralize. But I agree with you, Danny is dangerous and shouldn't be underestimated. And then he will be playing black against, uh, sorry, white against Nick Pert. So these are two players that he will be feeling relatively confident against. And I, I just think he's got it in the bag. I still got a bit of work to do. And I, I mean, but yeah, I totally agree with everything you said there. He's, he's major favorite. He's pretty much got it unless he does something crazy which is still possible um now captain bunratty jerry actually said great prediction by yvanka i, I feel that i predicted i went for uh, david <laughs> howe and yvanka went for mickey adams thank you very much david howe was my prediction before round one i like david howe i say mickey yeah mickey's really good but i'm going david howe so get yourself check yourself out jerry you know um i'm pretty sure that's right you did you did say you, that's that's right that's yeah. correct you did say david did. and i did yeah. say mickey adams yeah. and uh you did call it absolutely right today simon Thank david you, has been a runaway winner i think well, Je jerry just assumes that i'm always wrong seeing me and bum ratty on these uh big occasions and everyone if you uh if you know uh, about well if you want to play a fun tournament obviously not this year it'll be happening next year we're talking about hastings the longest running ever tournament it's online as you can see at the moment um it's normally played in hastings funny that um and i love hastings it's always over new years you know it's a great place just to get away play a bit of chess but another tournament which is fantastic is certainly the Bunratty competition in Ireland. And I can't believe Yvanka told me earlier, she's never been yesterday, never been to Ireland. And the Bunratty is a real social one. It's only a weekend or it's not fee day rated. You, you, you're supposed to have the odd pint of Guinness, shall we say, while you play very relaxed, lovely little part of Ireland. But um, yeah, one one year you'll get over to, to Ireland, Yvanka, right? It's, it's a beautiful yes. country. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've always wanted to go, so definitely it's on my bucket list and i've always wanted to play Bunratty. i've heard so many stories but the drinking does scare me a little bit because i'm not a big drinker you don't have to drink i mean of course and, and i, I heard drink. you get penalized you get looked down upon if you're you know no no, that, no that, that, that's not <laughs> it's true. considered cheating if you're the only sober person there <laughs> <laughs> well i mean that's not entirely true shall we say i mean uh but uh, it, it's you know of course you can you can uh, you can do whatever you know whatever sort of drinking you want or not drinking but it's it's a relaxed one I mean they're very they're just very friendly that's the thing yeah. everyone at the tournament is incredibly friendly and it's nice to have that in a chess tournament and it's a it's a beautiful part of Ireland 
as well. Um, so, oh, we have Gary O'Grady in, in, okay, I'll tell you a funny story involving Gary O'Grady, Ivanka. Hello, Gary, hope you're doing okay. And um, there's a very funny story. Gary O'Grady is one of the main sponsors of the Bum Ratty Tournament, along with Jerry. And um, uh, Gary, through his business, Blackthorn, uh, sponsors it and, and has done for like 20 years. But Gary, I don't think ever made a Saturday morning game. <laughs> so there's a Friday evening game and that normally ends quite late. And then lots of people drink in the bar until very early hours. And Gary, I think in the 20 years, has never made a Saturday morning nine o'clock game. So it was like, right, okay, Gary, Jerry, the organizer, um, thought, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ring Gary, you know, this time, uh, if he doesn't turn up at the board. And um, Gary was one of the top seeds for the major section of Bum Ratty. Jerry goes there on the Saturday morning, looks at the, looks at his board, no Gary. So he's like, oh, right, well, Gary's obviously in bed. I have to give him a ring. So Jerry's like, right, okay. I'm not sure an organizer should be ringing a place to get them to the board, but it's Bum Ratty, of course it's okay. And he, he gets his phone and uh, he's like, okay, oh, God, God, I'll get Gary up. So he gives Gary a ring and he looks around and Gary's sitting at the board and his phone goes off <laughs> and, <laughs> and Gary's just got to his board and his phone goes off and it's the organizer phoning him. Jerry doesn't realize this. Gary answers the phone. It's Jerry. Jerry's like, where are you, Gary? You're supposed to be at the board. And Gary's like, yes, I am at the board. Puts his phone down, has to resign the game and the game's done. <laughs> so, you know, all, no good deed goes unpunished, I think is, is the phrase, right? So uh, I thought that was quite funny. You know, he tries to get him out of bed. It's the one time he's made it to the board. He takes his phone with him. Gary, you plonker. And, and then the organizer rings him <laughs> and defaults him. I just thought it was like, it's, it's just a very funny sort of fun ratty story. I thought. Oh. Quite, quite, you know, but it, it's just all a lot of fun, the, the, the tournament. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, good stuff. So, um, by the way, um, with the, uh, well, I'll just put up the player things we have here. Um, they're, they're a little bit dated. And as you can see on this one, a, a bit of a mistake. Apologies to, to Mickey Adams, who uh, someone is pointing out is described England's number two. Slight mistake. He's England number one. Just, just okay, a typo. Apologies to Mickey. He's, you know, him and Nigel Short, two strongest players ever I guess Yvanka would you say English players of all time yeah and... I mean definitely oh. these two are, are legendary and they've achieved so much you know Mickey I remember him playing in the world championship knockouts where he was playing um who was it again I've forgotten um Kazmajanov, right Kazmajanov, yeah that's it and he was so close to becoming world champion and of yeah. course Nigel Short challenging Kasparov for the title you know they this is just legendary but you know in terms of strength I would actually say that now we are very lucky that we have David Howell, Gawain Jones, Michael and Luke McShane who are all roughly around the same strength and these guys are all 27, around 2,700 strength, winning lots and lots of tournaments and doing amazing things. So, yeah, we are very lucky. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, it's just a little typo. I think that's from a while back. But I have to say thank you to Charlie the Chess Cat, who's done all the artwork and stuff, which takes some time to do. Um, I think David did overtake Mickey at one point when David got over 2700 rating David Howe and I wouldn't be well I say I wouldn't be surprised I'd be very very surprised if David Howe doesn't go over 2700 again I mean when I say mm. very very surprised you know like it, it, he's going to go over 2700 strength again that is yeah. kind of guaranteed I think I, I, I mean they kind of the number one spot varies between the four of them I, I know yeah. that um, Gawain has also been at number one at some point um, David yeah. of course has been and uh, I think someone is asking where Matthew Sadler is well he Matthew did actually answer the question on Twitter he said that he really wanted to play but he had a project at work you know because we talk about Luke McShane being the strongest amateur but I don't think it's actually Luke I don't think Luke is an am is I think he's a chess professional but uh Matthew Sadler is in fact one of the world's strongest amateurs because he uh, he has a job oh definitely I, I, it's actually very uh, some reason I say easy to forget about Matthew because 
Now, the reason I say that is because Matthew doesn't really play much and he hasn't played much like British Championships. He hasn't played any of the big events, but Matthew Sadler is just so strong. And he, 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 he's, um, I think the reason he gave up being a professional, I heard was that he was like, I think, well, you know, one of the top 10 maybe in the world. He was really, really mm. strong player. But then he played a game against Ivanchuk and uh, Ivanchuk beat him. And he analyzed the game of Ivanchuk afterwards. And basically he realized that he's never going to be as strong as Ivanchuk. And he decided, right, I I'm going to get another job. This guy, you know, I'm never going to be world champion. This guy is just a genius. So he decides to do another job. But for example, in the four NCL, which is the British league over the last four years, I think he's just won nearly every game he's yeah. played. And he, I think, he, I don't, I can't remember him ever losing a game, Matthew Sadler over the board. He's just a really, really strong player. And as you say, Ivan could probably a very good um, claim at being the strongest amateur chess player in the world. I, I, I think that's very fair to say, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I was, I just, I'm, I was, I was, it was my impression that Luke was a chess professional, but, and uh, Matthew isn't a chess professional, but I don't know really how Matthew finds the time because he's an avid chess book reader. He's, <laughs> he writes his own book. He has this, of course, the Game Changer YouTube channel, and he, he commentates on a lot of things. And I, I was just in awe on how he finds the time to do absolutely everything. Yeah, he, he's 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 really good, and the game changer game changer book obviously got voted one one of the best mm. books best book of the year, and one of the best books of all time. Certainly, yeah. a fantastic fantastic uh, book, well worth checking out. Uh, so we are quite lucky in England uh, having these players. We discussed earlier; it'd be nicer to have some younger younger players coming through. I mean, Matthew Wadsworth proving himself here, and you mentioned some other names, uh, Yvanka, like Ravi Harrier. There's, there's, there are some younger players, but they're not like junior juniors, you know. I'm, no. I'm thinking like 14 year olds who are like IM's strength, you know, that's the kind of players we need, really, which I don't think we have, but I'm a little bit out of the loop as well, uh, to be fair. Um, well, we, we the games have started now and um, we're off. So the scores are above. Uh, if David Howe manages to win, then he's won the thing. Two draws, he's won the whole thing. Uh, even if he even if he gets half, uh, he, he's yeah. very likely to win. The only person who can catch him is Gawain, and Gawain has to win his remaining matches. Gawain has got black against Matthew Turner, which is not an easy pairing. And Gormali versus David Howe has started with a Grunfeld, uh, Yvanka. One of David's favorite openings, quite an aggressive opening where Black aims to attack the center from the sides. On the other hand, White has the extra central pawn, which Rousen dubbed Delroy the D pawn. And this center can be quite strong. Um, so David kind of picking a little bit of a risky opening because it is kind of risky, the Grunfield, in a, in a sense that you give away the center, the pieces remain on the board, which indicates to media anchor that he's actually just going to try to win this one. He's just going to play chess maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I think so. But you know, the Grunfeld is also his fallback option. It's the one he's been playing since he was a child, so he knows this opening inside out. And I, I just, I, I agree with you. I think he's going to be playing for all three results. He's just not going to halve out. Yeah, uh, I totally agree. I mean, like, it's, it's actually not a bad idea because even if you lose both the games. Gwaine, there's lots of different strategies you could have. You're a point ahead half of the field. The best strategy is actually just play your normal chess, right? And and don't let mm -hmm. anything affect you. Just play as you would do normally. You, you're winning a tournament for a reason. But sometimes you, you, you can think of the best idea. I mean, you could try to go for two draws. But I think, you know, the only way you can get caught if Gwaine, you know, overtaken if Gwaine wins both. So I'd say go for the win in this game. You've got another chance in the next game if it doesn't work uh, to, take, to take the title. And just looking at the sort of prizes it's only a two-day tournament remember sponsored by kaplan go and check out kaplan systems very kindly sponsoring uh this competition and uh, let me just see i i, I think we got this the, oh no details here we go <laughs> first prize 1200 pounds over two days which is a pretty nice amount of money mm -hmm. uh i've got the round times wrong there but penultimate round already 
Queen B5, interesting position, Yuenka. Yeah, interesting. I was just checking the database to see how many people had played Queen B5, and uh, not not many, I have to say. Um, Queen A6 is more the main stream line, but uh, Niels Grandelius did in fact play Queen B5. So. Uh -huh. I know Niels, Niels Grandilius, Sweden number one, um, and David Howell have both been, I think David might have helped Magnus, but they're both good friends, so I'm sure they've worked together. And you mentioned that the other day, Ivanka, maybe early today, that if you can find someone to work with, you think it's a really good skill to have, right? Find yeah. someone you can practice some chess ideas with, right? Yeah, I, I, th I think that's, that's the way to get better. I mean, everyone is doing that. Everyone is uh, working in a group. Um, no one is, well, I'm not going to say no one, but very few people are working alone. I mean, Magnus has a team around him. Um, all the top players are working together with other people. I don't see why we have this fascination that in the UK to to work alone. Uh, it's, it's not how, it's not how, it's not been a very successful method, let's put it that way. Um, it's much easier to go, get momentum with other players. And uh, Gawain has been very, very successful precisely because he's been working with other people. You know, he yeah. works He works with uh, Niels and I'm pretty sure he works with uh, others. And uh, you can just see how it's reflected on their chess. They've just, uh, both, both players have really improved. Yeah, de definitely. I mean, uh, it's finding the right person to work with as well, I guess, right? I mean... Um... Can you give away who you've worked with before, Ivanka? Has there been anyone? Uh, I haven't been... really worked with anyone. I mean, right. uh, uh, that this is this is kind of like one of the problems that women have. That women have to kind of it's much, it's a lot more difficult to find yeah. female players, yeah. and um, so you kind of have to go down the coach route. And yeah, I, let's let's put it this way. So I've worked with it before. We've I've had some unfortunate choices when I was younger. Oh, really? Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's that's interesting. So you you've actually had yeah. coaches, which uh, you think they weren't they weren't coaches. They were they were right. they were people who were always giving me because I find that people like to. Uh, yeah. This seems to be a thing in the UK, mm. where people like to give you advice and kind of tell you how to play in a certain style. They're like, well, you're young, therefore you should play like this, and they like to tell you you'll never be successful until you play like this, right. and. Uh, that's something I've only heard from the UK. And in fact, I was having a conversation with another English grandmaster and he was told exactly the same thing. Yeah. That they, they just said, you're going to be a failure until you do this and this and that. And that's really not something that you should ever tell a, a junior. You should be inspiring them. Yeah. Interesting, right? Yeah, I mean, mm. it's, uh, it's I, I also find this a little bit with, there's so much information out there now o online I mean, it's just burst in the last five, 10 years, which is 99% of the time a great thing, right? Because you, you can mm. get loads of YouTube stuff for free, you know, especially if you're just trying to learn chess. But there's also there's also a danger that, you know, there's a lot of rubbish out there. Right? Um, and there's a lot, there is a lot of bad advice, uh, you know, videos, which I think are just trying to gain viewers, not everyone, of course. I mean, like, I uh, certainly not Agimaster and people like this to do a great thing with chess, but there are bad videos on YouTube. And I sort of think, oh, my words, if someone who's new to chess watches these videos and learns and tries to do this, it's so, it's going to be so bad for their chess. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, you have to just make sure if you're trying to learn, cheap free is not always good. I do mean that. Sometimes if you can afford it, worth paying a bit extra for a paid thing or at least go with someone who you know uh is very good like john bartholomew is one mm. name that rings to mind his great uh, fundamental courses so just be you know and i just sort of see a lot of rubbish out there i think th this advice is terrible <laughs> you know don't, don't follow this advice because you're going to become a bad player it might just yeah. be based on tricks you know you're literally playing five move tricks which is going to make your chess worse you might get a couple of nice wins but your chess is going to go downhill if you follow this and do you, do you yeah. see that at all as well you think yeah i mean but the thing is though I, I think a lot of the time people are focused on results and they're not necessarily focused on what brings people joy because we have to remember that chess yes is a sport but you should all it is a hobby as well and it can be a profession it's only really going to be a profession if you inspire joy like like there's a famous uh, story that 
I think it's about Krasenkov. He played some like 1G4 or, or you know, in the Botvinnik school and he got kicked out immediately. <laughs> 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 they were like, we do not want this. And I think Shabalov was also kicked out. They were like, we do not want this type of creative player. And I think that that's yeah. also wrong. I, I yeah. think you've got to look at what inspires joy in someone. And I don't think necessarily the shortcut is going to be the answer. But if someone has a tricky style and likes to play gambits and, and you can encourage them that, to do that, but you can just say, well, you're going to have to work hard to constantly move around and play this type of, you know, just be tricky, be moving on, be moving on your feet. And uh, yeah, investigate all the gambits that you like. Um, but okay, you have to do the hard work there. But you, I think it's really important to not kind of put your own opinion as to what is good. I think you have to look at what creates joy in in, in a chess player and what they really enjoy playing and uh, try to adapt to that because chess should be fun. Yeah, I 100% agree. And at the end of the day, it, that's just the point, isn't it? Chess should be fun. And the day, the day it stops becoming fun, the day you're going to stop learning anyway, uh, and the day where you're doing something wrong and a simple bit of advice is you don't have to always improve your weaknesses people think okay i'm weak in the ending i don't really enjoy the ending but i should learn the ending i don't think you should because you won't enjoy it you can just study the things you enjoy it's as simple yeah as that. you know um, you'll get better anyway you don't have yeah, to yeah i mean definitely you know. you'll get you'll get better and and uh, you you can know, you do have to like it depends on again what you want to do you know if you want to be a certain x x level then okay then you're going to have to be a little bit grounded on your end games and you'll come to realize anyhow because people will consistently beat you in the end game and that's never a, pl a pleasant feeling and so you're like right i remember i kept losing rook and pawn endings as a kid so i was like right i'm going to sit there and i'm going to learn everything i could can about them and you kind of grow to to love it and again that will spark joy once you master things and you get your you little eureka moments but um yeah just uh and it's very i just think it's very important for the coach for a coach to always motivate and to inspire their students and you cannot have a coach just going you're just rubbish <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds like a bad coach, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that sounds like really bad coaching. Yeah. Um, but you'd be surprised at how many times that there's, that there's, it would never ever be said like you're rubbish, but it would be, you know, this kind of comments that, yeah. well, unless you do this and this and this, you're never going to be a good player. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And it was actually one of, one of England's best players that told me he had that experience. Right. Okay. And, uh, yeah. that's a pity. Yeah. Um, it's quite funny, you mentioned uh, Botvinnik School of Chess, which is like the famous Soviet School of Chess, where, which generated loads of world champions. But there's a funny story about Karpov, and uh, Karpov joined the, the Botvinnik School of Chess when Botvinnik was alive, Botvinnik world champion. And Botvinnik looked at his chess for a week or so, and his one, the one thing he said to Ivanka was, this guy, this guy is nothing, he will never be a strong player. And mm -hmm. Bot Botvinnik said that about Karpov. Uh, who then went on to obviously i think even excel further than botvinnik had had excelled so it's uh it's quite easy to be dismissive of of people mm. in their play and it's better to be positive uh in in all walks of life of course yeah so, but quite funny definitely anyway. and going back to the the position um i mean this this grunfeld uh, it looks uh, like both sides have pretty much got what they want with the position um they're both fully developed david's got all his pieces to the right squares this is the thing with david's play again he's a bit like mickey he makes things look simple he puts his pieces on the best squares develops them i say that i mean this queen's is that good or bad there i i don't know but uh danny's also seems to have done very sensible things solid center yeah developed his pieces I'm wondering what plan both sides have got, but well, I was wondering yeah. about this queen on a6 because yeah. it kind of you, you kind of think that black's position is very normal, except that there's a queen on a6. Uh -huh. And yeah. just wondering, I mean, can it be made to be a little bit awkward? Because um, I mean, is there well, is I there think... any direct threats in the position? I mean, one thing I also been thinking about is I would love to put pressure on the center. Yeah, I mean, so that's like one idea that kind of very direct idea that springs to mind. And also I'm thinking 
about trying to put pressure on the center because I really want black to play pawn takes pawn. So why, why do you want black to play pawn takes so, pawn here? I, I would really, so that's why I'm thinking bishop a3. Why, why do you want black to play pawn takes pawn here? Because I then, then I have uh, the tension in the center goes away and uh, my life becomes easier. Okay, so you want to just keep it simple, simple, really. Simple, uh, simple. Simple. simple is good. Simple, simple is always is good. good. Well, we have another move. David's gone b6, and I, I think the reason for this, he, he probably was, this bishop here could be a bit, could just be very strong, right? I mean, it's a mm -hmm. hidden threat, because uh, the queen could actually just get in a lot of trouble. I mean, let's say you play a move, I don't know, just put the king there, bishop here. Uh, you probably have to move your queen to this square, and there's certainly some danger. So, he, okay, he's gone b6, so the queen can come back. And yeah. David's keeping this pawn formation. I guess also you've got ideas of c4 sometimes, not not very often, but you might as well keep the pawn on, on this square. Um, yeah. Roughly even this position? I mean, I think I'd rather be white slightly, but... I would is... rather be white yeah. because because I think it's just an easier position to play. But uh, definitely, black has, apart from the queen that's on a6, black has excellent pieces. Yes. Uh, question in the chat, why why isn't white playing e4? And the simple answer is e4 is certainly a move you think about. But e4, e4 is the normal move to play in the Grunfield. And maybe in, in a lot of positions, that's what David wants, because the d4 pawn becomes a little bit more moist. You know, it's a little bit more easy to attack. E4 is certainly an idea, and I like this aggressive approach, just trying to go E4 and D5. But we, we mentioned this yesterday. Um, it might be played here, but in general, timing is very important. And mm. e E4 is not something you ever need to rush. If you can improve your position as much as you can first, then why not try to get your queen maybe to a better square? Um, there's yeah. no, no rush in the position, so e4 you can wait on. And I think top. Yeah, I was thinking queen e2 as well. I was just thinking, yeah. just keep the position a little bit fluid because yeah. what is black's plan? Yeah. Oh. Well, that's it. I'm not sure what black's plan is. We do have a move. Uh, Danny has decided to, and again, this is another very logical move. He's decided to go with a c pawn, and this makes some sense of opening the bishop. Um, and he has ideas of going d5. But now David immediately puts that pawn in the pin. Mm -hmm. And in some ways you could say maybe David's also happy because now the d pawn is not as well defended. It was really a rock a move ago. But now now there's some threats of winning this pawn. So uh, there's some sense to this. Uh, yes. But if, if Danny can hold this hold on to this pawn, I, I, he's he's going to have a lovely position with d5 coming. But can he can he hold on? Well, he's gone. Okay, he's just gone. Bishop takes knight. Very risky positional decision because all the light squares around his king are bad. But he's got a concrete aim, and I will say concrete ideas are the best. And his concrete idea now is to defend the bishop on b2, so he can try to play d5. Just concrete, concrete chess. And mm -hmm. I I like the way he's doing this. Actually, yeah, I, I, I like I like his play so far, Danny. It is it is uh, if 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 it wins, it will be. I mean, it has to win though. He has really committed himself because he's given up the light squares. So yeah, is is he is he just? So my question now is like, is it just a straight off win for Danny then? <laughs> okay, so I mean, uh, you know, because you... you know, if it goes wrong, then yeah. uh, then it's going to go seriously wrong, and uh, David will be the one that's winning. Yeah, I mean, long long term wise, if Black can avoid this sort of d five, long term wise, there is, as you say, Ivanka danger, isn't there, to the White King? Mm. But short term wise, how does Black just deal with pawn to d five? This this move, right? It, so I have it's... to go Bishop h three. Let's go Bishop h three. Yeah, now... let's let's put, let's. Uh... And I'm assuming Danny's idea is to play d5 to anyway. D5, yeah. Nice big center. And, um, well, uh, uh, you can take the bishop or not. Maybe you don't want to take the bishop so your knight can catch her. So the only square for yes. the rook is Yes, so like let's just C8. move the rook back. And now the queen is actually really bad over here, I feel. Yeah, the um, queen is, my, my queen is really bad, but still. If I, if I can just do the repair work and hold on, then I'm going to look forward to this amazing bishop on h3. Okay, so I just play I just play in the center. I've got, very, I've got an extra pawn in the center as white, so I want to use that center. And this also allows my queen to come over, defend if need be. 
and I might just try to plow through something like this. So mm. this, uh, I, I would take white here. A hundred, you know, yeah, I, I, I also would. I'm really liking, but I, I wanted to. I just wanted to kind of point out: you need to have something concrete. You can't just go yeah and put my pawn on d5, and that's good. You need to have something a little bit more than that. So you have to. So it's good. I really do like this idea of e4. I kind of like, I mean, you know, the thing with Danny is as well, I mean, we kind of forget how strong some of these players are who are not the, the top four. And um, playing in this position, bishop takes c6, or playing into this line, c4, bishop takes c6. I don't know many players who do that. Um, you, ha you know, I wouldn't have played this. I'd have this position, and I think I'd just play queen e2. I would never think about giving up my best piece, which is this bishop. And this is quite a sort of unique idea, going c4. And then you have to see that you give up the bishop and it, it looks risky but i i think that's a, it, it might be a very impressive decision uh we'll see how things go queen b3 no more moose and david uh, david could be in danger this is also a danny position danny likes attacking mm -hmm. likes having the center if you control the center you can attack the king much easier because you can quickly dart off to the other side of the board so i would uh, i'd certainly say uh, david is not in the winning post yet should yeah. we have a look at, uh, therefore, Gawain's Let's game? Let's look at Gawain. Yeah. Gawain against uh, Matthew Turner. Okay, so Gawain really needs to win to keep a chance uh, keep a chance of winning this whole tournament. He must win with black in this position. <laughs> and uh, I laugh because it's not really the position you want if you've got to win, right, Ivanka? Right, no, um, it's not the position yeah. that you want at all. Um, okay, how to do it. I mean, how to even create them. Well, the pawn on d6 is hanging, so that you need to do something about that. What about the most natural move? Maybe queen to d5. Can you do something like that? Queen, queen d5 now played. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the queen's nice and centralized, but the obvious problem that Gawain has is the c-file. And if he needs to win, what's he going to do? He needs to unbalance the position. He's going to go Harry, yes. five, Harry, four, Definitely. Harry, three, checkmate. <laughs> well, if he gets that, in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is... mate in four there. Yeah, just check mate in four moves. There's nothing Matthew Turner can do. Um, <laughs> it's unstoppable. Put the pawn there. The queen comes in. Well done, Gwen. Right. Okay, well let's done. move on to the next game. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I mean, it's actually you know that is literally not a bad idea though, is it? I mean, uh, if I was Matthew here, um, I'd want to put my queen on c4 because if I get rid of the queens, I'm just a little bit better with control of the c file. But I don't think you can ever get the queen. It's like David Howe's queen. You can't ever get the queen back in the game because you actually just drop a pawn, I feel. Mm -hmm. And if you try taking this one, well, you, you you might win on d6, but that's a monstrous pawn there. So not not so... It's, it's still There's still play left here, right? There's still, still definitely play. play left. And especially one of the things with queen to d5 is that the f3 square is like the perfect square for a queen just uh Bonk it's, it's uh, that's dangerous the most dangerous square ever it now, just uh, will threaten all sorts of uh checkmating possibilities definitely now we actually have in the chat hello to uh nick arkal who's keith arkal's brother and uh, mm -hmm. a very strong player in himself uh old nick so he's saying good luck to keith so we better go and have a look at keith's game let's now, have a look at keith's game yeah his brother's in the chat let's go and see how he's getting on and Keith, it's a really strong tournament. He's on respectable three and a half along along with Mark. And he's playing the back marker, but the back marker just beat Gwen Jones very recently. And Keith now with the black pieces here. Um kind of structure that Glenn often gets, isn't it? This kind of uh strong D4 kind of uh structure in the middle of the position. Mm -hmm. But what do we think now the queen's come back it, it, it sort of strikes me that the bishop on f1 terrible piece this one really bad because you, you you got this bishop stuck behind all your pawns you want a dart square bishop here where it can sort of dart around your pawns so in an ending potentially that could be the losing piece for for white if everything gets swapped off on the plus side though uh, of course there's this advanced b4 and, and having the pawn breaks gives you often the initiative and the advantage and i don't see any pawn breaks of black but white has the idea of coming like b4 c5 trying to trying to plow 
through the position over there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, black is in a quite a nice kind of position of wait and see. It's up to white to do anything. Yeah. And uh, often just by having that the benefit of not being able to do anything, not needing to do anything, then that kind of makes your plan a little bit easier. And, you know, when B4 comes, you're like, great, because suddenly my rook gets... Uh, gets let's, open let's you have a potential yeah. yeah yeah and you also have the potential that a knight can get to f4 so i kind of really i do really like keith's position actually I, I i think so as well i mean i like his pieces and um well b4 has been played i've just seen another idea in these kind of positions you look at the dark squares and you think yeah if you get you get your knights in there and there is one way maybe now it's getting a bit more critical on the queen side but if white hadn't done anything you can play mm. like queen e7, knight e7, and then queen g5. Swapping the queens probably helps Keith because of this bishop and try to eventually get the knight into like, uh, you know, this square, get the knight into yeah. f5. But we have this action on the queen side now, Ivanka, knight to a4 played uh, in this game. And I think we'll move on now. I think we'll go to another game. But so yeah. far, um, I expect Keith's very happy with the way Keith this is Keith is doing going. well. I yeah. agree. Keith is doing well. Shall we look at um, yeah. Mickey's M Mickey's game against Mark? Let's do it. So here we go. <coughs> um, Mark a pawn down in this position at the moment. Um, and uh, I mean, it looks good for White, right? I mean, where, where's Mark's compensation? Mark is kind of going with f5 for some attack with the bishop coming to attack h3 the queen coming over to g6 h5 um i remember mark telling me a story about mickey um which i thought kind of sums up mark's fighting spirit and it was um when when mickey came on the circuit as a chess player a chess professional obviously they're all fighting for the same prizes in in english events and you know mickey was really strong really young and um you know he, he he was like you know one of the best uh definitely he, incredibly strong player and he and he beat mark he kept beating mark in weekend tournaments and mark mark's approach was right he wasn't scared to play mickey but instead of that he wanted to sort of seek down mickey in every tournament mickey played in and keep trying to play him until he got that win under his belt so a lot of people would be like well okay mickey's playing this tournament i don't want to go there because he's probably going to take the prize money his, his idea was i want to go to that event I'm gonna I'm gonna one of these days I'm gonna duff him up right I'm gonna beat him <laughs> and then I've got him and that's kind of that's kind of Mark's approach right he, he's a very he's a massive fighter and um I, you know it, it's <laughs> he always has been it just reminds me of, I kind of call that approach the little terry approach that keeps on going keeps on coming at you rah, 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 trying yeah. to get that bigger dog yeah no, but I know but I like it it's a, it's a great philosophy um definitely yeah I mean it's it's okay I think this position is a little bit unclear. Whilst the, the White King is in danger, I mean, mm -hmm. how, how does then Mickey neutralize Mark's initiative? It is a bit of initiative, isn't it? I mean, let's just say you go a6, I mean, which is a, a normalish move. To demonstrate this initiative, well, um, I was hoping I could get some sack on one of these two Yeah, I was hoping for rook takes knight, but I don't see that happening, actually. No. The queen queen does a nice job of defending the knight here, so if you try yeah. to open up the rook, the sneaky queen is suddenly stopping sort of uh, these sacrifices. But you can't you can just get another piece into the attack first. So may, maybe the queen comes to, like, for example, g6. Yeah, now, let's, let's, let's move the queen to g6 and uh, say now... Okay, he has to do something about that, or... Yeah, I mean, I've, I think, I, I just feel like, okay, maybe, you know, maybe you can go bishop e6 here. And uh, yeah, maybe this is game on, bishop e6, right? Yeah. That's a very I was just also move. looking at knight takes pawn, being greedy, but maybe that's too greedy. Aha, uh -huh, knight takes pawn. Oof, pawn grabber. Uh, and, and you are you are a little bit of a pawn grabber, aren't you, Vanka? You said before, you, if you see a pawn, you grab a pawn. Is that right? You're well, thinking, well, well, not you, always. You yeah. know, it, I, I wasn't sure whether I should trust this. I thought maybe it's a little bit too much. Well, let's have a look. Takes it and you grab another one. Yes. Why not? It looks okay to me. I, I mean, want it all. Looks all right. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't see. I mean, I think I think Mark's got some 
what would you say like parlor tricks maybe um but they call it they call it was it coffee chair a coffee house chess coffee house yeah i mean yeah. I, I mean i i think he's punting a bit here i mean yeah d takes here coffee i mean that's i've been called a coffee house player so many times Jovanka. simon at coffee house player you just you know maybe i would have fit in well in you know the cafes in new orleans with someone like paul Murf morphy better than modern day chess but coffee house chess is where you just like you're just trying to check mate all the time but you're not really taking care of any positional considerations and mm -hmm. you may be sort of riding your luck a little bit if your opponent defends well yeah uh, the thing is though with marks marks kind of like mike has he's thrown his pieces forward on the king side and then suddenly he's kind of taken some time out on the queen side um uh but that that suddenly he's no longer attacking on the king side anymore and i think he's in just in trouble i think so i mean i you know he's he's got like you say some tricks based on rook takes f3 but he's playing mickey adams mickey adams i don't see him falling for these tricks nice centralized move mickey's a pawn up and it's quite a good pawn <laughs> i mean look at that pawn that's going to tie black down and, and i i think i think to be honest this is this is just really bad for mark simple mm. as that now back to Gwen jones and and it's not just about how david gets on it's about how Gwen gets on if you look at the score group above um everyone else is like two points behind david the only person you can really i'd say catch him up is Gwen, and he needs but, to win this but, position but we should really go back to the gormani game because uh, okay. things are super exciting right let's go there um, the computer says that white um just uh, the computer bar is okay. saying that white is totally won wow okay let's have a look so gormani's played this very unique idea taking that one giving up his light square bishop and he's playing in the center now this move is an interesting move but the knight's on pre but look at white center mm. so taking the bishop the queen centralizes and danny also sniffs the dart squares being very weak around david's position i think this mm. is a fantastic game so far yeah. from danny the bishop has to move now and he keeps playing aggressively the way to go g4 attacking the knight okay danny swaps off but it you know sorry my, uh, that's david swaps off the bishop attacked and he keeps going that whose king is weak now it's, it's certainly the black king the black yeah. king in a lot of danger and look at that bishop these pieces and he just have keeps been going doesn't he stuck over there <laughs> pawn takes f6 and here it comes in he goes the knight yeah. now brilliant chess knight rook takes c4 check king yeah. g7 and now look at this boom knight h5 check whoa and the point is if you take this one i think it's just you got, got queen, queen g5 check. king and this is actually going to lead to checkmate the king has to go back check the king comes back check well okay i was thinking the rook's going to come down but it's clear it's winning so king g8 has to be played Jovanka in there it just looks like Danny's having another brilliant game here. Yeah. Um, he beat me. I mean, Adams. I mean, what's going to happen here? Can he just not go Queen F6? Well, let's have a look. Queen F6. Oh, Queen F6, you've got Rook. G4 is the G4 only track. track. Yeah. So, what's the time situation? Well, Danny has six minutes. Let's hope he doesn't yeah. panic too much. And he's gone, he's gone the better square. He's just simply gone to G5 to keep an eye okay, on Okay, but G4. yeah, much better, yeah and he has three pieces attacking one to a rook about to come in and yeah he's, and he's got the threat of this one uh and there's some nice lines here for example well okay they're quite simple lines but if you go queen takes pawn well mm -hmm. i mean you've got two Nine ways to win but actually just this one is very easy and the knight of six check oh you're gonna go rook rook yeah that's very good knight of six is good as well isn't it <laughs> yeah knight of six is pretty strong oh, yeah <laughs> yeah i mean there's so many good moves so the gorm is the gorm is uh, is killing it uh, at the moment yeah. and it just shows his potential i always thought danny if he got his act care he could be like he could be up there one of the best his style of play um so the queen has come to g5 and can we've had okay we've got another move the queen back to this square and this okay so david finds a way to defend and he creates a counter attack it's not over yet no. he's got rook g4 still still uh incredibly complex but knight and queen are so scary Ivanka, right around the king so scary. they are certainly that it's uh 
certainly a scary kind of position. So, I mean, how, how to continue the attack? Do well, you if just I just play it simple. F6, check, and... Uh, and then queen e5. Just... I, I, hmm? And then queen e5, maybe, is, is just... Okay. Oh, but then you have... A... Uh, okay, so let's say I go check. Maybe, I don't know where you put your king, but let's say king g7 looks obvious. So then I then I was thinking this might be the way to to win. And if you go rook g4, I'm actually just going to move my king. I'm not going to... You're not going to take it? Uh, maybe take I'll take it. Take it and then go queen g3. Yeah, I just thought I don't even want to play that ending. You've got two pawns at that ending. I've just moved my king. Oh, okay, first. okay. Oh, it's check. Rook g oh, I will oh, take check, it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'll definitely take it. <laughs> That's why I put the queen here in the first place. <laughs> um... <laughs> and my idea here is just to go knight e8 and queen g7 mating i think this is this looks i mean is there any way after knight f6 that uh david could defend he's got knight f6 Yvanka. king yeah. g7 played I okay expect, so, so don't go we, for the draw, we expect a queen to e5 yeah because now there's threatening double checks and all sorts of things now this is where this is Yvanka. this is where danny gets a bit nervous he's, he's clearly a great player but his nerves sometimes let him down and he knows he can take a draw here like this i mean there's no way he will take a draw unless he's completely he can't take a draw here he can't do it but i mean he's probably getting nervous he's thinking oh a draw against david that's not a bad result i'm hoping he's just going to continue the attack right i mean queen e5 looks crushing to me what does david do after this one king h6 well, well king h6 is the apparently the way forward is to yeah. go rook yeah but apparently after yeah king h sorry i'm losing yeah queen e5 um black will play king h6 king h6 only move and now you, yeah. you get the rook in there somehow try to get this one around somewhere mm -hmm. but the computer is suggesting that the, that you've got to be accurate with your move oh, order no. i have no idea why but first of all go rook a3 uh, instead of queen e5 he's repeating the position i i just feared he'd do this i think he's just well he might he might be doing it just again sometime no, and now... draw. really disappointing he's just agreed to draw okay i mean good for david but why why i mean it's just uh very disappointing i think that one i mean uh you, you're clearly better here if 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 danny was playing anyone else uh Yvanka, he'd never take a draw in this position never Okay, so shall we show what how mm -hmm. to kind of yeah let's do it. win it? Yeah. So I think after Queen to G five, I think the move is Rook A three. Okay, so Queen C eight, Rook A three here, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I don't know. If I go here or something, don't you go check first? Let's go check first. Okay. So... And then, and then, like, I mean, there's lots of ways. Yeah. Tools, but let's just say I go Rook A three, get this one around, yeah. Yeah, because okay, so Knight F six now Rook A three. So you can you kind of keep it in reserve. I mean, to be honest, there's probably more than one way, isn't there? I mean, this this is a good move, but if you do yeah, go... but okay, so let's do the, let's do your way. So Lola, your way was queen e five, which is like the most natural move. I mean, let's put the king on this dodgy square. And yeah, I, let's I would put imagine. It. I imagine. And like, then let's and now let's try to do. You got rook a three. You, you got I mean, even like a move like f three, trying to get knight g four in. Uh, it seems sensible. Even just moving the rook to e3, trying to swing that round. Mm. Um, rook a3, though, you're saying is the best, right? Well, I just had a, a very, very brief computer, glance yeah. and I had I saw some rook a3. Yeah. I don't quite understand the thing of rook a... Ah, oh, you want to go rook... I don't know. I think it's just an easy win, isn't it? I don't, I don't think yeah. it's even that hard. I mean, you, just, you can just put the rook on g3. There's not much black can do. Black's king's on h6. We've got knight, queen, rook attack in the other rook. I mean, you don't even have to calculate this, right? I mean, it just it should just be yeah reasonably simple. You, black can't ever put the queen here because it's, yeah. it's mate. Maybe um, maybe there's some rook c1. Is, is there some? No, there's no rook c1. Because, yeah, but it's important check. to go rook a3, yeah. not rook e3, because you don't want to allow rook c1 check. Right, okay. So if you went here, then there is rook c1. Yeah. How much time did Danny have? I think Danny had about five minutes there. And yeah. I, I mean, taking the draw... When you've got five minutes and your opponent's got one minute left, at least spend three minutes, you know, on the position because you've got three minutes. And and I, that someone of Danny's strength would find Rook A three if he just spent mm. that time. I think it was just pure nerves, unfortunately. And after Rook A three, um, 
well, there's nothing Black can even move here, is there? All his pieces are on the wrong side of the board. He hasn't got any pieces on the king side, right? They're all on the other side of the board. So, I mean, is 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 F three another way you could try to win? Just trying to play knight g four in some positions. I mean, maybe not here. Maybe this is uh, maybe this is not the way to play. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so um, uh, that's a good result for David Howell, who who was in a really bad position. And now David Howe is at least first equal, but only if Gawain wins his two games. And Gawain so has drawn. So David ah. Howe's champion. Wow. David Howe is champion. And he's done it with two rounds to spare. Unbelievable. I mean, I, I thought it would be a photo finish between David, Mickey, Luke and Gawain. I, I thought there would not be too much in it. And... Uh, well, wow, 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 wow. Well played to David. Well well done, David, indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah, very well done. Yeah. And uh, yes, I mean, Gwen, Gwen's game, it looked like it was just very solid. Matthew didn't take too many risks in the position. Um, symmetrical, obviously, you can't even try to win this position against a good player. Even Magnus would agree a draw in this position. There's absolutely mm. nothing you can do. Um, well, probably Magnus would agree a draw. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, so that does mean... Well, first of all, congratulations to David Howard, I think, who, who's uh, Hastings champion. And I don't know, Yvanka, you thought he might not have been... This he has been. In 2009, he, he was okay. a joint winner. Yeah. Well, well done. So. And he's, he's done it again. Congratulations mm -hmm. to him. So, And he's deserved it totally, hasn't he? He's been the best player all round, right? Um, yeah. I mean, the only yeah, game... I mean, Totally. I mean, he was in trouble against Matthew Wadsworth, but, you know, he found some right. brilliant resources. His in-game play was brilliant, you know, with his move E6, just breaking up the pawn structure. Definitely recommend you to check that one out because it was an instruction on how to defend a very hopeless position. And uh, after that, he was just ruthless. Uh, you know, he put Mickey away, he put Luke away. I um, mean, it was just cold-hearted. <laughs> hey, you know, ice, ice cold, uh, ice cold water in the veins there. Absolutely. I mean, someone's. We we had this discussion yesterday. Someone's actually saying any luck in David's victory, and and, and the simple answer is no. <laughs> um, there's no no luck there at all. We, we discussed this a lot. The the factor of luck in chess, and luck in chess is such a small thing, and. It might seem that players get lucky, but if you understand, I, I think you will find that they're creating their own luck. Mm. Uh, and creating your own opportunities and luck is a real skill. It, even in ugly and lost positions, just fighting on and finding resources. And that's what these guys have done. So I wouldn't say there's a bit of luck in the last game, no. Well, he would have won it anyway about the last game. And it was, he defended, Danny had to find his rook a3. He didn't find the rook a3 move, so it was a draw. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, if Danny had found it, then he, he would have to get a result in the last round, I suppose. But there's been a couple of moments. But in general, he's, he's, he's only been in trouble in two games out of ten. The other eight games, he's just played the best chess. He's mm -hmm. played better chess than anyone else. So I think he deserves it uh, certainly yeah. more uh, more than anyone else. And uh, he's demonstrated that. And it's, a, it's nice to win an event like this against your other rivals, right, Ivanka? And you're kind mm -hmm. of like, you know all the all the big guys are in this you're, you're putting your foot down i'm the one right so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh it's definitely good and uh i know david has been trying out a new technique he's been meditating right. okay. <laughs> he's yeah. been doing a 10-day meditation challenge maybe this was good this start. has been helping him good yeah start. yeah oh, quite possibly yeah um Someone, someone, uh, CP Kukret is saying, if opponent does not make best moves, is that luck? Look, if your opponent made the best moves, he's cheating. <laughs> he's a computer. <laughs> it doesn't happen in chess. Humans don't play the best moves. Literally, if everyone played the best move, every game would be a draw and you'd be playing computer versus computer. So it's, it's trying to induce your opponent to play bad moves. And there's a lot of skill in doing that, getting them into the positions they don't want, putting pressure on them. Uh, trying to induce them to make errors so you know it's uh simple as that is there prize money um we can show yes, you prize there money. is prize there is. money course, uh, there's I mean, prize money for everyone all, all 12 yeah. players get a prize money of course top prize is 1200 and second 800 and uh 
Yeah, 12, 11th and 12th gets 100. So Danny was in the middle of the pack, so I don't think prize money would have been too... Would have been would have been a factor in his mind actually. I mean, it does go up quite quickly when you get to six and you go up, and it, it, it's worth sort of taking the extra risk if you can afford it for the bigger prize money. But uh, also, again, thank you to sponsors Kaplan Systems. Um, actually, looking for people to take on as jobs. So if you if you're struggling with a job and you and you think you're an intelligent guy and you might be able to help out, go and check out their website. Um, so worth doing, and also. Uh, a massive hello to Adam Hunt in the, in the chat. Hello, Adam, and hello, Henry hello. Hunt. Um, Adam, very good friend of mine, international master of ours um, from England, did the commentary at British Championships a, a year or so ago. And uh, yeah, I've done some YouTube videos and uh, got a newborn a newborn baby, Henry, Henry, Henry. He's not so newborn now, Simon. No, he's not, no, not newborn. <laughs> he celebrated a, a year oh, right. uh, it's, it's in a November year or December. Wow. Time goes quick, right? A year, right? Yeah, it does. Very yeah. quick. Okay, and um, well, just to let everyone know about some of the other games, uh, Adams did win that one. Uh, it's a little bit tricky for Mark, it looked like. Um, Gwen Jones, we saw, was a draw. We had a look at Keith's game, and it seemed like Keith kind of did the thing that we maybe Ooh. thought he would do, get his knight into this juicy square. And we, we also said that the real problem positionally White had was the bishop. And I think at this moment in time, it's very clear that that bishop is just a complete waste of space. That bishop can't do anything. Nice little tactic here. You can't go rook take c3 because that wins the rook. So Keith is just winning c2, rook d1, c1. Yeah. The knight and rook dominating. That looks like a nice game from Keith, right? Very nice. Definitely game. Looks, looks great, you know. Yeah. We did kind of, men you didn't mention that the bishop was bad and uh, that uh, Keith had a very nice position and sure enough, he won. Oh. We're trying to get David um, onto the onto the stream after the last round. We better not get him on while he's playing his last round. Could, could cause, he could get thrown out of the tournament. Um, <laughs> so uh, are you, you going to message him, your anchor? Is that, is that you on there? Uh, um, shall I give him a little message? We, we, we get... Yeah, I, th I think, it's, I think you, you know best which one. Okay, so we're trying to get David on onto the stream. We'll let it, I think we'll let him play his last round first before before we bother him. Uh, and then <laughs> we give, just in case, I don't want to put him off. Uh, you know, he suddenly answers his phone halfway during the game, he'd be in trouble. So uh, could get kicked out quite strict these tournaments. Um, now, another position, another game. Let's just have a look at the last ones going on. And it's Nick Pert and Nick Pert playing against Amit Ghazi quite a weird ending and meat has the extra piece but nick has these kind of dangerous looking pawns and um without is the it just going to be a repetition is it um are we going to see rook a2 and then the... okay no the king has come to f6 a7 play so rook a2 is forced yeah and uh now now diana comes down the board not delroy i never liked the name delroy <laughs> <laughs> i think it, black's close to winning i mean like that that's yeah. the only move play because if you go king here there's knight b5 and actually you're just gonna take everything off on a on this yeah. one and then i think you go king here and your pawn queen so king b6 only move it looks very close to winning, doesn't it, for, for yeah. a meet. Meet is a piece up, so it's important. The, okay. the issue is that if you lose your F-pawn, it's a very easy draw. Knight and Rook versus Rook in the ending, it's actually quite a simple, simple draw. Mm. So if you play like King E5, then Rook F8, I'd imagine... Well, should... you, well rook, rook E8 is going to be a problem. Rook, rook E8. E8, check. Trying to play for it, yeah. So, so yeah, if you if you go king f five, then rook f eight is going to be a problem. So the problem is that the, those kind of pawn. everything gets cancelled out. But um, yeah. So is there a winning move here for for? Uh, well, you actually... have to do something clever with your knights. Yeah. Well, there is a threat. Uh, or maybe you can just wait. Uh, I mean, white just wants to move the rook, right? And and then and then you have to give up your. Okay, so he has gone king e five. So I think this is where you draw now. Uh, rookie eight, and we're going to get yeah, just a draw. Mm -hmm. Rookie eight, check played. 
King takes here, and now we get this ending. Yeah, that's a, that's a draw. Yeah. Do you think Nick will play this on? No. No? No. Of course it's a draw, but... The king, I think he would if the king were on f4 or somewhere, but the white king is so far away from the action that I think... Oh, right, if the white king was over here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, other results, Luke Machine beat Matthew Wadsworth. So this is the last game going on uh, in this round. And then the last round is up. And the last round, we'll, we'll update the scores and stuff, and uh, we'll, we'll just see if uh, Nick decides to uh, just take that pawn off the board next move uh, I mean one thing to watch out for is white here knights are tricky pieces so if black goes king e4 which looks like a normal move to try to chaperone the pawn through do not try to play this move uh -uh. because that would be <laughs> very embarrassing you know watch out for those knights so yes. king e4 play will nick go knights king c5 what are the odds of playing king c5 here no, he's taken off that pawn. He, there we yes. go. No point messing about. Take the draw, right? Take the draw. Yeah. And uh, there we have it. Draw so, me. exciting finish. Okay, we have one final round where David will be playing against Nick Pertz. I mean, what would you do when you've won the tournament? Would you just kind of play for fun or would you just uh, agree a draw? Um, if it was me playing um, and uh, I'd won the tournament, I'd, I'd, I'd probably just offer a draw because what's the point of playing? And, and uh, <laughs> I don't really see the point. I've won the tournament already. I probably want to go and have a drink or something and celebrate. And if my opponent, if my opponent turned down the draw, then I'd just try to beat them and teach them a lesson, you know. Um, so <laughs> that'd be that'd be my like my mental plan. It's like offer a draw, they turn it down, make sure you beat them. Okay. Know. What about you? Would you would you try to play and like? Yeah, put, why not? Have fun. Yeah, put your dominance on the tournament. Just like right here we go. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter, does it? it? Doesn't it doesn't matter? You've still won. And you're still buzzing. So why not just in, yeah. you know, enjoy the game. Yeah. I suppose so. And yeah, you might you might you know by winning by a point does look a bit more impressive, doesn't it? When you when you have the results out there, it's like. Oh, you know, I'm a whole point clear. That's yeah, that's that's a good one. So, possibly, and the next round's going to be due to start, and it's the last round in ten in ten minutes time, and we're going to try to get David Howe um, on to do a little interview. David Howe is now the winner, but the last round is going to throw up some interesting games, and uh, so stay tuned to see what David's got to say about winning this major major tournament. But for now, we'll be back in like five minutes or so. Uh, so we'll see you. We'll see you shortly.
Right, well, we're back for the last round and hopefully we get some like crazy and, and exciting chess in this round. Because um, the last round, you know, it can be a lot of fun because uh, you're like, okay, it's a hard tournament, six games yesterday, oh, five games a day, mentally knackered. And it's like, right, let's, let's, just, let's just have some fun in this round. Let's just go mental and uh, try to attack and stuff. So, uh, I'm just going to set up the pairing so you can see it and the score groups and we'll, we'll maybe have a little look what everyone is winning financial wise as well uh, in a second when I've done that but uh, Yvanka are you excited for the, the last round? Now you may be muted or it may be me let's have a look is it me? It's normally me who's got to no, go. I, I muted myself. Oh it wasn't me for a change first time for everything it's normently me who messes everything up so okay. No I, I, I completely no. forgot to, uh, no, <laughs> to unmute myself. No I mean it's going to be super exciting the last round we do know we have a winner David Howell is going to be the Hastings champion of 2021 but you know we don't know who's going to be in second place that's uh that's a photo finish between the top three gawain mickey and luke and uh i i'd really just love seeing everyone play i mean it's been fantastic to see some of the older guys like keith harcourt glenn flair and uh mark hebden being given a shot at this kind of tournament and i've enjoyed watching absolutely everyone play i mean some names that for me have done really well matthew wadsworth i didn't you know four and a half points out of ten but he's had some great positions and some great scalps. So I, it's very impressive. And for me, also Danny, Danny Gormali has been playing some great. He had a bit of a wobble in the middle, but then he kind of came back and he won two games in a row. He beat Mickey Adams. <coughs> and it's just been an absolute pleasure to watch everyone. And uh, these guys, they're all friends. and <laughs> They're all kind of my friends. I've known them for many, many years. And I just love watching them play. Yeah, definitely. And um, it, it's, it's been a great event. So, um, I mean, the tradition of Hastings has to keep going on. Uh, I mean, there's no there's no doubt about that. It's that, you know, history should be saved and something with a tradition like Hastings, it just needs to continue the longest mm. running chess event uh, of all time. And that's quite a feat. That is quite a feat running for over a hundred years and yeah. to keep it going just over this weekend with all the problems. Uh, again, thank you to Kaplan Systems for doing that. Um, so that's great. And uh, but hopefully, hopefully it will actually happen in Hastings next year, Yvanka. Uh, I, I I want to be back down in the old town, having a nice pint of beer yeah. after the games. You know so. what? I would really love. I would really love Hastings to um, be rescheduled for the summer because Hastings is gorgeous in the winter, but I think it's going to be even better in the summer. Hastings in summer would be cool. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping, yeah. let, let's hope the COVID is over 
uh, by summer because I, I just don't know how long I don't think anyone knows how long this is going to go on for fingers crossed everything's uh, you know better by then but Hastings in summer would be I've only been there when it's raining cold um, snowing freezing it's the only time of year I've been to Hastings so um, it would be interesting to go uh, in the summertime. It would be amazing, like the old town, the beaches. I mean, there's so, yeah. much, so many things to do. I mean, I also really, you know, had a great time. I stayed in St. Leonard's and Warrior Square, which incidentally is, a, you know, there's a house where Vera Menchik used to live. And I'm really gutted I didn't know that because, you know, I read a part of Vera Menchik's biography and I just became a bit fascinated by her. And uh, yeah, we should look at the games. Let's have a look at David's game against uh, Nick. Nick has been playing the Dutch. Is this something you can tell us all about, Simon? It certainly is. Yeah, I mean, uh, Grandmaster Flash, by the way. Yeah, Rye, Rye is very near to Hastings. Um, Rye is a very nice, very nice town, uh, right near, near Hastings. But yeah, this this is uh, this is my my opening. Really, I say my opening. I, I, it's not my opening, but it's the classical Dutch. And myself and Nick Pert were talking about working with other people. Well, well, Nick was a very close, is a close friend of mine. And ourselves and his twin brother, Richard Pert, have looked at this position quite a lot. And um, we know this, this actually very interesting game occurred. The British Chess Championships in uh, Warwick, Warwick University, maybe like four years ago. And it was, it was Nick Pert with the white pieces against Richard Pert black pieces last round and Richard Pert with the black pieces needed to win to come first equal in the British Championships and they're twins and um, they got this position on the board and uh, Nick played as white this position now he's got black and he really struggled to get a to get a draw with the white pieces Richard came very close to becoming joint British champion uh, winner and uh, I, I was always a little bit fearful of this knight to f4 line but um, I think Nick will know exactly what to do now I've, I've even in this position played this move which is the move you want to play and I played this in some very important tournament but after captures captures there's some weird knight to e6 move which took me totally by shock um, when I first had this <laughs> and I was like what I mean Ugh. and the point is if you grab this one then Bishop takes b7 is actually computer line good. So you play c6 first. And the whole idea of Black's playing this is to go e5. If you play e5, and you can get this move in. You're, you're, if anything, better. So if White Castle's here, if you play e5, I prefer Black's position in these structures. I remember beating Arkady Nijdich, um okay, in a Blitz game, Edinburgh Blitz tournament in this. But this is very nice to get this here. So David tries to go to stop this with knight d3 and now what I was saying that um, Nick should know what to do I think the main move here is queen c7 this is this is what you're supposed to do and just force through this move at some point but Nick okay he goes knight d7 which is probably a little bit similar uh, and again if you can get the pawn to e5 you're you're laughing but I, I don't know if, I don't know if that's accurate maybe the queen Maybe the queen should go to c7 first, but okay. Classical Dutch, be interesting to see this. Maybe this is an idea to draw offer because if David goes knight f4, Nick can go knight b8 and they can, <laughs> they can get some weird draw like this. <laughs> that would be, <laughs> be that would be yeah. funny. It would be. Yeah, it would be. Uh, if if this weren't yeah. like a like if if David hadn't won the tournament already, I would be like going boo. <laughs> but mm. but uh, mm. yeah. It could be understandable to play this, but yes. I expect, knowing David, David's like such a fighter. I think he'd play on anyway. He probably wants to beat, you know, you know, win this one. So, um, but this position, I think it all, all sort of revolves around whether Black can play this one. I have to say, I think Knight BD7 is a slight inaccuracy. I think Queen C7 is a much better way to play because often your Knight wants to come out this way. And mm -hmm. after Queen C7, you're pretty much going to play this E5 move. Uh, I mean, if black, if white castles, you get it in, for example, and your bishop's a bit freer. So I think this is a slight inaccuracy from Nick, but I, I don't know if David will be able to uh, punish it. Uh, do you want to pick a game, Yvanka? Another game to, to move on yeah, to? Yeah, let's have a look. So I'm, I'm always going to choose. Okay, well, this time let's uh, check out the race for number two. So let's check out Gawain against Luke. Yeah, this is, this is a big game, actually. Good point. And uh, we can see 
these three players they're all fighting for second and just to show you the money actually uh danny's in fifth so i just you know i think so, you know some people might need the money more than others of course and uh just want to see what these guys are fighting for so let's just bring up the prize money well second is a very good 800 pounds third 650 four 550 so there's a big difference yeah i mean it's like difference mm -hmm. of like could be three four hundred pounds on this one last game uh so yeah big game and uh g6 now played from luke this looks like Gwen's favorite grand prix opening um it does doesn't it it does except luke. he hasn't gone f4 he's kind of put his knight on f4 so let's look this is all Gwen did a dvd actually for ginger gm on the grand prix at this position and um he he this is one of our first dvds he is he, a long time ago now but he does he did study this position and tell you the way to play this but okay we'll go to the current position at the moment knight h3 and the normal idea in the grand prix is a bit like that dutch game you actually just want to play f4 and you remember mm -hmm. in the dutch this is the pawn structure that nick pert is going through just just let's have a look at that position you get the pawns here in the dutch you try to get the pawns to the same square so a lot of these openings yeah. actually share common ideas and i i quite like Wayne's position because g6 is also creating some problems on the dark squares yeah. Aaron, it looks like a great grand prix uh, attack i mean yeah. I, I agree with you uh, and also you know g6 e6 i'm just really dying to play moves like f4 f5 if you try to put your king there you know Definitely. so yeah so so say like luke tries to castle then you just go bishop h6 and then Oof, this is horrible yeah. right rookie eight f4 f5 checkmate right? yeah you just have to make sure yeah yeah you could yeah. Yeah, you, your bishop doesn't even get trapped on h6. So and that'd be quite funny, yeah. So you, something's yeah. getting trapped, but uh, it's, uh, well, you just about got that one right. Just about yes. getting out of jail, but it's not yeah. pleasant playing that. I mean, this this kind of thing with f4 would be an ideal position for for Gwen. So easy to play. You play f5, you just you just attack and checkmate. Mm. And, and Luke's pieces are not very well placed. And uh, Luke won't be castling, and he, and he just played queen e7. If anything, he's going to try to go queenside here. But then you play b5, you're a little bit weak. Gwen makes sure he can't castle. This is a nice position. Nice position, certainly for Gwen. He's going to be enjoying this one. Yeah. Uh, one more move in David's game. David's gone bishop f4. This is sensible to try and stop e5. Now, I wonder here, this is, uh, this is where if you go queen c7 now, you might have to watch out for something like c5, right? Yes. And because if you don't play c5, if you castle, yet again, black gets this e5 move in. With tempo, black is absolutely fine. So you probably have to play c5. Uh, how's this working out if I go e5 anyway here? This is the move black would probably be forced to do positionally. Let's say you mm -hmm. take on d6. Bishop takes d6. Bishop takes d6. Let's say you take on e5, and then knight takes e5. Yeah. Kind of looks okay for black, maybe. I guess. Yeah, it looks it looks reasonable for for black. Yeah. There's a uh, no direct way how to punish this. So, um, can you play make another move instead of c5? I I don't. I think c5 would have to be played here. Mhm. Mm because this e5 is is really. Hot. It's just coming. Yeah. Well, Nick Nick was a little bit scared of this, and uh, Nick decided. Well, I mean, rather than going into the C5 move, which he, I think he's gone for H6. <laughs> so he's just trying to play G5, right? And then E5. And he's going to try to steamroller David Howell off the board. I mean, uh, oh, I'm not sure about that one, though. Well, yeah. I'm not sure about that one, Yuranko, to be honest. Looks, uh, I mean, do you just play H4 and stop it? Yeah. Well, well H4 does concede the G G4 square, it so does, there is. Does. You, got, you might better. And we know that David doesn't like to do this kind of move. That's true. Give so away maybe, squares. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you can also go knight H5 now, and the H pawn's weak in some lines, right? Yeah. There's two ideas, but if you don't, I mean, if you let's say castle, well, I don't like that move either because okay, you 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 go G5. Where does the bishop go? Maybe it comes back. Somewhere. Some, e somewhere, probably D2, yeah. don't know. D2 makes more sense, doesn't it? Yeah. But I play E5 anyway. 
this position is probably all right for white, but I expect it's all right for black as well. It's yeah. just one of those kind of positions, right? So this is what you get in the Dutch. You, you just literally have to go for it. And then the next stage is to put your queen on h5 and try to checkmate on h2. I mean, I mean, in this position, can you kind of explode things open in the center with like pawn takes pawn and then just go f4 or something? You can do. You can play this. But normally black would just, let's say, take once and try to shut down the bishop ah, okay. g2. Shut down. Shut me down, yeah. Something along this line and... Uh, expect uh, it's okay david's played h4 he's played he didn't like g5 okay. he's, he's like right no nope, you're not doing that i'm shutting you down h4 and uh well this could get quite, i quite like your knight g4 because like after this the reason i want to play this is because it prepares e5 right i mean yeah uh, right and if you i mean let's say your castle which would be a horrible move i've got both e5 and g5 now to consider and this could yeah. be this could be quite fun for for nick so if you played f3, I'd want to play e5 anyway, and I, I don't know what's happening here. Probably yeah, let's, just let's, let's look at that mess there. So <laughs> f3, e5, Have chaos. Yeah. But I think here, Yvanka, the knight has a very nice square on f4, right? So if I just take your knight, you take my bishop, mm -hmm. I take here the knight, the white knight is looking really good. Really yes. good piece. Yeah, unless I sacrifice. Unless I'm like, okay, no, no problem. I just go knight f6. Knight f6 and you know just... yeah but it could somehow yeah my knight Don't or maybe I, yeah yeah could you even okay here's another idea could you even go knight g4 and after f3 i'd just come back because i'm gonna go knight h5 next yes yeah and I, yeah and i'm like okay you've weakened yourself but maybe you go e4 now maybe e4 is coming yeah quite complex position right quite complex yes yeah, but I mean, I, I, even e4 isn't that. Okay, well, maybe your knight h5 is never scary because the knight is on d3 protecting the bishop. Yeah. So let's have a look. Well, Nick's played knight g4. We've obviously, you can tell we've like looked at these positions before. <laughs> uh, and maybe here, Nick would take and, yeah, I mean, okay, knight. Oh, no, he can't do that now because the queen. Whoops. <laughs> that, where did that come from? So I, I would, was I recommending knight h5 when the queen could take it? Cool, that shows you that it's that time of day. <laughs> so we have to No, 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 we were looking... Oh. Was I? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, you were. <laughs> I think, I think I, oh, no, because no, the pawn was, was only two. two. The pawn was only two. Okay, good. <laughs> but maybe... <laughs> oh, well, by the way, this is actually... It's happened, f3. And, um, I mean... Well, okay. I mean, G five? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I, I think we're going to see. He's just going to retreat his knight. I think. Okay. Then after E four, now you have maybe you can try knight H five. Yeah. Sometime. This is this is what we we we're yeah. going for. Something extremely provocative because you know. Yeah. Why should white be the only one entitled to move their knight a few times? Exactly. Why can't black play it? Yeah. Do the same technique. I mean, well, David, David's played, instead of going E4, David's yeah. played like a very Carpovia move, Queen B3. He's just okay. lining up and trying to stop this E5. And maybe he's going to castle Queen side now and and do something on the King side. Queen B3 looks like a good a good kind of move to play, right? Normal right. Move. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it stops E5. Okay, so uh, it does it. I guess Black has to be pretty insistent, right? And just kind of... Or do you... Could you switch and kind of go, let's try to stonewall it out with D5? Oh, I don't like it. don't like it. No, D5. okay. Maybe, but oh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Do, do you know what, Tim? Karpov had a very similar position to this. It, 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 the, he moved his knight to D3, uh, and then he went Queen B3 next. So it was actually, if you look at it up, the, the Kar there was a Karpov game. That actually got to this position, and Karpov played this one, and then Queen B3 next move. I, f I remember that game, but okay, this is a little bit different, of course. I mean, I, I, I mean, I want to try to sack a pawn and get a knight here, but it, it's not working, is it? I don't mm -hmm. think. No, it can't work. That's just got to be rubbish. Oh, B6. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. It's just a weird position, but I, I do, I do think white, white is probably a little bit better here. I have to be honest. I think this knight bd7 move has clogged things up a little bit too much mm -hmm. in the position. David's castle. Uh, David's queenside. castle queenside. Yeah. Why not? He's won the tournament. He can have as much fun as he likes. So, okay. Oh, by the way, big move in Gawain Jones's game. Okay, and okay. 
this happened Queen E7 and this is the fight for second place and again looking at the prizes second place and third place massive difference 150 pounds and it's in one game and uh, the other thing about this is you know it's the pride it's the pride of coming second second is still mm -hmm. a great result so there's a big fight going on there but look at this okay c3 trying to open up the center normal move and now knight f4 rook g8 luke loves not castling knight d5 that's just a normal move for this kind of position you've anchor isn't it like in the in the sicilian you put the knight on that square when you're yes. luke does luke know how to castle kingside no, it, I don't anyone... think he does. I, you know, he, he just likes queens to castle on the queen side. But um, knight to d5. Yeah. Yeah. It was quite funny, actually. Um, I was a me bit mean to one of my worst students. Now, the reason I'm calling him the worst student is because I married him. <laughs> and he doesn't <laughs> want to listen to anything that I say. Oh. But, yeah, I remember he had, he had this type of position where he could have gone knight to d5 and he didn't. Yeah. and he didn't and he didn't he had about four goes and i was like right if you're going to play the open sicilians you need to know your sicilian sacrifices and knight to d5 or bishop to d5 that has to be done and uh here it just looks killing doesn't it it looks really scary for black mm -hmm. um i didn't i didn't realize your, your husband was uh, your former uh, former pupil um, oh wow <laughs> so, or, or... i think he fired me Oh, he fired you. Okay, <laughs> probably probably the safest refuses, way, right? He refuses to to do any form of chess with me whatsoever. So I I think that's that's often safest for the relationship, right? To to avoid looking at any chess with the arguments that could uh, could occur. You know, I've heard some funny stories like you know husband and wife playing in a tournament, and one of them's much higher rated than the other one, uh, and then the other one beats them, and like literally, you know. It can it can ruin it can ruin their relationship for a, quite a long time. Have you heard any stories like that? I I, I mean yeah yeah, yeah. I heard of one once. Wow, well, yeah. you don't have to mention any of, names. I'm not going to mention any names, sure. but I did see uh, yeah. um, a form a, a former husband and wife play each other, and uh, right, that's even more interesting. Yeah, right? it was <laughs> it was yeah. bad, and yeah. uh, then one of them got very upset and just walked out, and that was it. Yeah and uh left the other one waiting please don't try to guess who because i'm not going to reveal anything no. i don't want anyone name no, but um yeah that, that was a bit sad no. and uh, there was also another situation where you had um one player who had been married to her two she had two of her former husbands playing on the boards sorry two <laughs> yeah, of them? how many husbands yeah, was, yeah like two, o only of two. Former... okay yeah 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 so uh right <laughs> <laughs> I think she was playing. I think yeah, she was. Maybe she wasn't playing. Maybe it was her current husband was playing, and then it was her former husband on board three, and then <laughs> board one just was another it. former husband. So, so she's just looking down, and she's got a row of hus former husbands all, all down the row. Like, <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Oh, oh, yeah. the six of them there. Oh my words! I better, I better rethink my life choices. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, the thing is that she's pretty cool about it, so she's kind of. She probably has to be, doesn't she? To be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I one of the funniest I saw. I mean, knight d5 played. By the way, this looks really bad for Luke. We just put a couple moves on the board. Let's say Luke takes that one. If he doesn't take yeah. it, he's losing serious material because where does the queen go? He has to take it. Yeah, uh, I'm assuming Gwen's idea is to catch her with a pawn, and Luke's put this rook on a really unfortunate square. Yeah. And, uh, you know if you castle let's say this might be the best practical decision well worst case scenario luke wins loses material now uh you might be able to fight this on a little bit but it is the exchange if you don't castle but move your knight then uh, well even even d d6 is one idea yeah d6 is one idea f4 f4 is another idea i mean yeah this is this has actually occurred this has occurred on the board okay I'm wondering if Luke's getting a bit of play with this now open bishop. He's taken on c3. He might be able to take on... This is getting very interesting, actually. Very, okay. Very interesting. Also, Nick Pert's game. Very interesting. Okay. It's uh, We just dive back there. These two boards. I mean, Mickey's the other person. If Mickey wins, he can get the second place as well. Not sure how the tie break works out. But um, this... Well, the, you always get chances in the Dutch. The Dutch is a load of fun. And... Uh, 
We saw it around here. Now Nick goes c5 and he gets his e5 in, which is, you know, if I was black here, I'd be like, I'm really happy to get that e5 move in. And now Nick goes a6 and b5. Yeah, come on, Nick. And he gives up the pawn on b5. But look, he's got the a file. The knight now comes in. Bishop c3. But is the white king going to now decide to go the other way? We've seen this before. <laughs> quite, quite an interesting position. Probably not enough counterplay <laughs> because you're only attacking with one rook. But uh, That's true. It, yeah. It, it's still quite fun. By the way, quick look at Mickey Adams. Mickey Adams black here against Keith Arkal. Mickey. It looks good. It looks okay for for Keith, I have to say. I mean, although although Mickey is doing what Mickey does best, he like he's a uh, kind of playing like an alpha zero type position with this h5 and king to g7, and then he's probably going to start to to attack on the king side. I mean, this is the the pawn structure, isn't it, Ivanka? That Keith's mm. famous for. He's famous for these positions, but the, the thing that's really against him here is the opposite kind of bishops. If if Keith could get the queens off, yes, he's got this lovely play here, but with opposite kind of bishops, it favours the person attacking the king. And Black's pieces in the Carlsberg structure, they all aim to attack the king. And yeah. even with some move like g5, you can start, you know, the opposite kind of bishops give, I think, Mickey yeah. very good attacking chances over there. Um, I will go back to Gwen Jones, Luke Machine, though, uh, Ivanka. Yeah, let's let's go up. back there because uh, yeah. it was really heating up. Yeah, yeah, I remember um, I, the, the the sort of funniest husband and wife thing I saw Ivanka was that uh, Gibraltar, and mm -hmm. they had this they have this event in the evenings. They have oh. lots of different events. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you saw this one. It was there. Uh, they basically had. Um, hand and brain i think it is or it no it's like alternative moves okay so yeah yeah the average uh -oh. the average rating has to be i, I don't know like 2000 or 2100 something like that too and it's alternative moves so you have to partner up if you're a grandmaster you have to partner up with someone quite yeah. low rated and it's and it's a fun social event but there is some I... prize money and um quite a famous grandmaster partnered up with his wife who wasn't as strong right mm -hmm. and uh oh my words <laughs> It was the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen. The poor woman, because like you know, this is this is her husband. They're playing, and you're not allowed to talk. You're not allowed to say why. Well, you know, you're not allowed to say play that against the rules. You have to be quiet. Mm -hmm. And you know, she'd play a move, and he'd be like, yeah. he'd be like, you know, it's like you know, literally doing this every move, and just like, oh, he's sitting there like you know, he's literally just giving her looks, and then. Well, this was just so embarrassing for her and after the first round i you know i went outside and he was shouting at her outside the hotel in like you know in, a, in obviously not in english he was literally shouting at her like screaming at her, like, bleh, bleh, bleh. and i was like oh poor poor woman that's not what you did to your, your husband is it just to make it um clear. no i actually did that once in <laughs> gibraltar Oh, really <laughs> in the exact same tournament oh no then, oh, no i'm, I'm not I talking thought, about you by the way what am i doing it's uh, a game of chess <laughs> yeah oh, <laughs> basically he, he did you know we won a piece no. we won a piece and you no. know but we had ex we had an exposed king and he put his he put our queen like to the edge of the board far away from the king and i was very upset by this move and i kind of told him afterwards everybody knows that you don't leave your king abandoned when it's exposed and he was just there going yes yeah and i just thought i've got to stop because <laughs> yeah. it's quite easy to take these things too seriously because right by exactly. the way i wasn't i wasn't talking about your bank by any means it's certainly she wasn't shouting you know but it's like when you're competitive in the game and then it's quite hard to adjust from being competitive in the day to like taking it easy at night right because you're in that kind of frame frame mood but yeah. Um, but this was quite horrible the way this guy was shouting it was actually not in a yeah. fun way it was literally like he was just degrading her in front of everyone it was like oh my god yeah. um i kind of think luke's got loads of play going back to the position yeah, so I'm like going back to, yeah, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just really liking luke's position um yeah I just mean, uh, just, yeah. just uh what's happening here because there was some queen c6s definitely I mean, could that have yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the well, thing why is, did, why did not, why could he not play? Oh, so after, what did um, Gawain play after pawn takes pawn? Well, he in fact, why couldn't, why couldn't Gawain play just, uh, sorry, Luke play queen c six and stay instead of taking the pawn? Yeah, I mean, 
the first thing I suppose ah. we just say is that after pawn takes pawn in this position, white would like to take back, but white I think is just simply losing to queen c6. It's as yeah. simple as that because you have to be able to block this move with f3 and, and that pawn is just pinned down. So you're just going to get checkmated on g2. Mm -hmm. It's actually weird. I think, you know, we were saying, oh, brilliant idea by Gwen, but actually it's really dangerous because uh, Ivanka's question is, yeah, what, rather than taking it, if you go queen c6 straight away, threatening yeah. this checkmate. But I now you can go, now F3. you can go f3. But here it's still very dangerous. I take on c3 and you go d4. Yeah, but you got d4. Oh, okay. So uh, yeah. This is this is a this is a bit this is a probably okay. So that's why he took on c3, but actually now Gwen's had to go king h1 so we can play f3. And I'm sort of thinking, hang on a minute, this is this is uh take on b2, there goes another pawn. Bishop d4. This is horrible for now, Gawain. I totally misassessed this one. It look, it, to me, it looks like I don't know, not sure, but I, uh, it looks like Luke's got the play here. Yeah, I mean, can uh, can uh, Gawain just be calm about it and make a move like Queen E two? F F four was the move I F4 was thinking played. about, but uh... risky. It's risky because you can't go F three anymore. No. Uh, I mean, it really risky. I mean, because kind of, I want to have F3. I mean, Gwen's a very risky, risky player, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of wanted to do it a little bit slowly with Queen E2 <coughs> first. Yeah, so Queen E2, try to play F4, defend this one, makes a lot of sense. You're not going to get hit by some... Yeah, but then maybe there's some castle queenside, and then right. and then I have to sound the retreat. Unfortunately, <coughs> castle queenside makes a lot of sense getting, getting mm. the king out of the way. Um, someone asking Simon, were you tempted to tell the shouting man to have a word with himself? Well, it's one of those situations where you sort of maybe give him a really stern look, and it wasn't like he he what he calmed down a lot when he saw me shouting. It's like what do you do? Do you actually get involved with someone else's relationship? Uh, which he probably shouldn't do. He wasn't, he wasn't like you know, literally slapping her about, which when of course you step in. But it's like, ooh, it's a, just an uncomfortable situation. I mean, it, it felt right to sort of uh, stay out of it, really. There. Um, hello, G. Leo Gomez. I'm interested in your Killer French DVD, but I'd like to know how different it is comparing with your lessons. Why Simon loves the French defence on you can say you're allowed to say chess.com it's okay it's not illegal um well how's it different it's much more comprehensive basically uh, um uh if you you know the chess.com lessons are, are good but the ginger gem ones are just longer and more comprehensive you can look at the videos uh, mm -hmm. okay f4 play but anyway just this game's quite yeah. fascinating I, I don't i don't really know what's happening here to be honest <coughs> I mean, yeah, I, th I think Luke yeah. has got the upper hand. You know, it's yeah. the cards have fallen his, in his favour. Hmm. I uh, the pawn on b2 is just, and this bishop on d4 is just amazing. Yeah. Just comparing the pieces, they're really working beautifully together. The black pieces, so I think Luke is doing well. I think so. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't even need to, you know, go for checkmate. He can just try to win on the queen side. Mm. Um, this pawn is worth this these two are worth at least a rook so at the moment it looks like Gwen is yeah fighting for that second place uh david is david look look good again yeah um, there's actually been a result um keith arkle uh, has drawn against uh, mickey adams keith Ar okay well that changes things a lot so keith arkle draw that means mm -hmm. if mick if, if sorry if luke wins he gets second place and very interesting i just saw this Yvanka. David offered a draw. David offered a draw, and Nick turned it down. So let's just have a look. I, um, we've got in the text here. Okay, this position occurred. Knight takes e5. Pawn takes. Bishop takes e5. So it's three pawns for a piece. Knight d7. Bishop c7. Queen e8. And with g4, Davis offered Nick the draw, and Nick said no and played on. Mm -hmm. Wow. So well, that means that David's uncomfortable with his position. Definitely, uh, I, I remember that in the British Knockout Championships, um, 
David felt uncomfortable with his position and he offered Nick a draw and Nick said yes and then Nick went on to lose and he later told me he regretted that a lot and he kept playing on his mind why did he agree a draw in a much much better position why didn't he make David play on and uh, David himself actually said that was a turning point for their match um so I, I think that's that's going to play on Nick's mind that he's like okay I, I agreed a draw in a worse position David has a, I have everything to play for. I'm motivated. David can uh, just relax and doesn't matter. The outcome doesn't matter for him. Yeah. Um, I mean, interesting. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah. What happens? I suppose also looking at the prize money, you can see that Nick is in sixth place. And uh, just looking at the prizes, sixth place is 350. But, you know, every win here is massive. It's always the last round, which is a bit of a money maker. If you mm -hmm. win, you get an extra one, 200 pounds, quite possibly. Yes. Um, so it, it's one of those ones where you really, you know, you're thinking, yeah, a, a win is massive. That extra half a point can just make a big, big difference. And he goes, he turns down the draw with queen g6. And this is now aiming against the bishop. And we go current position, queen d3. This rook has ideas of coming down. Very exciting. He goes now, I, I don't really understand why he does his next move, Nick. Um, I think you keep the idea of rook a1 up your sleeve. You don't need to rush this move until it's effective. So complex as position, I don't, I, I, I don't really know what's happening here. I'll be honest, I don't know who's better and, you know, pieces everywhere. But by playing this one and taking on d1, surely this only helps white. He, 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 really I think he wants to grab some material. Doesn't he want to grab the bish, the pawn? Oh no, he can't. He can't. Yes, well, he can. Well, he's gone king, king here now, uh, h7, and um, yes. after pawn takes here, he suddenly realizes, I think, that you can't really take on this one because of check, and you're losing here. So he's had to go queen takes f5, which is just losing for for Nick, right? Or is it losing? Is it piece up still? But I, I think this is really bad. Um, surely mm -hmm. with this one coming down, we have some more moves. We have rook takes, knight a7, rook f8. I mean, white's got three pawns for the piece. Yeah. The I, I think yeah. I th white's just doing well. These two pawns are coming through. Yeah. Yes. And there's problems also. Bishop h6, h3 is uh, unpleasant. Yeah. How are you going to yeah. keep your peace? Yeah. Yeah, what's where I've got Mali draw. Keith Arcol, like you say, drew with... Um, with Mickey mm. Adams that's a good result uh, yes I, I thought he might be actually be in a bit of trouble but he, he did well there um, and we'll have a look at the scores obviously at the end I think David's going to win this one I think David's going to win as well I, yeah. I, I was just looking at ways to kind of save it you've got knight b6 that's, an odd, that's a way but you know the d pawn is just very strong yeah he's gone knight b6 uh, certainly worth a piece here Knight takes knight, and I think he's just going to go d6, yeah? d6, yeah. You can even take the, the knight first, maybe, if it's better, but he's, this is simple. When Nick has to probably give up a piece on this one, and David will be two pawns up. Uh, so, yes, this is going to this is just winning now for David. Yeah. Nick bravely turns down the draw. Doesn't work out. Um, Luke McShane, now Gwayne Jones, Luke McShane. If someone wins this, they get the second place. Getting very, yep. very tight, as you can see from the scores. Um, because Mickey Adams has drawn and uh, that means he's on 7 out of 10 so probably third place if there's a decisive result here and we liked Luke's position he's got three pawns for the exchange anyway he's actually material up if anything but his pawn on b2 was looking strong mm -hmm. king b6 kind of a normal move so the knight can now not being a pin yeah and, what, and this this f4 move somehow it makes a bad impression because this bishop on h6 is just stranded yeah <laughs> so i really want to play bishop e3 take that move back and just go bishop e3 and then okay everything is okay again but uh this is uh gawain's played bishop g7 he's got 21 seconds left on the clock um yeah. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> Sorry. I like your your words. Now, if he's able to play that, then there's something really wrong with the Tornello site. <laughs> oh right, if he's yeah, if he's able to go there, yeah. 
<laughs> if you suddenly see Bishop E three on the board, it would be like oh, <laughs> so it would be quite impressive. But um, okay, now we are okay. Samuel Rusevsky is saying that when David off the draw, he was like minus three, but it quickly changed. So Nick must have missed the win that David saw, uh, and uh, he just didn't see it in time. Rook c8, sensible move from Gwen. Mm -hmm. This is the fight for second place, just to let everyone know uh, what's what's happening here. Qu Queen um, e2. Yes, uh, I like some of the chats uh, from Super Pats. I got 21 seconds to flow. 21 seconds to go. I remember that song. Yeah, what's that? The So Solid crew or something. That was it, yeah. So I think solid. that was their awesome. only hit. 21 seconds to go. Oh, <laughs> 21 seconds to go. Oh. <laughs> And wasn't it? <laughs> it, was, it wasn't a fine a highlight of, of British music. <laughs> it wasn't. So I'll tell you what. I'll be. I'll be. Uh, I don't know any of their names. I'll be. Let's make up a name, Mr. B. Wasn't that Lisa Mafia? Wasn't that? Who sorry? Lisa Mafia. Lisa Mafia. Yeah, wasn't there? I, I have I, no I, idea. Do you want to be her? Let's sing. Let's sing. You can do the to go. I'll be 21 seconds to. No, I'm not going to do this. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to kill it before oh, it even gets oh. started. I, I, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't yeah. think you can do a worse job than they did. Maybe. I mean, it's kind of it was kind of catchy, I suppose, in a in a in a really bad yeah. way. Um, uh, oh, Aldo says he went to school with that lot. The people who sung it, the So Solid crew. Wow. So, what were they like, Aldo? What the So Solid crew like? Were they? Uh... They were Londoners, weren't they? They were, they were like Londoners. Yeah, South London. I don't know whether South was it South London. I guess so. I think that's where Aldo's from, South South London. Were they? Oh were right, they... where are in South London? Because that's me. Where 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 were you from, Ivanka? In South London. Camberwell slash Peckham. Peckham. Oh, okay. If I if I want to be down with the street, it was Peckham. But if I want to be posh, Camberwell. Cam okay, so Pension. <laughs> depends who was asking you right so uh, right. You know, if it was like you know oh yes I'm from Camberwell or yeah mate I'm from Peckham <laughs> so, Peckham yeah although yeah. I think it's quite posh now though Peckham so I think everyone's been gentilized oh Aldo says troublemakers but so was I ah oh, did you manage to get an invite to the So Solid crew though Aldo you could have been yeah. in that gang you could have been like 21 seconds okay yeah oh. but I uh, was just checking out the game against uh, Gawain and Luke yes <laughs> <laughs> Focus, Simon. I'm okay. oh, sorry. Uh, there's, there's a game. I was... So Queen takes. Like things are really heating up. Sorry, I just got a bit sidetracked. Um, sure. Yeah. Bishop takes. Bishop. <laughs> and I'm just thinking. Okay, so there's Rook C. How is he going to hold onto that pawn? Knight. Oh, okay. He doesn't need to. King A5. Check. But yeah, this is Knight a... takes pawn. Yeah. Can you know, just got knight, knight takes pawn. How many pawns up is it? He's got he's got three pawns exchanged down though. So yeah, um, but this knight's this knight's actually very annoying, right? Because you can't easily kick it away. Uh, um, yeah. And I mean, it's quite a funny line here. If you go rook d one, yeah, I'll take the knight. Then actually, knight c one is quite <laughs> quite annoying. Yeah. And you, you're suddenly <laughs> like, oh dear, why did I move the rook away from b one? You're gonna queen. I can't do anything about it. No, there's um, nothing to do. And if you go rook here, yeah, I'll kick the knight away. Boom, and that one comes in. So it's, a, it's an annoying knight. Um, knight f2. Yeah, I mean, can you be slow about it? Can you kind of go king to g1 and go... <clears throat> well, we have a lot of moves, Yvanka. So a3, okay. rook c1, bang. It could just be, this could be closing in on Gwen, this position. Um, oh. Tim Wall talking about the Camberwell carrot, uh, and I know where that's from. With Nail and I, great film. Uh, the Campbellwell Carrot. I don't know that. <laughs> oh, With Nail and I is a great film. Very, oh, it's a uh, classic. I've never Have seen you that. Seen, you've never seen With Nail and I? Oh, no. Oh, you must see it. It's very good. Okay, oh, oh, and it's it's on South. It's about South London. It's It's got a lot of South South London in it. It's, it's quite, it's an oldish film. It's a brilliant film. It's a brilliant film. And Okay. Uh, uh, we'll watch good. it. We'll, we'll definitely have it on my... Uh, Bordshu is saying, if you had competed in this tournament, Simon Yvanka, how do you think he would have done? Well, I, 
I would have won it. Your ranking might come second, but you know, <laughs> it would have been it would have been tough. And last time, by the way, last time we last time we played, we drew. And then time for that, Yvanka checkmated my king on h5 after about 20 moves. It was, I was white as well. My king got chased all the way up here, and I got mated. So it wasn't a pleasant experience. Just to just to clarify. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know what? It took me a long time to spot the mate because I had it in the air, and then then I was, you always defended against it, and then oh. you played a move that didn't defend against it, and I was like, la 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 la. Oh, I can play my checkmate again. Yeah, checkmate. And you're like, oh, yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, horrible, but in this, the, the, our, our last game, I was so lucky. Oof, I, was, I was like plus eight or something, and I couldn't beat you. It was embarrassing. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I, I just I just thought, well, mm. well, yeah. It was, yeah. We had some fun games. We've had some good games yeah. in the past. Um, yeah, Richard E. Grant. I, I, he's a real, I, one of my favourite actors, actually, Richard E. Grant, and he plays one of the guys in it. I don't think the other actor is that famous, but I think I, I, I actually saw a bit of uh, information about With Nail and I that kind of put me off the film, though. Um, I think it's actually... Well, I don't know if it put me off, but it, it's Boris Johnson's favourite film. <laughs> so, uh, With yeah. Nail and I. But okay. But we yeah no I, I think uh luke has got it in the bag i think with um his yeah. last move knight c5 yeah. um well, this is this is just winning isn't it it's I just mean, winning so that means luke second place is second place yeah yeah yeah, yeah you're you just got everything you want in the position here mm. uh completely winning bishop and knight generally stronger than the rook but when you've got how, what do you call the d pawn diana Di diana diana Dirty That's Diana. Say, <laughs> I was going to say Dirty Diana. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about Darlene from Mr. Robot? Have you seen? That's another good program, Mr. Robot. Very good. Okay. Okay, but uh, are we going to stop Diana turning in? What, what happens when she queens though? That's the thing I'm not sure about. So she just becomes a queen. That's it. Okay. So we don't. We get. We don't. We don't give a name to the queen, do we? we don't call her Queenie or something. Well, I do. I, I call like you know when Harry gets to the end, he, call, he turns into Harriet, the Queen. Um, yeah, but it's, it's, what, what about the original Queen? What do you call her? Um, uh, Queenie. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, the, the game has finished. Queen yes. has has won against Luke McShane. So Luke is now second place. Yeah. Um, who else? Let's have a look at the. Yeah, so I mean, we can we can have a look at the scores. Ball one still going on, and the problem here: king here, bishop c two, and uh, Diana is gonna gonna queen herself. Um, David Howe has had this kind of position a couple of times. He had it against Mickey, queen versus bishop and rook, but he's also got a lot of pawns here. Nick just resigns. Oh, and... so a bit of a tragic tragedy happened in uh, the game between Mark Hebden against Matthew Turner. Um, Mark was, well, he was a pawn up yeah. and pressing, and then he mouse slipped. And, oh dear, uh, oh, that's really pity. That, that's, uh, I mean, yeah. this is the first big mouse clip, and that, that might cost him, that's annoying, because the last round, it cost you a lot of money. Mark mm -hmm. was in 10th place, let's just have a look, going into this round, £200, but a win, which he might would have done, because he's a pawn up, would have maybe caught, well, it would have caught him up with Matthew Turner, so he'd have got an extra, yeah, an extra fair bit of wad and here he just mouse slips like this oh mm. dear that's a pity um yeah. when you just drop your queen unfortunately that's one of the problems with online chess tough luck for mark yeah uh, one game going on and we will by the way we, we i'm going to try to give david a little message now and uh, we'll see if we can get david on and i think actually i i might have got an email saying even the sponsor if we can arrange it come on i don't know how i'm going to do this because the zoom call is going to conflict with the skype call if you see what i mean so <laughs> i'm not exactly sure how, how we're going to get it to work the the, the call but we'll, we'll work something out my tech skills are just like they're not then they're, they're they're different gravy different gravy tech skills so we get something to work but i'm going to give the um a message now see if we can get the winner david howe onto the stream thank you nick for the kind comments um and i'll just i'll just drop him a little message he might want to go in. he might be celebrating already who knows let's see yeah he's uh he's in his uh, flat in oslo so i think definitely he would have done a little dance 
He got nine points out of 11 because he did, in fact, win his game against uh, Nick Pert. And uh, we have one game left between Amit Garcia and Glenn Flair. But it, OK, let's do a quick, quick count. Is there any way that White can uh, save the game? It's looking tricky. Yeah, it's looking tough, isn't it? Um, yeah. So this is a good, good little recovery for uh, Glenn, actually, who comes back. And Amit not having one of his best tournaments. This is Amit, I thought, would do a lot better than this, I have to say. I mean, Amit has done very well in some other on, online events, but he's, yeah, he's not done Yeah, he well came there. joint first in the British Online Championships. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, he's not... So, okay, he's trying with pawn to f6, but just the king takes pawn... Sorry, pawn takes pawn. And now push your pawn on h6, but I think this can be easily covered with... Um, Bishop to g8 at the very least. No, hang on. Bishop g8, you've got bishop c4. So bishop c2. Bishop c2, but then you have bishop c4. But then you can... Um, okay, then you come with your king. Okay, so... Might get bishop yeah. and knight versus king, hopefully. Ah. Maybe, who knows? And then Don't I can think. demonstrate for a, a second time how to win it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there an easy way? Okay, well, he's, he's actually just going for this when the... Oh, okay, this is a nice way of doing it because you can get the queens off and maybe win with your f pawn if you're not mating immediately. Queen yeah. e5 check might just be mating. Yeah, that's mating. okay. You can also just grab the bishop and. Uh, oh yeah, that's a lot of lot of pieces. That's a lot of pieces. But this one's tempting, isn't it? Go there. Oh, I, okay. And ah, very nice. Queen f7, right? Mm -hmm. But you're giving up your pawn this way. Do you want to give up? Oh no, because queen comes back. Very nice. You take here. We come back again. Yeah, you come back again, oh, Queen A1. Lovely. And this is this is a nice move, actually, because now king, Very nice. king here, checkmate. King anywhere, checkmate. Either there or there. It's checkmate or winning the queen. Very nice. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, we've been told how to do it in the Zoom call. Okay, we, we might... We, okay, Amit has won. So what we're going to do now, guys, which is going to take a little bit more jostling about. First of all, I will come and join the Zoom call and, and we'll try to have a little chat with whoever's left player wise. But let me just get the final scores up um, so we can see who, who the winner is. Um, I'm going to just tell David to uh, we will try Zoom first. Um, yeah, he, David's, David's messaged me to say yes, he well, he can join in. Um, maybe just add him to the Skype call. Uh, well, we've just been told that Zoom might be easier by Chess24. Okay. So, um, and we've been told that you can join as well. So, but for, okay, so what we'd do, right, it'd be nice to hear from the winner, definitely, 100%. And, and maybe who else, because I think there might be some other people in the chat, which could be quite funny. We might even better get on the Zoom call, Yvanka, the, the sponsor, John. Who, who made this tournament all possible in so that would be great and um, so we'll do it that way I'm just going to quickly get a picture of the scores so we can find out what the final scores are and the show's not over yet I want, want to hear how Dave is feeling right uh, mm -hmm. after that great victory so uh, have you enjoyed yourself Yvanka? Yes, it's a, it's been a great distraction um, I, I, I say distraction in the in the nicest possible way because yeah we had a bit of an unfortunate start to the new year so but it's okay yeah we can't so, so the chess has been just wonderful to follow hanging out with you simon has been beautiful and uh my poor husband is in isolation there so you can guess what happened <laughs> yes that's not not ideal right um yeah. so we wish your husband the best recovery yes. obviously um and uh you know, uh, I'm sure he'll be okay. But yeah, yeah, he's he's fine. He's fine. It's very mild at the minute, so it's all good. So it's yeah. all good. So we're day seven, and so it's all good. So, mm -hmm. but it's been absolutely fantastic to have this chess and just to see friends and old friends just play and just enjoy. You know, just enjoying how everyone's doing, and obviously, I'm super excited that. My co-host, David Howell, <laughs> has, has won the tournament with nine points out of 11, runaway leader, and he's played fantastic chess. It's been beautiful. This could be, uh, I'm quite excited because maybe this is something you've started up that your, uh, your co-hosts 
they go on to win brilliant tournaments. So yes. as soon as you as soon as you commentate with Ivanka, they go on to bigger and greater things, right? Yes. Yeah. Is exactly. That, that so Simon. Yeah. So this this is a, actually I, I find commentary to be fantastic for the chess because you kind of get so immersed into thinking, and you you start you calculate a lot of lines. You kind of I've always enjoyed commentating with you because you're different. You have a different style, so you force me to think in different ways, and uh, I kind of get to see how your just your intuitive uh, attacking kind of it's it's just really great because I would be thinking in much more positional skills. Meanwhile, I, I really like things that David was teaching me with um, a knight, a king, sorry, a knight is a king's best friend. And then he kind of talks a little bit about how he likes to control the positions. And you learn a lot of useful tips. For, so for me, I, I just get so enthusiastic about chess doing commentary. Yeah, it's, it's loads of fun working with you, Ivanka. That goes without saying. I mean, again, it's just We've done this a couple of times. It's always been great fun. We have a bit of a laugh. Take it a bit seriously. So, uh, only you know, and also it is interesting our dim styles and that that kind of chess wise makes it very exciting. Mm. Now, Ivanka, I will. Um, what we're going to do? I'm going to post. Have you got the um, the Zoom link? If not, no. I'll, if you could, if you can mail it to me I and will... uh, mail David as well at the same time, and then okay. we'll, well, I think, we'll join I think on. David is already in Zoom, so I'm just going to actually send it to you in. Uh, Skype before I shut Skype down and that will hopefully get you in Zoom and everyone we're going to try and just get some people on the Skype call so bear with us be back in a minute with some of the participants which is going to be great and you can see the final scores there um, and I will uh, I'll just catch you a little bit a little bit later Yvanka I'll, I'll shut okay. the call down for now okay perfect right everyone so we'll be back in short time and uh hopefully with some of the players and be great to get the the players thoughts on this fantastic tournament <laughs> Heartbreaking. I have. <laughs> Mouse slips but... are just like, oh. No, I just click the square. It won't be click. And just it to... moved the queen to F6. Just to warn everyone, you might be live on the stream now, okay? I, 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 so. All right. Just, sorry about that. I can't that, see but... you, Sai. Si. Are you on? Are you uh, on hello, Simon. Hello, hello, people. Uh, <laughs> oh, I bet you are. Everything's tickety boo. Everything's tickety boo, yes. We're just. Um, I, I'm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite quite a mission uh, doing all the technical stuff, but uh, it seemed like a good event, guys. I'm going to try to get you on the video now, if that's all right, if everyone's happy with that. Um, have we, uh, have you contacted David H? Uh, I have contacted David I told him David on H. Facebook to go to the um, tournament. I'm here. Yeah. Okay, so by the way, you're hearing now the players and uh, also the arbiter David Cedric on the stream. So my job is to talk to the players the arbiter and everyone on Twitch. Woohoo! Uh, so, how do you guys find it? Any, have you got whiskey yet, Mark? Red wine. Well, I think I'm the only one who's drinking. Oh, no, uh, Can't I'm afford whiskey drinking. anymore. Uh, <laughs> what do you got there, Mark? <laughs> I wish I had a whiskey. Yeah, I could do the whiskey. Is that Danny? Danny, Danny and the whiskey, right? So, uh, 
Okay, so if anyone's wondering what's happening in the stream, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, we are. I basically opened the Zoom call, so you can hear me, you can hear the players, and I'm going to try to get the video of the players somehow to work, but I don't really know how Zoom works, so it's going to be interesting. Um, so you're hearing the players anyway. Uh, so, uh, yeah, was that just a bad mouse slip, Mark, in, the, in that last game? It wasn't even a mouse slip. I wasn't even intending to move. I just spasmed and clicked. Oh, dear. Oh, <laughs> Okay, let me just see if I can get... It's the age, isn't it? New tricks because I did it earlier in another game. <laughs> yeah. It's tough, okay. Uh, no, no but on the whole, the tournament was great. I mean, That's brilliant. It's really, really, really good. Time to lie to play such a tournament with such good players. That's such a good idea to think about organising such an event. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of... Uh, Definitely. So, pleased to be invited, just to make the numbers up, of course, but, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to finish last, haven't they? <laughs> no, I mean, you had some great moments, Glenn. We liked your Oh, I have, again. yes. Thank you, Yvanka, for reminding me. And uh, you beat uh, Graham Gawain. Yeah. You have a good idea where you're at as well, doesn't it? You know? Yeah, once in a blue moon, I, I can still do it. But unfortunately, the blue moons are, are fewer and far further between these days. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a great game against Gawain, though, uh, Glenn. So that one, it seemed to... Kept you know... controlled. But yeah. Mo most of the games, I try and keep control, and uh, these big guys, they, they find a move that I just didn't consider. And then, oh, what do I do now? You know, and the panic button sets in too late, and it's all over. Quite good, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's mm. tough. And yeah, Danny, I mean, yeah. Is so David going to make a speech? I don't know. I mean, like, we, 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 we hope so. We hope David... It was David in the Zoom call earlier? I don't know if he's... Uh, I'll tell mean, him David was, and he's come back. We have him now. He's here. Oh, he's here. Back, well guys. done, David. Come back, all his figures. Yeah, well David. Thank you. Thanks <laughs> for the Tom Jean. Um, yeah, that's right. Thanks for showing some great technique, Dave. <laughs> before mentioning him, I'm pleased to see we've also got John Ashworth on the call because he pushed us to do it when I and some other committee members, I have to admit, were initially sceptical. And he put up the, his company put up the, the bulk of the money. So thank you very much, John. Yeah, thanks, John. Thanks, yeah. John. Well, Thank well, you, John. well, well yeah. done, everyone. Well done, David, and, and particularly brilliant, David. Um, you're such a, a friend of Hastings and a friend of Sussex Jets, so uh, brilliant to bring the trophy home and, and bring it. Uh, brilliant for it to be in your hands. Can no, I just thanks. also say a huge thanks to Simon and Yvanka? Um, I will say I was very insistent that we should have both of them doing the commentary, and it's just brought the whole thing alive to, I know, a whole bunch of people who haven't really exposed themselves to chess before. It's been really accessible to newcomers. Uh, but really informative to, to people who know a lot about the game. So so that's terrific. Um, there's been a bit of chit chat on the chat on on the Ginger GM stream about sponsorship of chess. And, and bluntly, I'd much, much, much rather give money to chess than give it to recruitment agents. So anybody out there remotely interested in the career change, um, send us your CV. Uh, I'll guarantee a reply or any career advice. But, you know, we're just looking to bring on talented people. And finally, as they you know, like the say at the end of James Bond films, um, Hastings will be back. And just can't wait. as brilliant as this has been, I can't wait to be in the old pump house having a beer with all the players on the Sunday night after what will be a brilliant 10 day event when we can next to it. So thank you to everybody. Uh, and uh, have yeah, a very so cheers day. to that. Yeah, great. Yeah, we can. yeah thanks, Phil. Yeah. Yeah, some people have started without you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank, thank you, John. I mean, just uh, we're, st we're obviously still live on the stream, and uh, obviously, guys, you know, this is Kaplan Systems. Do do uh, do check them out, and uh, like I say, there's some jobs there, so it's it's a good time to get a job. Mark, I heard Mark there saying he might apply for a, a job. John, oh, you... <laughs> was that you, Mark? <laughs> oh, I'm in a fetal position. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, sorry, Mark. <laughs> What's that? I think. Uh, but uh, what about? Do we have David as well? Is David Howe the winner? Is he? Is he? Is he in the in He's the Zoom? Hey, hey, Simon. Yeah. I'm, I'm just Hi. listening. And yeah, thank you to John and also all the arbiters for the hard work this weekend. It's been a lot of fun, hard work, but fun. And <laughs> it's great that we continue this tradition. Like John says, I'm a Sussex boy and Hastings was my one of my first ever tournaments. So yeah, it's been fun. Well, congratulations, David. I mean, how does it feel to, to win to win it? I mean, it's a very tough field, yeah? Yeah, like uh, every game was incredibly tough. I, I know lots of the guys that were talking on the Zoom call throughout the weekend, moaning how tough chess is, but I agree. It's um, <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, an incredibly strong field and uh, yeah I mean I, I surprised myself actually by winning I, I got lucky in a few games I see Danny there he had me by the throat 
Um, yeah, I thought Quiddy Five was well. winning. Day. Quiddy Five instead of uh, uh, not H Five check. Maybe that was possibly winning. But yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I think. Um, but yeah, I did a bit prep for that game. Uh, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you destroyed me. You destroyed me. But. Um, yeah, actually, I found it a lot of fun. Yovanka mentioned earlier that I've been commentating with her in some tournaments, and it's, uh, this was my first real event in six months. And I think it's just nice to play without the pressure. I mean, uh, without, well, in a different way um, to normal classical chess. So. I couldn't play. Uh, I'm, right. My brain's too frazzled to even talk, so. <laughs> <laughs> It's been it's been a lot of chess. You guys have like had six games yesterday, five games a day. I mean, it's, that that is serious, seriously hard work, right? Uh, I think you all, all deserve a drink now, definitely. Um, is it? Yeah, is come it, on, you. <laughs> has everyone got a drink? Keith, have you got a drink there? I've got a drink. Yeah, I've got a drink. <laughs> okay, what, kind of, what kind of question is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a stupid question. Asking Keith, he's got a drink. That, that the only thing just... that's surprising is that I've only just started. No, that... I wasn't drinking during the tournament. That, that was a rhetorical question, I think, Keith. You know, so yeah, just uh, uh, and um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, it, it looked like it went all very well. Again, massive thanks to the sponsor, and hopefully, uh, Kaplan continued to get it get involved with it. And like, say, anyone who's watching, they, they've got some job opportunities, and seriously, so you know, if you, you're interested in these hard times of finding one, um, it looked like great play all round, really, from you guys. It was, it was uh, very fun to commentate on. And Yovis, do you have any sort of last thoughts at all? Yeah, no, I just want to say congratulations, guys. You know, you put on a show for us all. We really enjoyed your chess. We really loved watching old friends play. And uh, we want more, basically. <laughs> and also, big congratulations to David. You know, wow. Wow, must be all those left side and right side. <laughs> and I also like to say a big thank you to John uh, uh, and of course for sponsoring the event. And you know, it, again, it couldn't have been without you. And also big thank you to the arbiters. I can see Alex McFarland. It's, it's, it's emotional for me to see all these old faces. All everyone, <laughs> I miss Pretty you guys. <laughs> I look forward to meeting up and having a, a drink at the Pig in Paradise in Hastings. <laughs> and uh, lovely to see you, Lara and Alex. And uh, wow. lovely to see everybody. Uh, happy New Year! Happy New Year! Can we have a Hastings every month? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that this, sounds this like a good life. <laughs> I'll, I'll commentate. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, Chris. Oh, hi. I've been listening to you, Jovi. <laughs> and, um, you know, Glenn. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm joking. It was really nice to listen to both of you with Simon as well, of course. Thank you. Hi, Thank Lara. You. Hi. Hi, Alex. Hi. Hi, David. Oh, you've been tough on my Glenn now. Oh, <laughs> oh were you nasty to him? Don't worry. It was tough on all of us. No, it was really nice following the tournament, uh, uh, listening to, you know, Simon and and Jovenka. And I, re I had a really great time, except for yesterday. It was a bit, bit tough, but, you know. <laughs> It's a hard tournament, right? Otherwise, really otherwise it was really nice yeah. seeing all of you, you know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, um, I hope uh, we can meet uh, again soon uh, in real and uh, mm. hopefully yeah, yeah. next year in Hastings in real again. In real, lucky okay, here in Torquay. That'd be good. Well, see you soon. <laughs> Bye. See Goodbye. you next year in Bye. real. Yeah. Bye. Okay. See you next year. Good stuff. Yeah, so. good. Lovely to see you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. See you, Glenn. So. Oh, are you still here? <laughs> yeah. Great. I mean, a great tournament, and I'm probably going to close the stream down now, guys. And uh, you know, we still we still got over 400 people watching, actually. Um, wow. All you guys. So it's a fair, a fair few people. Anyone got any last words? Gormali, you're normally one for last words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all I could say is I, I was moaning at the start, but. Yeah, I think it takes a while to warm up as well. That's the thing because people play not playing in the pandemic. You kind of, uh, um, yeah, you're rusty. When it, I was, I was rusty when I started. But uh, I think the, the only thing I found difficult was like shutting up after I finished because I. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, did have to, I did have to mute you once or twice, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I was like moaning just for a change. Like, well, it's very easy to just drift into talking after your game. 
than me yes, most of it. Really is. Is. Okay, I'll be through in a minute or two. Okay, well, well, good stuff. And again, well done to Dave. Well done um, uh, for Luke. I don't know if Luke's there. Came second. Well done to everyone. Well done to all the organisers. So yeah, uh, uh, the Arbiters, Matt, Alex, and uh, David Cedric, and and of course John for sponsoring it. But I'm gonna uh, and also thank you everyone who's watching. Um, and we now got a typical difficult choice. Do we do we go and watch at the moment? Lawrence Trent is playing against Daniel Wrench. And if Lawrence, you know Lawrence Trent's got a bet on this, if he wins, I think he wins like four thousand dollars. So oh, yeah. it, it's quite, you know, he loves it. He loves a bet. Um, I think we'll watch that, and it's Fiona's birthday later, so I, I suggest everyone goes over. Oh to yeah, it. Fiona's got tournament. Has she not got tournament on? I think on so. Leicester. I think she's got well, a tournament going, going on. That. There's more, oh, more, more chess for anyone who wants it. Um, oh, Bob's so <laughs> yeah. We'll just have a little look, and uh, like I say, I'm just gonna. I'll probably shut down the Zoom call now, guys. Hope to see you all soon, yeah? All right, so, all right. Good, work, good work, site. Good work, mate. Pleasure, guys. Cheers. Good work. Good night, everyone. Well done. Cheers. Same with you, Okay, so there we go. So thank you, everyone, uh, for um, obviously coming along and, and watching this stream. So it's it's been it's been a lot of fun. I don't know if the Trent match has started. I think I think you can. You, there's a couple of people you can go and watch now, uh, of course. And um, I think we will just raid Fiona as it is. It is her birthday, but of course, Chess.com's got the big match on as well. So you guys can choose um, where you go. But thank you very much. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for joining the commentary. Been a lot of fun, and um, we, we'll do a stream again soon. So keep an eye on my twitter and just if you follow this channel you know when the next thing happens so goodbye for now and hello and happy birthday to fiona yeah